Placebo, The Bitter End. That's the first single to be lifted from their forthcoming album, Sleeping with Ghosts, which you can hear in full on the XFM online listening posts. <laughs> I'm Ricky, your cheeky little devil, Gervais. With me, Steve. All right, ladies, what can I get you to drink? What, well, you think I'm made of money? I meant half a mile or something, merchant. And Carl, oh, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. If it's too hard, I don't want to do it. Pilkington. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Oh, well, it's nice to be back, Rick. Mm. Um, mm. Rick, I heard a, a rumour that you weren't going to be playing great music today. <laughs> I'm assuming See, that's wrong. That, that, it is wrong. This is what I mean about the the, the, the grapevine and sure. just uh, Chinese whispers. I, I'm, I'm not having it. There's some great music coming up. Right. So, I just heard that there was going to be uh, some boring chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's that. Well, I want, I want names. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to name names, but that's the gossip well, I heard. it's totally wrong. It's I heard it was going to be inane, <laughs> ill thought out, often no. stupid. No, we're, uh, Carl's not going to talk so much this week. We're going to try and sort of, uh, bring, you know, bring it back to, to real radio. So that's an absolute lie. Yeah, yeah. Great, 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 great. Great. great, 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 great. Good All right, Carl, week? Yeah, not bad. Have you? Yeah. Hmm. Going on now, aren't you? Well, I will be doing later. Tell you about that later on. What yeah. um? Uh, can There's I just, a hook. <laughs> <laughs> can I just check? Because there are rules in place, aren't there? Yeah. There was a big there was a big bust up in the week. I oh, I'm, not, we I, I'm only allowed that. to wind him up. I'm not allowed to wind him up socially now. I'm not allowed to. What am I not allowed to do socially? Um, I think squeezing the head. Okay. Uh, socially, yeah. it's, it's been crossed off. Right, okay, um, and I, I agreed to that because it got to a head where, you know, Carl was really upset and he was yeah. thinking of just uh, giving it giving it all in, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What? Why was that? Because you were just winding me up too much. Yeah. I mean, do you want to bring it all up again? <laughs> I don't mind. What was I doing? It was. It was just. Yeah, I mean, I should stuff. say now that there was a conversation where it was all. It, we were all sort of really walking on eggshells. It yeah. was. It was frosty. It was a conference call, and Carl was on one end. And I'll tell you, it was. <laughs> I, mean, I was very much a media. I was very much a UN mediator. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, it's, it was difficult to sort of keep it serious when I'm saying stuff like, "I'm sick of you putting a Burger King bag on me head." <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a part of me that's <laughs> like, I can't believe we're doing this. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's, I what I like about it is that, um, I'm laughing and going, well, I won't, I won't do that anymore. And he's going, you can still do it on air. And it, like today I was gonna, I came in, I went to squeeze Zed, he went at one o'clock. I yeah. love those rules. Yeah. I love those rules. Well, between the hours of one and three on Saturday, you <laughs> can squeeze his hair, you can put a boot on his- But I can't wait, it's yeah. terrible. Oh well, dear. Well, that all started last week as well, really, because I got in a bit earlier to do an edit for you on some track that had swearing in it, right? Yeah. So I get in early, he comes in, first thing he does is go to sort of squeeze me head. <laughs> And my reaction was, not now, do it later. <laughs> yeah. As if it's alright to do it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what made me think, this isn't normal. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we should just point out, when, you, when we say squeezing your head, what exactly does that mean? I, I, I put my hand on the front, I do two experiments, right? Yeah. One is the side, because th you can crush an egg sideways, so I think that's more dangerous. <laughs> right. And I squeeze, I actually put my elbows out, and I press like a vice, and I really go for it until it really hurts. And the front one is, it shouldn't hurt so much, if, I'm, if my experiment's right, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> well, it was all this that sort of, you know, built up. Sure. Um, and the research that you're doing there, Rick, is that going to be available <laughs> online at some point? Well, that, that was the problem. That's what I was saying to him because it kind of started last week. Uh, <laughs> well, it's been going on since we've known you. Yeah, hasn't it, really? yeah, but it's, I just upped it. I just upped it last it, week. It got out of hand a bit. I upped yeah. it to when I, um, I think it got to uh, I had on um, Thursday when I filmed it. <laughs> that was it, yeah. That's right, yeah. I brought in the cameraman to film me torturing him, and yeah. there was some um, people from the sixth floor being shown round. Yeah, some management and that, showing probably clients round, you yeah. know, sort of, they've probably been on all the different floors, same what all yeah. the different radio they've stations do. They've seen Dr. Fox. Uh, this, this is XFM, the sort of alter- <laughs> <laughs> this, this sort of noise going on. Yeah. You see them all look down, I'm saying don't do that, right? Sure. They might, they might want to spend a load of money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's doing that, he's wrestling with me, he's filming it. <laughs> so that's when I just thought, you know. Man, isn't it? And then when, when we were having the argument on the phone, I was saying, uh, you know, has this been some sort of experiment? <laughs> yeah. He yeah. did, he said that, and of course I lost it. Yeah. But, uh, it's all, it's all good now. Well, do you want to squeeze his head before we play the next I, I won't at the moment because, I mean, we've got to get on. It's not, it's not right. And that annoyed me as well. Um, because I was, um, trying to find out where he was going. I was filming him. I was going, I'm waiting for Carl. I told Johnny he's meeting a mate at six, so which annoys me on two counts. And I'm just doing it to the camera. Um, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow him and just turn up and go, all right, where you been? But then when I came in, he went, oh, I'm meeting a mate, and he told me where it was. So I told him that spoils my fun. Of course. Because you'd, you'd want to, to, to track yeah, him down. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want him to like it. 
Yeah. Which is sort- it's sort of taken- pulled the rug under my carpet now that he's gonna let me do- do you know what I mean? It's just- yeah. it's a little bit annoying. It's that thing though, you see, uh, this happened years ago to me, right? When, you know, you get pally with someone, mm. and then you wind each other up, mm. and then there comes a time mm. when you just go over the line. Yeah. Right? What happened? Well, it was this lad called Anthony, right? He was my mate. Yeah. And, uh, we used to sort of always have a- have a little fight in the toilet and that. Right? Sure. Um, punch each other. No, I wanna wipe it. And the, and the punches, you know, used to get harder. Yeah. And stuff. And then, you know, so he- he hit me harder. Turned out into a proper fight. Yeah. I chipped his tooth on the sink. Right? Right. This happened at school, and it was time for assembly, and I thought, oh, and he's- he's in the toilet crying. I thought, oh. Go to assembly. Uh, there's a- there's police in there, in the assembly that day, telling people about unnecessary violence. And you thought they were there for you? So I'm like, oh, no. Anthony's gonna come in in a minute, like, crying with all blood coming from his mouth. I'm yeah. gonna get arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you go and well sleep? That, that was an example of- Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of happened because I went out with a girl who he fancied. How, 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 old, how, old, are we, how old are we now? Uh, about eight or nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's out of order, going out with a mate's girl. <laughs> yeah, but he, she didn't like him. He had, like, big ears and that. He, she, he had no yeah, chance, so why should dish. I- no, but, do you know what I mean? Alright, I haven't got the looks like I used to. Sure, when you were eight. But that's- you... that's before the stress of, you know, having Ed squoze and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have aged a lot since. Having, having, having Ed squoze. I love your own grammar. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. Is that- that's the past tense, is it? Uh, I mean, yeah. Squeeze or to have squoze. <laughs> oh, he did squoze his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, brilliant. So, you know, it's What just... about a bit of Bowie? Let's, uh, bit Bowie? Bit, be my wife. Carl, I'm asking you. Let's make I think we can squoze that in. Bit, be, be my wife, Carl, come on. Will you, uh, miss me on holiday? No. Really? No. What? He's joking, I assume, Keith. Well, I don't know. Can you tell- I can't tell whether he's serious or not. What no. do you mean, no? No, de definitely not. I mean, I might, when I get back, I'll go, oh, just have a quick chat, but I'm not gonna be sat there going, oh, I wish I was back in London for Ricky to, you know. I squoze my sorted, head. We've sorted the head problem out. Yeah. No, I still won't. No? Okay, well that's still what I'm saying. I was, uh, with Carl in the week, uh, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, and, uh, was it last week? There was a program on about the child who was older than her mum. A child that was older than her mum? Yeah, right, which was, he was looking forward to as much as Oliver, the, uh, the human Z. The human Z, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, missed I didn't it. see it in the end. Did you miss it no, as well? I missed it, so if And, uh, is, is what it is, is this, uh, a little girl, and she's got an ageing thing, so she, he was telling me about this, so it's all from him, he went, and what it is, right, she's about five, right, but she's aged, so she's actually ninety. <laughs> right. Right? And I went, oh god, really, he went, yeah. And then he went, could she get served in an off licence? <laughs> I went, no. He went, well, that's not fair. I went, what do you mean? He went, well, I said, she's five years old, she's a five-year-old girl. He went, yeah, but she's got the body of a ninety-year-old, so, oh, God, let her have a fag. <laughs> Wouldn't you let her have one if she... <laughs> if she asked? Yeah. <coughs> if you worked in an off licence and she wandered in, right, and, uh... <laughs> so she's two foot six? Well, I don't know, because I haven't seen it. I don't know that much about yeah, it. Yeah, she's a five-year-old, two foot six, it's just an ageing process, which is a degeneration of the, the cells, like what ageing is. It, it's it, it doesn't mean she grew into a ninety-year-old woman with a <laughs> scarf <laughs> no, exactly. going around the streets. <laughs> what yeah. did you imagine it looked like? I don't know, I mean, it, she's ageing fast, yeah? Yes, but it's, a, it's more to do, it's not, yes, yeah. Because it was saying that a mum and dad are pretty stressed out about it, and I kind of thought, well, you'd be forever buying birthday presents. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like she's morphing through various ages. Like, <laughs> my God, look, she's 58 today, 59. We can't keep up. Well, what? How does it's it not that. It's, it's not like she's going <laughs> It's it, it it has has the same effect as aging on the body. So uh, 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 at a cellular level, there's a degeneration as quick as if she'd gone through. I don't know. I th I got this from you. I'm guessing, Carl. It's not like she's watching Top of the Pops one week and she's loving it, then the next week she's going, I can't understand what they're saying, yeah. she's not like music in my day. It's all bland dance, I remember, I, got, I, I, remember. Remember, I remember when I was four and a half, they were yeah. real bands. They're like S Club 7 were excellent, yeah. but what's this tripe? 
S Club. But, but if she wants a fag. <laughs> she's <laughs> five years old, Carl. But she's got to experience everything in a short spell of time, do you know what I mean? You've got time mm. to sort of- I think you're thinking of her life like that Fat Boy Slim video. Where it starts off as something crawling out of the sea and then it evolves really quickly over three minutes. I don't yeah. know, that's not the case, Carl. Her mind isn't- she isn't aging mu in her mind at the same time. No, she's- She's, she's not she's living the life- a whole life in like, you know, three weeks. It's just her body is- is degenerating quicker than it should. So- so, so if sense? you worked in odd bins, you wouldn't serve her with a bottle of wine? No, I probably would. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she had some ID, which That's would probably a bit be cruel, fake. isn't it? I said, well, on that and on top of all her other problems, he wouldn't even give her a glass of <laughs> yeah, a bottle of wine. And her ID wouldn't look right because he's aging all the time. <laughs> <'cause> he... <laughs> the photo would never match. Yeah. Look at my hair there. <laughs> oh, that was last week. Well, it was 2002. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh dear. I don't, We don't know enough about it, so. No, I haven't seen it, so uh, uh, yeah, maybe we should apologise because that could sound callous and cruel because I don't know what I don't know what the whole. It was just the title. The, the vibe of the- yeah, what I know the title, the title that excited you. It was something you. like, I'm older than my mum. No, <laughs> the, it was- the, it's the child that's older than her mother. Mm. Well. Yeah. So that's- that was weird. There was some good stuff on in the week. That you missed that, though, didn't you? You need to watch it. Didn't see that. Saw, um- Maybe someone have it on video for you? Yeah, if you taped it and you'd, you know, send it in. Watch it on fast forward, she'd really age then. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Whoa! Well, we've got some weird stuff to talk about, though. What? <laughs> Coming up later. What? Darren Brown. Oh yeah. That was interesting. I know the fact that the track- we've just talked about him asking me nicely not to squeeze his head when people are around, and a girl who ages so quickly she should be served in odd bins, and he goes, but we've got some weird stuff coming up. <laughs> That's Carl's that, world. That, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> That's our song, innit, Carl? Leave all this misery behind, innit? Turing breaks. Painkiller. <gasps> That's what I could do. I could sort of give you a little local anaesthetic and squeeze your head and see how far it would go before- Start like when I get back off holiday. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh dear. Rick, I was watching music television this morning just before it came out. I love it, um, I love it. I kind of agree with Wyclef Jean. Yeah. Just because, uh, she dances loco, it don't make her a ho, no. No. But, I can't help but feel she's not helping her case. I mean, she's there every night, basically, getting them out for the lads. I know. For money. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean that she's a hoe or a whore, as no, we no, say, no. but I can't help but think if you- if you think people are slagging you off, calling you a whore, get a different job. Because I'll tell you this, you like the money. Yeah. She likes the cheap- she likes the easy money. I- I- I'll say this. If, uh, well, basically exposing and, um, sort of uh, wobbling round uh, your minge tits and ass doesn't make you a hoe. What does? I don't know what does. Look at Carl's head, just went down there, just went down. He doesn't like this sort of filth, I just he's thinking about Maxine. That's Who's Maxine? Name. That's her name. Put on your red shoes, Maxine. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's a moving song. What's the horse about at the end? Horse, I've never understood that. Never understood that. Is Wyclef doing all right? Is he- I'm always concerned about the Fugees, because I heard Lauren mm -hmm. Hill's not- her new album's apparently not very good. Naz or whatever his name is, I don't know what's happened to him. He's disappeared off the face of the earth. I got a soft get... spot for him. Oh, I think yeah. he popped up too much. I think it was a bit ubiquitous, j uh, jumping up on everyone's. You know, he's a funny bloke as well. Wycliffe. He's, he's a lovely man. He's a good guy. Good luck to all the so, Fugees. Uh, good luck. Good luck to uh, all the all the lads from the Fugees. <laughs> <Indeed>. um, <laughs> Any so other bands good. you're concerned about? Hepburn. Now? What the hell? <laughs> what has gone wrong with Hepburn? <laughs> oh, it does make me worry. It does make me worry. Well, uh, do you want to do some? Uh, give some stuff away. <laughs> uh, I suppose so, Carl. We could, yeah. Yeah, set it up. Set what it do you think? What is it? What? What? Which of your many competitions is this? Uh, songs of phrase. Talking of competitions, I remember last week a big argument that um, Carl kicked Steve off the team because he was getting a little bit uppity and trying to take it over. Pub quiz. Isn't it? Pub quiz, yeah. But then uh, you let him back in, didn't you? Well, he was all right. He came to me afterwards and said, yeah. you know, <laughs> you're not going to kick me off, are you? And yeah. I said, well, yeah. He, he came back, sort of, I suppose, begging. He sort of was it embarrassing or? Well, no, it's just, you know, he- he- his lesson. He realises he overset the mark, like you have this week. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've all learnt a lesson. <laughs> yeah, we've all learnt a lesson. But I won the quiz, didn't I, and you didn't. Well, that doesn't matter. No, the thing is, we but I won well. all the money, didn't I? Please I bear in mind it's taking part of the counts, Rick. Yeah, sure. I wasn't winding you up in the quiz, though, was I? And your- all your team was older. Yeah. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, you've got a collective age your team of about 300. No, one- one of them is only- one of them's actually five, but she just- <laughs> she's just aged a lot. 
I think when I took the 11 plus we were all around the same age. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Right. Your team was a lot older. What was mm. our average age, would you say? Average age probably, um, 30. Right. Yours at least 41. No. Definitely. No. Definitely. Only two of us were 40 and one, and three were about 30. No, rubbish. Yeah. Who's 30? Martin. Glenn. Oh, Glenn's, Glenn's about 36, yeah. 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 About 30, but, but it all helps, doesn't it? And yeah, you, Alps, Alps, Alps. And you've all got- Annals under 30, and Annals under 30. And right? you've got a better general knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were cheating. Uh, yeah. We knew more. You just knew more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. not allowed, is Pro it? Proper quiz time, anyway. Well, I wasn't winding you up though when I won. I wasn't gloating or anything, was I? No, not at all. When you kept sort of counting it in front of me and- <laughs> 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 Like he hasn't got enough cash already, Carl. <laughs> how much was it? How much, uh, how much was the prize? Uh, I can't say. It'd be gauche. Right. Is that tax free, that money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a competition, it's a uh, prize, isn't it? Is that true though? Is that how it works? I think so. Prize money, isn't it? I don't know. Well, right, otherwise, well, I, otherwise I assume you'll be declaring that. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, you'll be paying right. tax on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you know where people, I mean the taxman could contact you via XFM at any time yeah, just to check sure. that if you wanted to. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, prizes to give away this week. You've, uh, excelled yourself again. We've got, once again, Scotland Rocks, the very best of Scottish music, Texas Deacon Blue. Brilliant. And, uh, Jerry Rafferty. Proclaimers on there or not? <laughs> Proclaimers, uh, don't worry, Delamitri's well, got... on there as well, don't worry. Oh, yeah, 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 sweet, don't sweet. Worry. It's oh, based on there, it's based on there. I'm right? just checking to see if Midgeur and Hugh and Gry That's feature, right. but they That's do, right. thankfully. I don't know. Uh, the Rizillos as well. Oh, and brilliant. Brilliant, that That's is brilliant. Great. So look forward to is that. Is Lulu on there or not? Oh, is she not on there? I can't no, see her, she not on there. Is she not on there? But, uh, the wet, to the wet. on there, or the wet, or not? Uh, Fairground attraction. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. That's on there, so, uh, Is we Hootie McToove <laughs> on there, and is, uh, is, uh, Jamboree? <laughs> uh, what's this? This is another arbitrary compilation, brilliant, uh, called brilliant. Strange and Beautiful. The brilliant. Exodus album, which is quite good. Yeah. The new album by the White Stripes. Uh, the DVD Walking with Cavemen, that TV show that's on. On VHS, uh, it's, it's still got the price on there. On VHS, in case you haven't seen it. Uh, Fight Club and the best-selling book from Michael Moore, Stupid White Men. So actually some quite good prizes there, Carl. Not yeah. Alright, Carl, what's this, what's this competition? Right, song's a phrase. It's where I, uh, get a line that sort of is said a lot on the show or has been said quite a lot on the show. Yeah. Is uh, this one stop squeezing me out? No. Mm. Oh, I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but what we're doing is, um, my favor uh, The Elephant Man's my favourite film. Is that the phrase? Yeah, that's the phrase that we're looking at today. The Elephant Man's my favourite film. It is as well. It's yeah. his favourite film. I know, I know. Why yeah. is that again? See, because it's funny and sad, and it, it's uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah, <laughs> they promise you an Elephant Man. It's exactly what you get. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Have you seen it, Steve? I have seen it. It yeah. is good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you remember at the beginning of the Elephant Man? Think of that having the, that as your favourite film I of know. all the hundreds. A, amazing film. I mean, yeah. uh, the, uh, I mean, I mean, just it's a good film and it's yeah. a moving film. Yeah, but I can't imagine it's a film I would watch endlessly again I don't and again. Care about a bloke with an no, elephant's head? Do you know? Bit of it again. Huh? The other night, it's one of them that you know just sort of reminds you. You know, what annoys me when he goes, yeah. "I am not an animal." Mm. He is. Well, <laughs> I mean, he speaks like one. <laughs> and what does and it help? He's got, got and a bloody like one. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. But it was a bit unfair because they never let him look in a mirror because he's a bit odd looking and it upset him. Yeah. So his hair was always a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and that made him look worse than he actually was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But good film, get it out if you haven't seen it. That's the phrase today. Do you uh, know, um, my, uh, I remember my friend introduced me to that film and if you remember at the beginning there's a big montage because he is, uh, working in a, in a zoo, isn't he? Or he's yeah. been kept in a zoo. And there's a sequence of, uh, of various, of elephants, I think, actual elephants kind of rampaging and it's just quite a sort of moody, mm. atmospheric montage. Is he king of the elephants? Could well, he my rule friend, them? my friend said to me when we watched this, he said, what happens is he gets trampled on by some elephants and that's what makes him look like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, right, and I watched it and I thought, that's not the case, and I tried to explain it to him and he's to this day still convinced that the elephant man, it's like a, it's like when Spider-Man like, gets bitten by, by a spider. Yeah, yeah. It was his man, wasn't the it? The elephant man. <laughs> the power of an elephant. <laughs> his, was it his man who got- He never forgets. Anyway. Be careful. Is it, his man what? Wasn't it his man who was pregnant and then they ran over her and- No, I don't think so. That's the impression I got from it. No. You are joking, aren't you? <laughs> no. I thought, I, I honestly, th anyway, right, so the phrase is, my favourite film's The Elephant Man. Oh, well, I yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's five songs make up that, that sentence. Yep. Yeah. Right, this week. Have a listen, see if you can work out the songs. Email in, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, right? Mm. And you win all that stuff, mm. Steve just said, so, uh, mm. right, here we go then. The Ha <laughs> ha
That was nicely done. Genius. Right. Let's hear it again. Yes. Five songs there, The it's Elephant not, Man not is so hard, my favourite film. Well, I thought we'd make it a bit easier. Make it a bit easier, yeah. yeah. Just, right. just one more. The Elephant Man is my favourite film. <laughs> <laughs> Email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. <laughs> a bit of a hip-hop hooray, a bit of a rap classic. <laughs> Although you may not have heard it before. <laughs> XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl the K-Man Pilkin. Pilkers. Little Pilkers. Little baldy, roundy, heady Pilkers. Oh yeah, there's um... Go on. There's a what's the name? If people go to the You're website... You're joking. There's not, a, <laughs> yeah, there's not a what's the name. An actual what's the name? You, you are joking, Carl. No, it's just you reminded me. Oh, did little, I? Little round bald head. Yeah. If they go to xfm.co.uk, right, yeah. slash Ricky... There's a picture on there, you know that picture you did? Oh, that I drew. The one you drew of me. Uh Who put it on? Did what XFM put it on? Yeah. Did um, it look good? Uh Can well, you get into it? Can I have a I'll look? I'll have a look, yeah, I'll have a look during oh. the What is it? XFM.co.uk? Forward slash Ricky. Right. right. And there's that little picture and people can sort of put bids in and the money goes to, uh Me, I assume, as I drew it. <laughs> no, it's for some charity thing, so... Because I, I've read, I read something that I think there's been a bit of at least 50 pounds, which is pretty No, busy. there hasn't. I swear to God, I just saw it earlier, I deleted it because I thought someone was winding us up. You deleted it? Well, I didn't know, did I? I didn't realize, you didn't keep me informed. Well, it just... Oh. He's a buffoon, Carl, isn't he? I think, I think you're a, an idiot, but sometimes... Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah! 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna check, cruel. just gonna check the power list, top hundred most important people in radio. What's this list? Oh, it's just the most important people in radio. Oh, 56, Ricky Gervais. That's annoying, 56. Let me see. So there's 55 more important people than me. I love the fact there that I've beaten David Mansfield as the controller of capital. Yeah. <laughs> Arbitrary. The Radio Academy power list <laughs> top 100. Uh, and you're what, number 56, yeah. Ricky Gervais, XFM. Yeah. I noticed we're not mentioned, Carl. What's your thoughts on that? You know. <laughs> a little, uh, stinging, that. I'd have thought, considering the amount of work you put into this show. Well, don't right? get me started. Are you on here elsewhere, Carl? No. Too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Moyles is number 96. Oh, that's good. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah. He'll be off the list by next year, I hope. <laughs> so what funny, is weird, Steve. Go on. Right. Who's, who's number one? Number one is Phil Roberts. I don't know who that is. Right. Wouldn't you think that Marconi would have got a mention? <laughs> <laughs> Marconi, now what station's he on? <laughs> weird, uh, that's the point, because I got one in television and you thought John Logie Baird would have got yeah. a mention. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> yeah. great, although it's not ever, is it? Again, I'll slip out of that by next year, I'd have thought. Yeah. Oh dear. Just checking to see, uh, oh yeah, Dr. Fox, good, he's on there at number 39. I'm assuming his medical qualifications have also <laughs> been that sneak, Yeah, that sneaks him up the list, yeah. yeah, yeah. Typical. Pete Waterman, yeah, at number 35, that makes sense. Important guy. Can, can we just give them the website so they can read this at their leisure, because this really isn't radio, is it? Right, well, xfm.co.uk. No, that website, if they want to see the most- Oh, I don't know where it is. Yeah. I'm just yeah, saying xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky if you want to see that picture, and whoever bidded 50 quid if you can send the email again- Bid? Whoever bid? Whoever bidded. Yeah. <laughs> we should start picking you up on you, Grammar. I mean, we're hardly ones to speak, but, you know, I squoosed. I, I, I squoosed. <laughs> I, I tell you what, um, I listened back to- Carl was worried about last week's show, because he said there was too much screaming and shouting and, and, uh, just nonsense and eating birds It was a bit stuff. like It's a Knockout last week, wasn't it? <laughs> no, yeah, and I listened back to it, and- it is, it was without doubt the most appalling piece of radio I have ever heard in my life. Really? I didn't know what I was saying. I was saying, and I'm finishing set it, set it, eat it! And he's going, oh, and you're going, Carl, they're eating a hamburger. It was bizarre. Just half an hour. Uh, if anyone didn't kn know us, or I've never heard of XFM, it was just like going, heart one of four, XFM one of four, listen to this. He's the beast going, come out of his belly. No! It was absolutely, honestly, it was like a mental ward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <it was> <laughs> to be uh, fair, though, at the best of times, you sound like you're setting the evening standard. 
Oh God! Oh, we should have the worst bits available. Should we? Just the worst bits of broadcasting ever. So where where I didn't finish the sentence, or it was just shouting or a record. I, I mean, uh, there were swear words slipped out, and just put them all on a CD. Mm. Like uh, you know, like Panky put out the best of his phone calls. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. I haven't got that. The worst that? radio show in the world ever. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what yeah, I call yeah. bollocks. Yeah. All oh, right. Calm down. That's shit. just cheap and. Oh, <laughs> oh no! It's a game. Oh tits. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see those boys still rockin'. That's ACDC. Shook me all night long. And it's a film on a 4.9. I'm Ricky Jones with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Have we got the results of the, uh, quiz, Carl, or? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just play it one more time. It was Songs of Phrase. Is this <laughs> the last time we're doing this? Oh, I thought so. I thought it worked better this week because it was actually doable. Yeah. I think that makes a difference, Carl. We haven't done Carl's an idiot, yeah? Carl, you're an idiot, have we? Oh, well, that's a reason to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can end with that one right. when you come back. Right. right, well, the five songs that made up this little thing here was Mysteries, Beautiful Blues, Eels, Innocent Man, Billy Joel, In My Favourite Waste of Time, Owen, Owen Paul, Boom Rhapsody, Queen, Brilliant. Girls on Film, Duran Duran, it sounded like this. <laughs> The Elephant Man is my favourite film. Hang on, was Bohemian Rhapsody in there? Yeah, yeah. it is. It is, is there still? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, we're gonna give that to, uh, Piley. He just calls himself Piley. Ian Pyle. Uh, good work, Piley. What's happened to Anders? Well, I, I was just gonna say, actually, we've not had correspondence from Richard Dicky Anders for some time. The Dickmeister, Dickmeister yeah. General, with his, his naughty, naughty, insulting ways. Yeah, Anderson used to email regularly. Anders! Get on your computer! Get in touch, mate. What do you think of, of the show? Oh, hold on, though. To be fair, um, he was listening w when we were pretty shoddy. Uh, if he's listened to the last three weeks, I think we were owed a little apology from you, Dickster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, listen, Piley, um, we want to send you all those goodies, including Scottish rock, um, but uh, we don't have your uh, address, so uh, email in your address and we can send it off to you. All right? Yeah. More adverts? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Snoop. Beautiful XFM 104.9, Gervais Merchant Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Carl had a, a treat in the week, didn't he? He couldn't believe his luck. Um, uh, we know, um, Darren Brown, you know Darren Brown, the, uh, uh, the sort of magician mind reader fella. It's, it's more special than that. Well, um, called me up in town, said, do you mind if I bring, we bring along Carl? He went, pleasure. Carl's very cynical, saying, well, he won't get into my head. Yep. <laughs> but great, wasn't it? It was brilliant. He went, can I ask him questions? I went, well, no, he's, he's social. He went, oh, I'm not coming. I went, well, uh, he went, well, I'll ask him, I want him to know how he did that trick when he said, you've got the winning ticket. I went, don't, he's not gonna tell you, he's a magician. He went, well, it's not worth it then. If he, if I can't quiz him. But he yeah, came along. I still did, though, didn't I? I got, the, got in there with the questions that the people wanted to know about. Yeah. Yeah, go on, what did you ask him and what did you find out? I said, how do you do that? I love the fact that the first half hour, me, Steve and Darren Brown were convincing Carl that he didn't see a ghost when he was five. Yeah. And then we got onto the tricks. Yeah. Well, you c- I, I mean, I, it will live in my mind, he won't get inside my head. Yeah. And he got inside your head magnificently, Carl, didn't he? I mean, were you not amazed? I mean, we, uh, Darren promised actually that he would come on the show in the future, and um, then you, the listeners, can can see how he can baffle, amaze, and I think just generally should, freak out. I Carl. think we should film everything that happens, right? Because mm. it's just a waste. Because you're only getting half of it when you hear what Carl has to say. Because his face, yeah. honestly, says a thousand words. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's just. Uh, I think we should film it and just put it on a DVD of Carl's facial expressions. This is Carl thinking he saw a ghost. Yeah. This is Carl thinking they were going to clone a man moth. <laughs> yeah. It's just different faces. So do you want to try and explain what he did and what marvelled you so much? Right, yeah. He comes in, he sits down, I'm a bit sort of, uh, bit Skeptical spooked by him straight away. Oh, you're spooked by him straight away, Yeah, you? there's a weird thing about him. Uh -huh. Right. So anyway, he sat there and I'm, I'm watching him. It's because he was naked? <laughs> checking, che you know, seeing, seeing what he's, you know, looking at and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, he gets his, uh, he gets his paper out and I think, right, he's gonna do a bit of trickery and that. And he says to me, Right. Write down a number and a name, right? 
uh, it was between- A two digit number, a two, two digit, digit number, number and, yeah. uh, a name of anyone you know. Yeah, right. Now the thing is, uh, I thought of the name because I was telling Steve earlier about the, uh, about the kid at school who I fell out with, right, yeah. over that, that girl who was called Aris, yeah. right? So that name was like in my mind, ready yeah. to go, because I didn't want to use anybody's name who I knew, no. sort of now, because sure. maybe you've mentioned it in the past. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't say Suzanne. I only, I only knew I Colin say Macon anyway. Yeah. yeah, well, do you know what I mean? Auntie so I picked, I picked a name, yeah. Well, I thought you might have been thinking about Auntie Nora. Yeah. So I picked this name, right, that you three didn't, didn't really know about, yeah. right? Number just came to mind, right? So he 42, says, right, we were never thinking yeah, 42, of that. 42, 42, right? Yeah. He said, uh, right, just keep saying it over and over in your head. And I'm there, and he's saying all these sort of different numbers at me, and, and I'm trying to throw him off a little bit. Every time he said a number that was nothing like 42, sort of smiling, looking a bit nervous. Yeah. Don't know if you caught that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, all I could see was you looking, uh, sort of blank. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so, so doing stony face. He picked the wrong person when he said, let your mind go blank, you'd realise exactly. he picked on the wrong person yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh... <laughs> you had to squeeze his head to get it going again. Uh, I said, I said, uh, said, Darren, if in doubt, he'll be thinking of monkeys. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Darren looked at Carl and he said, were you thinking of monkeys? He said, I tried not to and I thought of them more. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's true as well. Yeah. Right. So, um, <laughs> so I'm there, I'm there thinking of these numbers and that, and he's, uh, <laughs> He, then he said, right, let's just talk about other stuff for a bit, right? So I was like, well, I'm not gonna say anything, yeah. right, cos I, I don't want you to catch me out. But then when we were talking, I was trying to, like, knock him off track. Clever. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't- oh, do you know what I mean? I played a bit of hardball with him. Yeah, you know, yeah, really. yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, say- because we were talking about aliens and that as well, weren't we? And I was saying, well, you know, they might come and land again in 2060. <laughs> Clever. Do you know what I mean? Dropping yeah. in different numbers and sure. that, and he- so- Doing all that, playing him at his own game, and I think yeah. I had him for a bit. I On the road, right? yeah. So uh, anyway, comes down to the the time when he's telling me the the name and the number. Yeah. And uh, well, he explained what he actually did. I mean, that was. He just went. He said, "Just think of a number at the end of it," and uh, and and he said, "Oh, is it an I?" And you went, "It wasn't an I, but there is no okay." And then, anyway, he got he got. He got the name. Harris. Then he went, uh, he went and said, do you an extrovert? And he wrote down these numbers. Well, he, uh, actually, yeah, he, he wrote down some numbers and he said that if you're an extrovert, these are the numbers you tend to choose. If you're an introvert, these are the numbers you tend to choose. And he wrote them down. And he said, I don't think you're really an introvert, I don't think you're this, I don't think you're that, da, da, da. And I think he came up with the number 32, didn't he? He said to yeah, you, you're thinking yeah. of number 32. You said to him, no way. You couldn't believe your luck, could you, when yeah. you caught him out? But he said, he said it's either 42 or 32, didn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, but that, the, it was beside the point because yeah. then he said, you know, rather brilliantly, if, hang on a minute, if you just add up these numbers here, that adds yeah. up to 42. It was, it was a magic if you add up square. Those numbers, that's 42. That's 42 across diagonally there. That so box yeah, is 42. All the numbers there. that added up on the page, whether you go across, sideways, down, across, or whatever, always added up to 42. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which. And you've got the name Harris. Which the name freaks Harris, you right? out. It freaked me out. I kept saying to him, how do you do it? How do you do it? And he's, he wasn't telling me. I was talking to people at work about him, and, um, one lad said, um, apparently the, the trick that he uses is the same thing that Hitler did. Play record. No, no, seriously. Just, it, apparently it's the same thing because he was saying- What? Play record. No, just let me finish no. because, no, I've even ran it by other people to check if I'm okay. right on this. Okay, so that's, that's yeah. true play record and come back to Because the people this? in the XFM office, yeah, I mean they're pretty wise, they're up on that stuff. No, he used it in a different way. Yeah, play record. No, no oh, hang on a minute, let me hear it. Let me all, hear all it. All it is, it's power of suggestion, apparently. And w when Hitler used to do his big speeches to people. Yeah. Do you want to play? What should we play? Come on. Finish. Finish your D point. Well, that's, that's about it. Who I'm just saying. Ian Canfield. A few different people. Uh, oh, right. right. The big, yeah, the big thinkers no, out there. Like, in the, what? <laughs> <laughs> the, br the brain boxes. But anyway, right, it's Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, Magnus Magnusson works on XO now, doesn't he? Right, listen. Or was it Paxman? Was it Jamie Paxman? that blew me ab away, right, that, the fact that he got the name, he got the number. Mm. Spooky bit, right? Mm. Um. I'm walking home, I, I called you up a couple of times and I left a message on your phone, yeah. cos it was just amazing. Not only was he good at magic, but his maths was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that, that thing adding up to 42 was like, how did he do that? Uh, I yeah. mean, we didn't even make a big oh, deal yeah, out of that. Did that did he said, all Carol Borderman's got is the maths! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Imagine him on Countdown. Yeah. <laughs> He'd even know what they were gonna write down. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, a bit of a wasted talent. I should see him again about that. I think he's- <laughs> He asked him, I said, Derm, I said, why are you doing it on mucking around on telly? Then he went, sorry? Yeah. He went, why are you mucking around on telly?
Yeah. And uh, he, well, he, he, saying, said, he said, he said, you could make some serious money. I think Steve went, well, he does all right. He <laughs> went, nah, but he did that the ticket thing all day. Yeah. <laughs> but he, didn't you say to him you should be working for the police force? I said, yeah, you should be in a police station. You yeah. could help people out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a daft idea, is it? Not really. Right, so anyway, right, so I get home. Still, I'm calling different people up walking home. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Right, I called Suzanne up telling her about it. And she's like, slow down. She's so, you like a little kid who's just been on a fairground ride or something? Yeah, yeah. Slow down. All right, so I'm telling her, call me mum and dad up. My dad wasn't that impressed. No, of course He's not. He's like, well, that's all been done before. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, right, so- But then he wasn't impressed with little donkey, was <laughs> well, he? Well, no, he's, he's not impressed by much, is he? Right. Yeah. So, I get in- He and probably had to nip out down to the phone box. Right. And do some thieving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've, we've forgotten bread. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going on the phone box. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, so, so I get into my flat, right, and what they do in my flat where I live, they, they put the post in, like, these little pigeonholes. Right, oh. and I don't normally check them out. I leave it for Suzanne to do, right? Sure. Mm. But this time, for some weird reason, I thought, right, I'll I'll check it, see if we've got any posts. Open it up, there's only this. A letter for Miss Harris. Yep, there it is, bona fide in front of us. A letter addressed to a Miss Harris. Well, does she live there? No, it's my address, she doesn't live there. Did she ever? Don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, it's weird, isn't it? But we've what never had what? normally. There's a, there, I think there was a guy who lived there called uh, Yaki Shoki. Mr. Forty Two. <laughs> it was definitely wasn't an Aris, right? This yeah. is the first time we've had a letter for this woman. Yes. Right. But what are you claiming? Because well, Darren I, Brown himself admits that it is not paranormal. It is not supernatural. It is a mm, trick. Is it's it? a trick. It? But he would say that, wouldn't he? Hitler said that. Play a record. Well, are we, can we open this? Cause no, I'm, it's illegal. No, but I'm thinking if what it's if a birthday card for someone's like 42nd birthday. Right. You can't open that letter. Go and put it back or put not no you cannot open that letter. Why not? It's you can't open someone else's mail cuz you think Darren Brown's uh, supernatural. What if we steamed it open? And then resealed it. No one would know. It's only a letter. You can't uh, right I'm uh, yeah, you can but I I've, I've st you, I I don't want any part of it. Carl, so I think you, you should open it. it. No, are you open I'm it. not opening it. It's against the law. <laughs> Six different ways by The Cure from uh, the album The Head on the Door. We've enjoyed that. The what? Head on the Door, Carl. Ooh, Ooh, bit of a coincidence. Spooky, isn't it? it was only four weeks ago you were talking about a head and a door. <laughs> exactly. Has the door I'm got it. a number on it? <laughs> oh dear. So oh. we're not opening it. No. Well, I can't open it because as, as the producer, right? Oh yeah, because you're standing in society as such that they'd make <laughs> a real example of you. Yeah. That a producer of a tin pot radio show <laughs> once a week. Yeah. He should know better. He can press buttons and talk <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Send him down. That you, they wouldn't try you in an adult court. You would get they away. You would get away with it. Just they hear you speaking for a little while, and they would, they would, the, the judge would end up squeezing your head and letting you off. It'd be like those people who train monkeys to break in. Do you remember down in South London we talked about it in the past, yeah. and they were going around robbing stuff, Hackney. and they trained them to do it. Yeah. I think so I, think that, those, those, I don't think those monkeys would have got in trouble. It would have been the, the keepers. So, mm. you know, I think XFM would probably take the rap. Will you open it? No, I, I can't be seen to open it. No, he's I'm a writer, writer director. Exactly. So am I. I can't be seen to open oh, it. I'll give it here then. Right, I'm having no part of this. <laughs> That's against the law, but. Right, I'm having no part of it. Open it. Come on, you start it now. Right. The okay. thing is, right, if it's important, we can say maybe she's listening. But do you need the stress? What, what, it could be anything. What are you going to say? We're going to say, oh, and if you are listening, Mrs. Harris, you have got gonorrhea. Call the clinic. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It could be anything. Oh dear. Oh well. I've, I've, <laughs> I think I think my um, talk did well. What well, what is it? It's the number forty two on there. Oh. What is it? Can you say? Be careful. What? Uh, let me yeah. see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh. Dear sir, madam, your periodical dental inspection is now <laughs> due. <laughs> Would you kindly contact the surgery to make an appointment? Harris, Mrs. Harris, if you're listening, um, your periodical dental s inspection is now due. You'd like to, you might want to contact the, uh, yeah, but the dental surgeon mm. that you normally go to. She got, could have a, a faulty tooth. <laughs> faulty tooth. Faulty tooth. <laughs> faulty tooth. I don't believe it. Faulty tooth. <laughs> faulty tooth. <laughs> oh my god. God, that Darren's good. Darren isn't he? Brown's good, isn't he? <laughs> oh dear. That's some blur then.
Carl, is that really seven and a half years old? Blur. The Universal. All right. Well, next wise words there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just made me think. Sure. Carl, I asked you in the week, didn't I? Um, How old was that kid when that was out? She wasn't born, so she was about thirty. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's the first time we've officially broken the law on air. Well, I don't think we've broken the law before on air, have we? alright with a dentist appointment. Well, well, we haven't broken the law, Steve, he has. You're right, I, yeah, we're well, fine. We're and he should know better, he's the top producer <laughs> exactly. of a tin pot radio station. <laughs> Carl, um, <laughs> Ricky and I were doing some writing in the week and we needed a, a little, get a little book of Zodiac types. What's your thought on- Just to make sure it was good luck, you know, to be writing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you make of all that stuff, uh, horoscopes? Do you, do you, do you have any, uh, mm. thoughts on that? Now and again I'll read it, but sure. I'll believe it if it's good. Yeah. If it's not, I'm just go on. What star sign are you? That's perfect though. <laughs> that, but that is, that, that, that's that raison d'etre. That is, uh, those people who do zodiacs exist on that piece of philosophy. Yeah. I'll believe it if it's good. Exactly. And that's why when you have breakdowns, people don't go, you're a nasty little piece of work, you're a pug ugly little twat. And you never amount to anything. It's things like, hmm, you're probably too generous for your own good. Yeah. Um, you, you like to keep a bit of a distance, but you like to love. You're a warm person. It's all, it's always stuff like that, isn't it? People go, I suppose I am too good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that is me all over. Yeah. Mm. Do you you're know what I mean? You're a creative person. Yeah. Who thinks they're not a creative person? Exactly. You've got a wonderful sense of humour. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What, what starts on you? Um, mine changes. I'm on the edge. Oh, right. God. Okay. He even makes that complicated. <laughs> of course. He I even am. makes twaddle complicated. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, it changes depending what paper you read. Yeah. All right, in Tw theory. 23rd of you? September. So I think yeah. most of the time I'm a Virgo, I think. Oh. Well, I'll tell you. Write, write that down, uh, listeners, uh, 23rd of September, uh, and come round and give him the bumps. <laughs> Um, what, what I mean? Well, according to this, I mean, it, I, I mean, you've been criticising this, Rick. Sure. You've been saying that there's maybe not, not anything in the zodiac. Yeah, yeah, well, hang on, let me just read the, the uh, I'm, I'm, Is this going to change my mind? Well, Am I going to eat my words? The typical Virgoan. Mm, words. Okay. The what? physical appearance of the typical Virgoan. Yeah. High forehead. That's not true. Cranium may seem too big in comparison with the face. Look at Carl, look at Carl. But how specific is Has that? Has an extremely large forehead. Has a high hairline. That's mm. not true though, is it? Maybe quite tall. What are the blokes like? Often has one foot turned in more than the other. What do they- they've just described Rain Man! What is that? How can I be specific? Well that's why it sounds like Carl! What? <laughs> 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 one foot turned in? Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well have they even bothered doing one for you? Because there isn't many people who- Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Go on. What are you I, saying? I, I sort of think I'm fairly average looking, but I'm saying, have they wasted a page in that book for whatever you are? <laughs> <laughs> it started off me being dissing him and stuff, and you've been nice. Hang on a minute. I don't think you can be a Virgoan because it says uh, that they are normally quick, alert, and intelligent. <laughs> But no, actually, I have to say, it says here, the uh, behaviour and personality traits of the Virgoan, uh, uh, is an, it, as a child, is an excellent mimic, uh, can learn many things in a short time, yeah. not really true of you, is it? What, Re what, rarely like, questions what? authority, but frequently questions facts. Yeah. You never question facts. Yeah, you never question authority, he's <laughs> scared of authority. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, you were usually told, very, very upset if teased. That's true. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Hang on a minute though. Yeah. Can't take a bit of stick, too it much depends, pressure. If you yeah. can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Oh. What to teach a young Virgoan? Myths, fairy stories, make believe, daydreams, and how to use imagination should all be taught to young Virgoan. So they have plenty of magical moments to remember in their adult years oh. when they are often alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I know. This is good stuff. So, this is really good stuff. All right. Well, let's see. What What are you? Uh, well, um, I don't, don't think we should talk about that. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. It says the Vergoan is- I love some of the specifics of this. Vergoan is oh. an employer. He's excellent as the boss of a small company. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't get him on a Tuesday. Yeah, He's probably exactly. stamp collecting then. Yeah. Come on, he so loves a bit um, of haddock. Okay, let me look at my- um, Oh, that is good though, Carl, isn't it? That is you all over. I've changed your mind. It's brilliant. It's a real science. They've really put their work in with this one. Let me see, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, uh, Sagittarian is a happy, playful little clown. Little. Greets everyone. <laughs> 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 oh dear. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, let me see, the Sagittarius at home. Um, He's only gonna read the good bits though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. If that's it, what, what can it say? Mm. Uh, have, they, have they done yours in sort of small print because you've got special eyes? <laughs> I don't know what that insult is, Carl. What kind of an insult is that? Well, he you know. He's up that. Look at his face. He's <laughs> done me. Oh, oh dear. And come back to me. Boo hoo hoo, it won't do. Listen to the Gallagher boys and stop crying your heart out on XFM 104.9. No need to. It's monkey news. <laughs> So that is it time. Time, time for monkey news. Can we have the jingle? <laughs> oh, chimp party, that monkey news. <laughs> I love the jingle. Right, well, well uh, Can we play that jingle once more? Yeah. Let me cue it up. <laughs> 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 so, oh, chimp party, that monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Got a lot to live up to now. I'll yeah. be honest with you, often that jingle is more fun than the monkey news. Well, yeah. So you've got to excel yourself this week. Well, it's, uh, there's been a lot going on. Um, <laughs> in the monkey world. Yeah, uh, I was looking at the Guinness Book of Records that we bought last week. Mm -hmm. What you bought? What that I bought. Yeah. Is uh, it still wet? I was, I was cleaning the tea off it, I was having <laughs> a, having a little read through. And, uh, there was some monkey stuff in there, there was, um, this isn't the actual story, I'm just telling you yeah, what, what, it's like, what it's like looking up monkey news <laughs> yeah. all week. <laughs> it's like behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. It's like the making of monkey news, which is actually available on DVD. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, you know, 12 minutes unseen footage, just the making of monkey news. <laughs> which is my favourite bit in a way. If, if, you, if you enjoy monkey news, see how it happens, see, yeah. you know, from conception to... Uh, <laughs> it's all put together, yeah. yeah. go on. Yeah. What's a typical monkey news day? <laughs> well, there was, uh, there was some stuff about a monkey in the Guinness Book of Records. I think it, it had the record for asking for a cup of coffee in 23 different ways. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh. Oh. Well, that's good. Uh, just to show the monkey news is, is getting bigger and people are covering it. Donald McIntyre, he was on on BBC. Yeah. On Monday. No, he was on Channel 5, wasn't he? No, no, he hasn't moved over yet. This oh, is right, something right. that he did for the BBC. Right. So that was, that was pretty good. That was about, uh, well, it wasn't good. It was pretty... Pretty sad, really. What? Um, he was doing this thing. Do you know, like last week we were doing cheapest chimps. Yeah. And someone emailed in saying, you know, Donald McIntyre's doing cheapest chimps. Really? And it was about. Um, I, I bet he wasn't. I bet Donald McIntyre did not do a program called they didn't Cheapest use Chimps. That title. No. But you could tell where they'd got the format from. Sure. You know what I mean. Sure. And it sure. was uh, it was about gorillas, and how much you can get one for. But the problem was because they're that pricey. Huh? They were sort of. I mean, I don't even want. It is depressing. If it's cruel, then don't. Yeah, forget yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit. Okay. Uh, you know I mean, in, to go, I just say, uh, in the making of monkey news and cheapest chimps, not not, and you'll know it's harmed. <laughs> no monkey. No, 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 no. Go on. All right. Well, anyway, today's today's story uh, is emailed in. Uh, so you didn't even do anything towards it. <laughs> well, so when you say I've been working on monkey news, what you you printed that out? So it's the making of monkey news. You checking your email. Well, Brilliant. no, I'm always looking at different options at, you know, how much is going on. This yeah. is what makes me laugh when he says he's, he's really busy. Yeah. I'm doing other stuff and that. I'm doing other yeah. stuff. People are sending him monkey news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get an email. I is it from it Reuters? Out. Well, listen, it's from Steve. Okay. Right? Uh, now what it is, is this monkey, right? Yeah. Don't know where it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a bit before the monkey anyway, right? Jeez. It, is this, no, listen. Shoot me. Right? It's a bank. There's this bank, right? Busy bank. Normal yeah. day, everything's going normal, yeah. right? Busy bank, people going in, doing what they do, seeing about mortgages and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Everything's normal, everyone's yeah. happy, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's quite busy one day. Fella comes in with a gun and a balaclava on. Oof. Up to no good. Right, I'll tell you now, Carl. If this fella turns out to be any ape or monkey related species, you're never doing this again. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've never. I so, so just if you want to finish it, it's at your own risk. But if this fella who robbed the bank turns out to be a chimpanzee, <laughs> that's the end of monkey news. All right. Okay. Let's right. hear the end. It's a it's a lovely day in a lovely bank. Everyone's happy. Yeah, everything's normal. A um, man comes in in the balaclava. Man comes in. Starts, Is it a man? Starts waving a gun around. <laughs> Is Shut it? Up, Rick. Let me let him finish the story. Starts waving a gun around. Yeah. Right. Up to no good. So everyone's thinking, oh god, you know, wish you didn't come in here, it's not gonna be a good day. How tall is the man? Shut up! Let's hear it. 
uh, everything, you know, oh god, and he's telling everyone to get down on the floor. Yep. Everyone's in what, thinking. in English? In English? Yeah. Think in English? So. Yeah. So everyone's panicking, everyone's getting on the floor thinking this is it, this is, you know, it's all over. Yeah. Just when you think, you know, it could it's all bad news, yeah. it's all bad news, doors swing open, little monkey wanders oh, in. Oh god, it's worse. Shut up, Rick. Little monkey wanders <laughs> in, right? The robber's like, what's going on here? <laughs> He's yeah. telling it to get down on the floor, I don't think it was taking any notice. No, right? it was just busy asking for coffee. It runs in, I don't know if it was kind of withdrawal or, or deposit or whatever, <laughs> it wanders in, right? Uh, get, goes up to the robber. Where did it, where did it come from? Shut up, will you let him finish the story and then ask questions, that's okay. only fair. Okay. Wanders in, uh, runs up to the fellow with the gun, takes the gun and the bag of money off him. Everyone's like, yay, you know, we've been saved. Then the monkey starts backing out with the gun and the money. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so, sit down, sit down no, and finish. I'm not having this. And he does, he, does, story. he does a runner with the with the money and the gun. No one's seen it since. You are an idiot. I mean, you are. You have said some stupid things in your time. What are you talking about? It's a story that happened. No. What are you talking about? What do you mean it backed out? It came in, whether, was it as an accomplice? Was it an opportunist monkey robbery? What are you talking- Think, Carl! Think! I know it's mad, that's, that's the idea of monkey news. We're telling people how, how like, how monkeys are, are pretty, you know, they're mental. <laughs> they're up to no good. What are you- Think! They've never seen the monkey since. What, did he have a get getaway car waiting? Did he swing his way to freedom? Where was this? There's no details. Don't talk rubbish. Well, uh, Steve, Steve emailed it in, he's got it off the net, and the funny oh, okay. thing is, Can the I funny thing is, the there? yeah, the funny thing is, um, it, it wasn't just him who sent it. I had that a couple of times, so a few people obviously read the story and said, you know, that'll be good for monkey news. It doesn't say anymore, it doesn't say if he went off to Spain, it doesn't say, <laughs> you know, what, you know, if he's on Crime Watch, yeah. it doesn't say any of that. It's just saying that's what he did, that's the story. And that's what Monkey News is about. I've heard that they're making a movie version with Phil Collins. <laughs> 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 so I look forward to that and Judy Waters. So that's that's this week's Monkey News. If you've got any, you know, well, anything no, that don't bother. In your that's the end. No, that is the end. That's the end of Monkey News. No more Monkey News. Which is, uh... Nice to hear that one again. Always. Metal Mickey, Swade, on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly over with, uh... Ricky, Steve and Carl. I've done another little sketch for you, Carl, because uh, I was excited by the fact that we raised that money. So I've done a little... Well, it's not, it's not over yet. It's like people go to the website and if they think it's worth more than 50, they can say, oh, I'll give you 55 or something. Well, so they actually put that little one on. It's all three of us, isn't it? Well, they haven't but, done that yet. No, but they can put that on next do, week yeah. and they can frame it for them, can't they? Well, if they have a look, xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, can have a look at it if you want it. Just pay some money and... Now... No. It'd be worth a bit of money, won't it, in a few years, when we're all dead. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, Carl, you're going on holiday. You yeah. need a little rest, don't you? Yeah. What's it? What's the? What's the vibe? What's the vibe of the day? What? What's the? What's the? Uh, Just um, what's the crack on holiday. Come on. Where are you going? Madeira. Right. Good. Um, it's for Suzanne's dad, right? My girlfriend's dad. He's sixty, so yeah. She's that's the average age in Madeira. Checking, been, uh, is it's, it? It's, good, it's quite, doesn't quite, yeah. Well, My mate Damo went to Madeira, um, and, uh, he was worried about, sort of, terrorism on the plane, and he looked around and he thought, well, if someone gets up, someone will wrestle him to the floor, and he, he looked around, and, uh, he was the only one he realised could have got out of his seat quickly enough. <laughs> so, uh, he'll enjoy it, it's quite quiet, it's nice. It'll be alright, I mean, it's the first time a, a mum and dad have been away, so... Whatever. Abroad, yeah. So right. they're, they're worrying about... They just don't understand the rules and stuff, so they, they're panicking a bit. And then in the week he called Do they know well, they're, they're, to take, they're gonna take livestock? Yeah. Well, well it's getting like that. It was like- Are they, are they filling <laughs> loads of Durex with heroin as we yeah. speak? <laughs> 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 no, but, um, do they know about passports expiring, don't they? It, I mean, they're well, not completely stupid. Uh, they know about all that, right? Yeah. And, uh, he called up in the week, one of the questions said, uh, what's the best thing when you're going abroad, what's the best thing to use to carry tea bags? <laughs> Mm. So it was like, what are you worrying about that for? They'll sell, they'll sell tea bags out there. And he's like, well, we want to take, take our own. <laughs> it's like, they'll sell tea bags. Yeah. And he's worrying about that. He's saying, can I put it in a glass jar? So put it in a glass jar then. <laughs> he's saying, oh, I'll, I'll bubble wrap it. 
So his bubble wrapping a, a tea thing is just, I mean, it is annoying me a bit, because it's meant to be a week off from, from you annoying me, and already he's niggling me. <laughs> yeah. But you are that. easily wound up. You are a very finickety little fussy person. You don't like any, the slightest bit of pressure. See, I thrive on pressure. Well, I'm ba 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 working here, working there. That's the way I work as well. That's always doing stuff. Monkey news. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, Monkey News, I've got an email, I won't phrase. read it to on air, it's rubbish, but yeah, I, that, that's one not, feature, not that's my bit done, that's all I have to do. Well, I'll tell you what, when I'm away next week, do Monkey News and see what you can find out. Alright? Ooh, there's a challenge. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> see what you can do. Yeah. I've already told them about the Guinness Book of Records one, so you can't use that. Yeah. Right. We're gonna find the best Monkey News ever, Carl. Wow. What was it you said to me about- cause uh, the, I mean, the thing is that you don't really like people, do you? That's the truth of it. People annoy you, don't they? They wind you up. Yeah. What yeah. was it you said to me about friends? You don't- He doesn't like friends. He doesn't, like he doesn't, he doesn't, want, friends. He doesn't he said, want any more friends. He doesn't want any friends. Is it because one day they'll ask me to help him change a tyre? Yeah. What was it you- No, it's always reason? hassle. Well, the I tyre mean, he sits and swings on yeah, in his back exactly. garden, he means. It's, it's just- <laughs> the, 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 they call up, they ask for stuff, they want favours yeah. doing. Yeah, they, they want a- they want a pint, they want to chat to you because they like you. Uh, I know they're a pain in the arse. I- you, I tell you what, Carl, you're better off without them, mate. Yeah. Although, to be fair, Rick, friends like you. <laughs> yeah. You're not judging them on me, are you? You're not judging all you possible all friends, friends on me. Like him. Nah, just that they, they do sort of, you know. You know, some friends will never touch you around the head oh, or I'll never see you for a week, am I? Oh. You should oh. get a deeper squeezing. Little squeezing? I am going to get a little squeezing. Can I come around there and squeeze you? Squeeze oh. him in now, it's probably the last chance. Well, we'd go okay. to ads and that's it, really. Is that it? We've got no time for records. That's a shame. Well, a quick squeeze. A quick squeeze. That's like a Benny Hill slap there on the Yeah, Alright, that's that's enough of that. Okay. I'm not squeeze it, squeeze it. Right. Oh. That's it, that's it. Excellent. Can that do later. you for a week? Yeah. Right. See, See you, you next week. See you later. See you, Rick. Have a good holiday. Alright. You should be a weatherman because once again you've predicted uh, wrongly. It's not, it's not a beautiful day at all, is it, Stephen? <laughs> oh, well, that was you two, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Claire Sturgis in for Carl Pilkington. Pil Carl Pilkington is yeah. on holiday. Sunday as we speak. Where, where has he got? Mauritius, was it? Madeira. Madeira. I think with um, uh, his girlfriend's parents. <laughs> oh. you, you remember last week he was uh, worried they'd never been abroad, and uh, her dad was saying, "How was my way, was way to uh, pack tea bags?" Yeah, Carl's yeah. going. You get him over there. He's going. We've got to put him in a jar. Goes put him in a jar. <laughs> I phoned him up in the week uh, just before he we went. I think Friday. Said, oh, "Have a nice time," and uh, out Sunday, and he said. Uh, Guess what he's doing now? Right. <laughs> what he said? He's packing margarine. <laughs> oh, of course he is. <laughs> oh, oh, bless him. him. My dad does that. My parents always take uh, tea bags wherever they're going. Really? You know, for fear of, of there being some kind of tea bag drought in France. Yeah. You know. Is it is it wrong? But I mean, I don't I, know. Is it because of maybe English breakfast tea you can't get over there? So but you can. You, you, can you though? I mean, you, you can. can get peaches. Yeah. You, are, you know, you tea can is take probably the single most popular drink in the world. I know, but what about the for the fancy foreign teas? Your Earl Greys and the like. Well, I don't know. Because I want good English breakfast. Don't bother me with Earl Grey. I don't know what that cup of tea is. It's not tea to me. It's just it's laughable. It's weak. It's pathetic. It's just it's ugh. Oh. Do uh, you know what? Earl Grey with a little bit of skimmed milk isn't so bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And is your husband a fan? <laughs> We've started, eh? It's all off already, isn't it? It's all right, it's we all started. Ban, ban, oh, oh, go at oh, each other. Some, sometimes sort of pretending, you know. Sometimes <laughs> pretending we're not close mates. You know, yeah, close, yeah, close and, friends, uh, you know, and all that innuendo and that. Oh, smutty, smutty, smutty. I go, God, freaky goggle eye thing. Oh, right, once again, I go too far. I sometimes it, go too it. far. I do ruin it when I go t uh, too far, so it's been nice. Well, let's have a bit of blur. Ooh, well, it's good, man. The fat man. We're not out of time. We've got a whole hour and fifty minutes to go on the Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant show. XFM one hundred four point one. One of those after every record. <laughs> They're great, aren't they? It's just I think I think if you were actually like a proper DJ, if you actually tried to do the Doctor Fox thing, I think you'd be quite good. Really? I but I, I, I think I could only survive doing that sort of um, post eleven p.m. Ooh, quiet things down now. Like <laughs> yeah. Rare. I, I, I love all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of radio. That, yeah, 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 yeah. That that American jock type yeah, thing exactly. as well. Um, I listen to. Saga radio now sometimes. What? It's on digital, I think. It's radio <laughs> for the over 50s. Yeah. And it plays, it was, it was playing Cliff Richards this morning. It played, um, Sammy Davis Jr. It played, um, The Beatles, Here Comes the Sun. And I was loving it. I was well, thinking, yeah. isn't well, it? Well, it's aimed at your age group. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I've got a bad back. I've been complaining of a bad back all week. He's been ill. Uh, don't even start We have work this week. He's been ill up with the flu. Still not bad. I'll tell you this. I, 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 uh, Wednesday morning, I think it was, I woke up and I had the head, the sore throat, the aching body. And I, do you know, I immediately thought I've got the SARS virus. 
I really did. I genuinely, because I've always been a bit of a hypochondriac. I mean, Ricky pretends to be, but no, I genuinely you know, it, was petrified. That I doesn't make online. sense, does it? How can you pretend to be a hypochondriac? No, I am a, I am a hypochondriac, and you are genuinely always ill. You're always okay. sort of, you've always got a bit of a so snuff got, of So, I'm justified in thinking it might be the, the dead. You're a sickly virus. child. I don't exactly. know what's happened to you. Well, it's, I think I will it's, be. It's so much to do with West Country breeding, and you, you haven't, I don't know, no, he hasn't got normal sort of barriers to sort of flu so and cold. So, his immune system yeah. is ill. Oh, sure. Claire, weak, look at him. I'm quite a weak child. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll <laughs> probably die in a garret having written some bloody brilliant poetry. <laughs> And then yeah, I'll die of consumption. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so I went online to check out what exactly the symptoms of the SARS virus were. <laughs> and uh, seriously, did seriously, you I did. I was so oh, panicked. So I went straight online, and it, and it was exactly what I had. It's, it well, was it a, is a strain of flu. That's exactly, why. Exactly. That was the thing. Well, that's what I had. So I was thinking to myself because it said the incubation period was between two and seven days. I thought, well, what? Where have I been that I could maybe have got contact with people from? And then I thought, wait a minute, BAFTAs. I, I think I brushed against a couple of the guys from Banzai. I know. <laughs> I'm thinking, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And so I was suddenly getting a little bit eggy because I mean, there's a lot of um, there was a lot of people. There's like 1,500 people at the Baftas, so yeah. I mean, any one of them could be carrying it. Yeah. So I was really just panicked, but you know, I didn't immediately rush to the doctors. No. Because you've got to wait for ages down there. Uh, Doctor Charles, <laughs> brilliant, but you've got to queue up for ages because it's down in um, Swiss Cottage where I live, and I'll tell you, there's some dregs in there in the waiting room. <laughs> oh man, and I've people who've just gone in there to read the magazines, and they're uh, just sat there. It's all oh, there's some people who just waste the doctor's time. That's what annoys me. A lot of old people, a lot of saga. Listeners who just waste people's time. I know. I, I went to uh, accident emergency once because I'd done my leg in, and I tell you, what, you look round and you think, oh, look at all these people. Yeah. Look at these. They should be. There's hardly of any of them won't handcuff to someone. <laughs> exactly. Was, I know. You know what I mean? You go to casualty on a Friday night, yeah. and it's like, oh, awful. Yeah. And there's uh, and so I mean, it was that thing. Well, I could either go to Doctor Shah, but that's NHS, or I could go to uh, one of the Medi centres. They charge money, Claire. Mm. And I mean, I know it's a killer disease, but you know, <laughs> I'm it? not making cash. <laughs> you yeah. don't want it. Yeah. You don't. Because yeah. what if it isn't? That's money yeah. wasted. You don't get exactly. your money back, do I mean, you? I really need him to say, you've got the deadly SARS virus, for it to be <laughs> worth the 80 quid, exactly. you know? Exactly. Yeah. And as yeah. I suspected that, you know, it was 50-50, I decided not. I, I decided to ride it out. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <coughs> thankfully, so far, I've, uh, I've not you're died. You're right. No, you're yeah. right. You're right. Okay, so, um, You're right, yeah. Yeah, well, that's- that's lucky. So, um- I know, so I phoned him up, I said, uh, I don't think I can work. And, I mean, uh, Ricky's a close friend of mine, I've known him for a time now, and I really consider him one of my best mates, but- I'll be honest with you, you didn't rush round with a bowl of soup. Did you? you I don't want to catch it, do I? It's no, no point both of us being well, ill. Well, this was the implication, because it wasn't that- it wasn't that you explicitly said, in this relationship, you're the one that's expendable. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the kind of- that was the sort of underlying <laughs> suggestion, I felt. No, I just thought- to be honest, I thought I could do with a day off as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought, oh, 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 well, oh well, don't worry then, don't worry. <laughs> Tennis. Yeah. No, no, but, um, I had a- I- I- I was, uh- What's wrong with your back then, really? I don't know, I think it's just- Age. I don't know. I, I don't get things seen to, so it's just been hurts when I tie my shoelaces. That's why I've got. I'm wearing clogs. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much easier. What well, drawstring trousers and clogs? You know. Um, you but used what to go to the doctor a lot more, though. You don't tend to do it now. Well, I'm not paranoid anymore. I, I, t I had two oh. flashes of my, when my, my mum died of cancer. Twice, I think I said, oh, "There's a lump." Uh, uh, once well, I've we been to the doctors twice with him. Yeah. Have you? Seriously? I seriously sat in a waiting room with him twice. Well, I, I just, I just went up uh, for, th for the, man. you know, I thought, I thought, oh, oh God, I felt, felt them. I didn't need to do it then, did I? I, I naturally no. just touched my, but I, uh, <laughs> I sh we should point out, we should point out that, um, Ricky's mother didn't die of testicular cancer. That, it just, no, 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 but I had so it sort hard. of, I thought, oh, God, well, I've got it now. And, um, I think <laughs> I went along once with testicular cancer, didn't I? Yeah, you had the testy problem once, I remember, because yeah. I remember sitting in the waiting room looking through uh, an old Argos catalogue with you for some reason. I think that was the only thing to Then read. I think I thought I had throat cancer, didn't I? Yeah, then, yeah, because yeah. I think you had a bit of a, <laughs> a, yeah, a, a cough, sore yeah. throat, didn't you? But then I think, now I think, now I think, I got him over that, I was just like, yeah, sent me a bit. Hmm. So, uh, but, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just Why a bad Why were you fiddling back. around down below? Because, I mean, it wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like I called on you to do some work and you said, I've got to rush to the doctors. I think it was like lunchtime. Yeah. So you'd obviously be meddling around down there. Well, I know, I, I tested a few Steve. times, but I'm never sure. Well, during the day, I mean, can you do that when you first get, and maybe before you go to bed? Not in a restaurant when we're eating dinner. Yeah, but he likes to, you know, he has a shower Certainly not spaghetti and kumquats. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that confused me. I don't know where the hands were. You put were. me right off my meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But, Ricky, just to clear it, you are okay, aren't um, you? Yeah, of just course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just yeah. a bad back. Yeah, let's have a record, shall we? A bit I'd of Bruce Springsteen, we love it. Oh.
cheering brakes. And painkiller on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, good to be here. I'm yeah. missing Carl, I'm missing hearing Carl, actually. Shouldn't it, mention him, because people will remember them, they go, oh yeah. I yeah. know. We're yeah. trying to pretend How are you, Sturgis, by the way? We've not really said hello to you. I'm, I'm very well, thank you, okay? you, yeah, yeah. Do you look forward to these occasions when you I get do. to stand in for Carl? I, I get a bit, a little bit nervous. Is it intimidating? I it is, it no, be. it is a bit intimidating, because he's, because he's such a funny man, mm. um, but you know, once yeah, I'm here, I'm okay. He no, he is. It's not like he's doing it on purpose. It's, it's, you know what I mean. So he's, he's just, na he's a natural. At least you know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good point. Yeah, it's not good all, point. it's not all down there, is it? No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, no, you know, no, you know. it'll it be fine. It's only an hour and a half to go. We'll be okay. Can we talk about? Um, can we talk about the BAFTAs? I, no, I don't want oh, to yeah. sort of go on oh, about, you know, well, with the, the awards oh, and everything. Oh, I don't like to talk <laughs> about it. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Claire, I mean, uh, no, no, but but what do you want to know? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? How many no. you won? Well, of course we won. Well, I know how many yeah. you won. Yeah. We're all uh, watching, not, obviously. Not, not everyone does, though, Claire. I mean, <laughs> how many did you win, you Steve? Want, you might want to remind me. What, in all or what? What are you talking about? Do you mean this year and last? two now. Two last year, four in all. So it's four in all. Two of those are Ricky's, specifically his. No, Steve, what I really want to talk about was Ricky's white suit. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, listen. <laughs> well, let, 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 let me explain. Well, well, never mind all that. One, it's actually I bought it for a photo shoot because I'm doing this thing. I've got I've got a DVD coming out in October, and I'm doing the I'm doing a spoof of the front cover of Thriller. So I bought a white suit, nice. and I got it right. And I thought, well, I might as well wear that then now and get it dry clean. I thought you blagged and it. And I thought, one. I thought when I put it on, I thought I looked a bit like Sean Connery as James Bond. Apparently, I look like Tattoo from Fantasy <laughs> Island. <laughs> the little midget guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure. Which is, uh, you sure. know, I, I, I did yeah. watch it back and, uh, <laughs> you know, there are some, uh, Resemblances. Uh, I sh uh, at one point, I did go to plan, yeah. which was I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought. Well, I because I when he suggested he was going to wear it, I said that's crazy. I said it's madness because it just I knew it would come back and haunt him. I just it's just I got away with it though. Well, did you? No. I mean, what was it? I said to you? We were talking about it, and he said, Oh no, he said, I, I said, he said, what are you wearing it with a sort of white shirt and a white tie? I went, no, no. Um, I wear the uh, black tie. He said, he said, right. He went, um, you should do it with the white shirt and the, the white tie. I said, he went, you know, do that whole Randall and Hopkirk thing, and I went, that's what I'm worried about. He went, what? You're worried people think you're a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pathetic. I, I just, I didn't think it was a good idea. I just love the way that if you're a celebrity, somehow you're allowed to wear, like, exactly. nonsense, outrageous yeah. clothes because it's kind of expected of you because, you know, you're but it wasn't mental. Time. It wasn't like but Graham no, Norton but... going in curtains or Jonathan Ross dressing up as Lawrence Will and Bowen. It was just a white but suit, But it's just that it? thing of, it's just that thing of, you know, I am. It's cheeky Ricky Gervais here. Look what I'm wearing. <laughs> I was worried there was gonna be chocolate mousse, though. Yeah. Or Johnny Vegas was gonna greet me and throw up immediately. Yeah. It was sort of like, I was, I had to keep away from people. And what you're sitting on. But I tell you what, I, I think it worked with Anne Robinson, didn't it? Do you she, she winked it, yeah. at you when you went. She liked that, you. She just can't stop that. No, she's no, made, there she's was made a it special... into a catchphrase. But you made <laughs> yeah. her giggle like a little schoolgirl. I knew it was safe though to say that thing about her drinking because I'd, I'd done a non-broadcast pilot with her this year. Um, for a, a, a friend was uh, the producer, and it's a new show called um, "Look Who's Coming to Dinner," and the premise is I choose sort of right. six heroes that are alive, and so. I, I knew it was all right, so I didn't just go out there and start insulting oh, this that, poor that, middle-aged that, woman. I sort okay. of knew she could take a joke. She's all right. She's obviously, obviously, she's not really like that. So, yeah. No, but I love the way she just giggled like a little girl. She's I think little. she was quite good, actually. I, I think it's better when I she's sort she's of ad-libbing. I don't think she's as good when she's sort of got lines and she's hitting marks. She's quite good when she's sort of. Uh, like when Peter Kay came on, she went, "Have you dyed your hair?" Yeah. And he went, "Have I dyed my hair? What sort of talk is that?" Which <laughs> I thought was quite yeah, nice. Was Your quote was good, though. What, when he went, peace, yeah, or war. I, I, was, I just, <laughs> I, I just hate it when, um, oh god, celebrities t get their political, their, I've got to say something political because no, it's all, all that suffering in the world. And I don't know, do, it's like those things you see in the, the, the papers where it's, it's got, um, uh, a general elections or a war and it's got a picture of Billy Piper, just a picture and she go, it goes, Labour. Or, <laughs> yeah. it's got, you know, Ross Kemp. No to war. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. What, when would that when would that be influential? No idea. It, it it's sort of like you go someone goes to you do, 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 what do you think of war? I go war. I don't know. I've made your mind up. <laughs> well, no, it's difficult, isn't it? Is it? Is it? Well, yeah. You know, because on the one I hand, I don't know where I you, stand. Well, exactly. On the one hand, you could say that you know war is wrong because it caused suffering. But on the other hand, you know, it's, it, that's a knee jerk reaction. And some wars are justified. You know, like stopping you know fascism or or whatever. And you know, like pacifism, sometimes you have to uh, to have defence. So it's not clear. And I go okay. Let's make it easier for you. 
What do you think of the little black one in sugar babes? <laughs> think she's brilliant. She hates war. <laughs> That's me. That's me done then. Exactly. Does that help sway your, your yeah. mind? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know when it is influential. Remember when, um, it? when the, uh, that young au pair was over in, um, in America and she got, she got in, uh, arrested for the, the, the murder or the death, rather, of that, of that young child. I forget her name. Do you remember that oh, story? Louise Woodward. Well, do you remember there was a whole section in the paper there where there was, um, I think it was members of Coronation Street. Saying, release her, please release her. I remember you Just said you fancied her. <laughs> Who's that? You said you fancied her when it was all up. Well, I, I he, he, he said, he said, I think he was the danger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was an element of that. I, I, do you know what I thought it was? I, I would love, I would love you to go out with Louise Woodward. The thing about Woodward, I, I what's she doing now? The thing about Woodward is that she. Um, <laughs> My suspicion was, my suspicion was <laughs> that when she came back and she'd been cleared of it, that she'd been cleared be of it. Yes, she was. No, she wasn't. Wasn't she? No. I don't think she. I think no. Just it was. Let her she out. did her know, time, and it was. It was. Time, I think it was yeah. manslaughter. What? I think. Uh, oh, we're, I, I'm not we're sure about this. Teetering on the edge of getting. Well, no, no. If someone knows, call up. Off, uh, you know, if, uh, we don't know this, so don't. Yeah, don't, I think don't, you're right. Well, either way, either way, it was a tragic, tragic accident. And uh, she wasn't a murderess. That was the clear point. And, and it just struck me that, um, that uh, nevertheless, there would probably be a certain stigma. You know, so she was down, you know, kind of Monroe's on a Wednesday night, you know, looking for a dance. Probably there weren't going to be a lot of guys queuing up for her because they were conscious that, you know, she had this certain reputation. Whereas Ding Dong, Gentleman Steve, yeah. I'm happy to step in. Do you know, know what? I'd let her babysit because she'd never, she'd be so careful, wouldn't mm. she? Do you know what I mean? She'd be on real best behaviour. Yeah. So, uh, maybe we shouldn't be talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> but I do wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> well, if you, if you know... <laughs> oh, eight, seven, hundred, eight, hundred, one, two, three, four. <laughs> if you're a lawyer and we've said something wrong, let us know now and we'll apologise yeah. quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know. I'll but tell no, you what, anyway, good luck music. to you. <laughs> Louise, if you're out there listening, you know, you, good luck and, um... You know, Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM .co .uk, That's the I don't want my name. I don't want my name attached in case. Get in, get in touch. Yeah. Um, you you're know, free tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm free. I'm free. Um, for the next eight years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. sure, 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 yeah. sure. Sweet, 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 sweet. Ten story love song. Uh, love song. Yeah, ten story love song <laughs> from uh, the Stone Dozies. Yeah, um, see, it's not as easy as it looks. It's is not. It? It's not. And I'll tell you, it also because I'm a little under the weather still. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my uh, that's my excuse. You've had a week off. I concentrate. You, I I mean, I've got cable TV, but there is nothing on, is there, in the in the daytime? It is just. I mean, I loved today with Des and Mel. That's good. Brilliant. That's all right. That. I with Joe Pasquale on again. <laughs> I, I, he I always pops up. I love it when he pops Joe up. Joe Pasquale is an absolute. I love Joe. Uh, genuinely, off without Joe. irony, yeah. I really like Joe Pasquale. Do you know him? Have you met uh, him? No, I haven't. No, but I really, really like him. I think he's yeah, really funny. He's really good. Yeah. And uh, one of his favorite, one of his jokes that I've always enjoyed is, um, why is there a uh, lock on the door of the twenty four seven shop? It's good. He's a thoughtful man. It's good. You know, it's open all the time, Claire. No, I just like his squeaky voice. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's fine. I don't like well. jokes. But uh, no, I, I only caught the end uh, the other day. But um, it was brilliant. Des was singing, singing a medley of Buddy Holly songs. He doesn't quite sing, does he? It's, it's like, sort of it's talking. It's, right? like, it's like pulling your punch. <laughs> oh, my soul, it's <laughs> my way from the thing. Yeah. Do you know? He can't. He can't actually. He's not actually singing. It's no. talking. It's kind of talking the words. Yeah. But he he knew Buddy apparently, and he toured with him. So I then. am an antichrist. <laughs> um, and <I'm> Kai. <laughs> it never quite finished. It's lovely. No, he's great. He's got no, like, he's got no breath. But, it uh, right. but it's the adverts in between. He is 73, things. though. He's amazing for it. Doing well, isn't he? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I, you know, he's a good Sorry, who's 73? Des O'Connor. <laughs> is he seriously? Yeah. I think so. Amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. doing well. Yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> um, so a toast to Des O'Connor. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Raise your glasses. And all you listening at home. <laughs> so I'd, love, I'd love to see him interview Louise Woodward. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Do you want to hear some Louise Woodward? I have had some calls. But I don't know if they're true or not, though, do you? What, no, what did you true. hear? Well, uh, I think one of the. Oh, we, no, we mustn't. Law. No, we mustn't say that shop that she works no, no, in. No, no, we wouldn't okay, say that. But in case it's I'm sure I read the same, th same thing, Steve. Someone said uh, they read that she was studying law, and I think I read that because she knows so much about it. Yeah. Uh, now she decided She's to. She's the system, yeah. You never know when it's coming useful. But she has been spotted in various parts of the country right. selling all manner of things. Uh, okay, and, brilliant. Uh, so I'm on door to door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, no, we, from mother care. We've got to stop this now. <laughs> we've got to stop this now. It's not okay, fair. That's, that's it's, yeah. uh, it's all water under the bridge. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, um, let's play a record. <laughs> let's no, play a record. Fair. No, I'll talk about it later. We're I, scared I, I think, now. Yeah, we've just got ourselves in uh, trouble. I think we just need to go and consult our lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to hear some more? Yeah, 
<laughs> Peter Gabriel. Oh, this is a beautiful track. Um, and it was actually in, uh, uh Vanilla Sky, so a bit of resurgence. This is, um, Salisbury Hill. <laughs> Peter Gabriel, what a lovely track that is. Salisbury Hill on XFM, 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. You know, if Carl was here, yeah. do you know what he'd want now? Probably ads, no. Some adverts. Yeah. Do you want some now? Well, if it's <laughs> what Carl would have wanted. Okay. Look, <laughs> Carl, then some ads. Excellent. Placebo and Bitter End. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Claire Sturgis in for Carl Pilkington. Do a good who's job. in Madeira. Indeed. Is that where the cake's from? Yep. It's it named after, I think, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. It's nice, it's nice, lovely. It's sort of, uh... I don't know where Madeira is. It's sort you know. of off Africa. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, I think Portuguese. There are a lot of Portuguese. old people there, isn't there? There are a lot of old people yeah. there. There are a lot of well, old Carl, people there. Well, he's essentially, uh, a 50-year-old, a 50 50-year-old yeah. man in the body yeah. of a 30-year-old. Yeah. I know, yeah. I think it is. Where is Ricky Gervais? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> party like... by, party by the pool, it was. It was actually really good. I, I actually, I'd much prefer that. Then, um, uh, we went to, uh, Greece once, and we were wandering in this place by mistake, going through this, and it was just full of people in Everton shirts and Liverpool shirts Ooh. and just drinking lager. Like, oh, where's the fun in that? And just, I, I can't, uh, the idea of Butlins, millions, just millions of families screaming around would drive me Butlins mental. Butlins is the most extraordinary yeah. place I've ever been to. I we, went there with a bunch of friends. We can't slag it off, but, I mean, <laughs> and not Butlins specifically, just any... Anything. No, I'm not slagging buttons off. No. It's just, but it, it is was an just I've never been to Butlins. It's an extraordinary yeah. place. The bars themed, one bar themed in the Wild West style. Brilliant. But a, band, a tribute band to Status Quo playing. <laughs> really? It was extraordinary. Oh, so you walk in the swing doors, <laughs> and there's Status Quo playing, and everyone else is all the staff dressed in cowboy outfits, um, and cowgirl outfits, uh, serving drinks. I've told you this before, but I sneaked into Butlins. We, we sneaked in one night, and we didn't know what was on. And they were serving lager and chips, and there's just <laughs> loads of families and and uh, lots of northern men in uh, short sleeve shirts and kids running around and stuff. Uh, and uh, so they just arranged the chairs in this sort of dance hall, and they went. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the entertainment for this evening is David Copperfield, not the magician. <laughs> <laughs> And well, it was the bloke from, uh, Three of a Kind. Of course. But he came out, he did it all, he did all the jokes, he did all the, hello, how are you? Oh, you're nice. You know, to people in the audience. <laughs> and then his finale was he stood on a chair because there wasn't a stage and he did classical gas, seriously, on guitar. <laughs> and then they closed, they went out right and he went, thanks for it. He went off and I stopped clapping. And he came back on to get his jacket. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. It was it's great. Weird, there, there was also a girl-boy duo in, in, uh, blue satin called Joint Effort, <laughs> which I was loving. <laughs> and at the end, right, it was on, I think it was on a Saturday night, so, uh, people were leaving, sort of, the, the next day, or Friday night, they leaving the next day. And, uh, the kids and that were sort of like going to Redcoats and they were crying, right? And all the Redcoats and Joint Effort and... <laughs> Uh, they did We Are The World. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> what an amazing night that was. Extraordinary. Yeah. They yeah. are incredible places. Yeah. Joint effort. I don't think- I saw a documentary, I'm sure I saw a documentary, which is finding out what, uh, the likes of David Copperfield are up to now. Is it- yeah. <laughs> and he was a Thatcher, wasn't he? Wasn't he mending roofs? I think so, yeah. I and think I'm you're sure right, I saw yeah. him saying, they said, uh, would you not, you know, would you not want to be back on primetime TV? And he said, do you know, I, I, I think I prefer mending roofs. Well, I'm, well, I'm not sure. Well, he's probably no. He's probably the same as uh, David Van Day with that advert um, when he said uh, he got to the point where I prefer to sell burgers than records. <laughs> no, Do you, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you never preferred selling burgers, David. <laughs> Have you watched any of the Reborn in the? Episode? I love it. You see, Absolutely I've, love I've it. Missed it, and I'm I reckon, it's Hadley or Cox. I'm it's Hadley or Cox gutted. all the way. I reckon. Who's Cox? Um, uh, we oh. close our eyes, we never do him. What band is that? What band is that? Go West. Go West. Oh, right. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's probably the best singer in a sort of stand-up cabaret And, and how does it work? Do they get voted out as they go around? Yeah, So yeah. it's Sonia's gone, isn't it? No, there's two, two, uh, from, um, the studio audience, two are nominated, the lo lowest, I think the lowest people, and then, then, uh, Britain, people in Britain vote one. Uh, Can back I on the bus. Can why they're doing it in the States? Why didn't they just do it in this country? Well, because it was meant to be relaunch their career without prejudice, oh, I assume. Okay. Mm. And also as an excuse to go to America, I suppose, and people not know him. Although fame is creeping in. I think a lot of people recognise Tony Hadley. Yeah. Particularly when he sang True at karaoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, no, but, uh, um, Is he yeah. as good as ever? 
it's fine. It's a bit dramatic, but it's all right. It's, now, from it's... your sort of, uh, your, your brief pop phase, yeah. are any of these faces familiar to you? Did you ever bump into them? Oh, no, but no, you know, no. You never, you never hung out with Hadley or- No, no, <laughs> we all lived in the same house. Yeah, you did have, no. didn't you have a run-in with Bucks Fizz? Oh, uh, yeah. No, once, did well, you? Well, once when we had, uh, when we were <laughs> going up to do, we were going up to do, um, uh, um, a TV show, um, and our a and R man had just forgotten about us, and we were there. We were at the we were at the airport. We didn't have the tickets, and so Bucks Fizz were doing the same show. And they, I remember they tried to smuggle us through. They had sort of like them and their crew, and they just like showed us the tickets. They went through, and they went well, like like that would work. And they went, I went, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Did the two girls stand in the lobby and whip off their skirts? <laughs> <laughs> everyone was sidetracked while you legged well, it through. Well, uh, I was on the shoulders of uh, <laughs> yeah. Bobby G and yeah. wearing a really long coat. <laughs> yeah. And they went, Bobby, what, <laughs> what, he went, yes, I am taller. You're now. not taller uh, in yeah. the flesh, and you are on top of the pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fatter. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't fat. You then. weren't fat then. No, you weren't. Um, you weren't. Yeah, no, but I love it. And the other thing I've been watching is American Pop Idol. Right, that I've was not seen last night. It's great, really good. Yeah, is uh, it, this oh, is Simon Jerry's Cowell. Ruben's gonna win. Huh? Is that is that the one that Jerry Halliwell is part of? No, no. This is um, uh, oh, Randy Jim Jackson. Williams. What's up, dog? Um, Paula Abdul and Simon Jim Cowell. Yeah. But Simon Cowell makes so much more sense in that context. Yeah, because they're all. You, you know, you're great. And they do people, they stand up and they clap. And he goes, oh, sit down, it was all right. And it yeah, makes so yeah, much yeah. more sense, you know what I mean? Over here it's, it's a bit of a pantomime sort of drama queen. But over there, he's suddenly- He's the sort of the voice, voice of, of sanity. Reason. Exactly, yeah. 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 But, um, that's, uh, that's the trash TV that, uh, I watch. That you've watched. Yeah. But no, Reborn's funny. But again, once again, st public are stupid. They voted out, um, Dollar that was driving everyone mad, and there was fights. They why well, they did they really? Because they really would. Well, yeah, to because Sonia. you know. Oh yeah, they oh, really yeah. went for it. They voted out Chris Eubank. Yeah, and celebrity, celebrity Big Brother. Brother. It's... Keep them in. I don't think the public should be allowed to vote on TV shows. I don't think they know what's best for them. <laughs> it does strike me that, like in the golden age of EastEnders, if people had said, "Do you want to vote out?" Uh, Dirty Dan, they'd have gone, yeah, he's nasty. I know, yeah, that, and, it's that confusion, it's, either with, with entertainment and punishing yeah. people, yeah. They should keep them in and then make them lose. Yeah. Yeah, so you've had all the, the best of both worlds. What about yeah. the new celebrity, I'm a celebrity, get me out now of here. Now, who's in that? The one- Daniela Westbrook. Yeah. Um, Catalina, that model. Yeah. Don't know her. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the one Anthony from- Anthony Worrell Thompson, why? Why does he want to- You've got someone, someone to cook, haven't you? Um, well, that's that one from Changing Rooms. Yeah, the girl from Changing Rooms. Yeah, Linda Barker. Yeah. Oh, um, Phil Tufnell. Who? Phil Tufnell, cricketer. Mm. I'm gonna put some money on him to win. I yeah. reckon he's gonna win. Cause apparently he's sort of funny and, and nice and everything. And, uh, yeah. Would you ever, would you ever do any of those? But absolutely things? not. No. I do think, I genuinely think if you were in the Celebrity Big Brother I'd, house, immediately you would be voted out. out. They, yeah. It literally, it would be, f it would be before, you it would be before the it. public get a chance to vote. Yeah. The housemates would have got you out somehow. Yeah. They'd have or they'd have left. <laughs> or they'd have <laughs> left. Yeah, they'd I have might have win. Time. I might yeah. win by default. <laughs> they'd have all climbed over the roof like that yeah. guy Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> they'd have all yeah. climbed out like within the first ten minutes. I saw Sandy the other day actually. Doing still, on, still on the run, is he? Just climbing over. It's over Sandy. Get off my roof. Stop. I'm really running. excited. In really? Selfridges. Does he look like a wombat up close? No, he looks, he's really good looking. I- Shut up. No, seriously. I saw him in the hat section at Sel Selfridges because he's a personal shopper telling yeah, well, him Yeah, well Jane went there specifically to meet Sandy. No, just for like, Yeah, to, to, yeah. I got really what, excited. What, is he working there? Yeah, yeah he's a he personal always was. shopper. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Does he sign autographs and stuff? I'm sure No, he, he calls himself Alex now. What? Eh? Yeah, he's not allowed to call him Sand Sandy at Selfridges, wouldn't- what should we say and get him sacked? <laughs> get him voted out of Selfridges yeah. household. <laughs> oh, Why is he a dude. personal shopper? Yeah. That's the uh, that's just to me the the, the the epitome of indulgence. If you've got money to spend I on a personal love to shopper, do that. oh, I'd love to do man that. alive. No, no, is that someone who pushes your trolley? No, is that how it works? you just say. Can I get one of those in Wakefield? No, you, no, you, no. It's just it's like asking an assistant. You go, uh, I need um, uh, some black trousers and some brown shoes and this range. And they go, okay, and they go and get your range. So you don't have to go. It's not. It's not like. Yeah, but I still someone, love it. Oh. Uh, yeah. But you have to pay for it, it's not-, it's not No, no, it's, no, you don't pay for the service, you pay for the t sh clothes if you buy them. It's really? not- Yeah, it's not like- well, uh, the Steve, Lady Di having, having Harrods opened for her. So it's I could walk in there and get Sandy- Of course you could. To just Steve, in in fact, I'd love you it. to. But could I get him, like, once he's finished in Selfridges, could he pop to the co-op for me? No, he can't do that. No, he can't do that. What, no. seriously? So there'd be people queuing up, wouldn't there? 
Well, why? Selfridges, you can't, people don't go and shop in Selfridges for the sake of it to meet Sandy, do they? No, but to get a personal shopper, why wasn't, why wouldn't everyone have one? I don't understand why everyone wouldn't well, do they it. They're not charging you for it. Oh, Steve, you and me later I'll on. I'll tell you this, I don't there. think people realise that, Rick. He's gonna be inundated. You know, you know when you go to Selfridges, you will not be able to buy that suit you got for £97. It's a lot more expensive than that. What? You can't five? Get, you, yeah, you can't, you can't get shoes for £29 in there. Uh, I'm not bothering. No, exactly. You not see, that's, that's where you're gonna come unstuck. No, it's not I'd love a great record now, Claire. <laughs> okay. I'm going back to Bristol this weekend. Oh, yeah? I am gonna be, I, I've got £100 to spend, so I'm <laughs> looking to get a three-piece suite. Yeah. Uh, dinner suit. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, who knows? A who wife. Knows well. Possibly. You know. I think my sister's back. <laughs> the new single from Radiohead. What do you make of it? I love Radiohead, yeah. so I'm prejudiced, um, and I like to write everything they do. You know, I, st I still play the Benz regularly. I had to replace it on CD, cos I wore it out. Really? I just think it's amazing. I think they're great. They're coming in, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're coming in a couple of times. I think Phil and, um, Ed, who are my favourites, are doing Zoe in oh, a right. few weeks. And I think, uh, Tom York is gonna be doing John Kennedy on Exposure, doing one of those album playbacks where he comes and I does think he's, each uh, he's so shy as well. Yeah. He came into Uda once, so and he was just so shy. He hated it all, cos people were looking at him. And, uh, yeah. um, uh, oh. He's great. He's brilliant. <laughs> a toast! <laughs> Funny little fella. Your head. <laughs> <laughs> Happy yeah. Easter, Happy Tom, Easter. all of that. Don't eat too many eggs, boys. <laughs> oh, calm down, you crazy guys. <laughs> No, I was, we were talking earlier about the fact, because I've been ill this week, and so, um, I've just been lying on the sofa, you know, dosed up. I was a bit feverish as well in the week, and I, um, at one point I, I, I had a real kind of movie, I, if I'm ill, I like to be like, you're ill in the movies, and I was tossing and turning in bed, I had the fever, I was waking up, I was sweating, all sorts, and I, and I keep waking up really early, and I'm sort of watching daytime TV for hours, and, um, the adverts that you see in the daytime. I mean, we because we do actually work. A lot of people think we just toss around all day, but we do actually work. And so I don't get to see TV in the day much. And the adverts, it's not adverts you see at night in during. It's, I know. They're incredible, and it's like. Was it for surgical stockings? Well, there's, there's a lot of them <laughs> are either aimed at. They're either aimed at people who who <laughs> basically are, are waiting to die. Right. It would seem. Or that, I love that advert. Waiting to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are a bit like that. I mean, there's a couple. There's one with, uh, Christopher Timothy sat in a pub on his own, just having a pint in the afternoon. I think this was before he, um, I think this was before he, uh, became a doctor. He, um, <laughs> he's having a pint on his own, <laughs> looking through the, the, you know, the, the job he's ads. He's like a good vet, doctor. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think he's always wanted to play a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. And he, and he basically says in so many words, I can't, I can't remember it verbatim, but he basically says, you know, um, you're, you're probably getting on a bit, <laughs> um, you're, you're not gonna be around forever, you could drop dead tomorrow, have, <laughs> yeah. you, have you made provisions for your children and your family and your wife? And, yeah. and I think you at home were supposed to have gone, oh Christ, I haven't. Oh. And, and my, I was feeding my testicles earlier, they are a bit lumpy. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. You know, yeah. or and I, I, got and I, I had to bend down quite low to feel them. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, I am getting on a bit. <laughs> exactly. In fact, oh, what no. I do now is pull them towards me and kick them up like Beckham <laughs> yeah. with a ball. Yeah. And on the way back down, I have a quick feel. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or, yeah, or when the kids come to visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um. Stop playing with Grandad's <laughs> testicles. <laughs> Where have you put them? Where have you put them? <laughs> We've put them on the mantle. Oh, you <laughs> little devils. Go on with you. Do you want a Werther's original? <laughs> And, uh, that's another advert you see constantly were those originals. Um, but, um, so they've got those, and then they've got the adverts which I always love, which are, are adverts for, um, any kind of, you know, Claims Direct or any of those things. It's just, oh, yeah. it, invariably there's a reconstruction of, of an accident that might have happened, someone tripping over a paving slab. There's one which is particularly chilling, of a guy who, um, I think he, he, he's with his kid watching football. And he's thinking to himself, you know, oh, I bet he, he's looking, he's thinking, I wish I could join in. And it flashes back, and there he is up a ladder, uh, on a very shiny surface with no one supporting it, frankly. Oh, which is, which he's is, asking for trouble. Frankly, I, I, I blame him. Yeah. And then it, it, it topples for no reason. I don't know why it topples. Right. Wind, let's say. Yeah. I, whenever I see it, I always think. I hope he never walks again. <laughs> well, it, he falls off it. Um. <laughs> Did he smash his face in? <laughs> Did he fall on a spike? Because if he's gonna go up that ladder on a shiny surface <laughs> with no one holding it, right? Did he fall? Did he crack? Did he fall backwards on his head? The little f <laughs> worse still. Right, did he? Did he do the splits and crush his nuts? The f worse w than that. One. He made a considerable lump sum of cash thanks to the efforts oh, of one of those claims God. companies. <laughs> hey? Oh no! All right. His negligence has right, seen him three there, grand richer. Oh no, what, Steve, was there a yokel with a pitchfork looking up as he fell on it? Nothing. Oh, for 
he <laughs> fell off. I think he must have bruised his ankle or strained a ah, ligament. That's not enough. That hasn't taught him anything. Well, it's not taught him a lesson. In fact, if anything, it is encouraging him to just to be more foolhardy in the future. Oh, Because if you're going to dish out five, three, five grand willy nilly to these these people, yeah, these l lunatics, these oafs. <laughs> These simpletons. <laughs> Do you know my one of my favourite adverts was the one in um, sort of the back of the those uh, glossy magazines you get given away, and there was always an old woman and she'd fallen <laughs> like in her in her front uh, uh, porch or whatever, and uh, she was just reaching out, but she was too weak to reach the phone. So it was sort of like you uh, carry a little button around with you that yes, you press. Yeah. I love the idea yeah. of that. She looked so vulnerable. <laughs> Uh, that was my, but yeah. it's just, I always feel with those kind of, um, those claims adverts, that it's almost like saying, I'm not gonna say it explicitly, yeah. here are some ideas for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, paving slabs, yeah. is there one near you? Yeah. Could you have a little trip? <laughs> exactly, yeah. If you've got a stepladder, yeah. I'm well, not saying anything, but, but maybe. Yeah. Read between the lines. The shiny floor. There is money to be made. It, uh, do, do some, uh, adverts in the back of those. Do you remember Innovations catalogue? Well, I just read this week, Innovations yeah. catalogue is being, it's being closed down. Gutted. Yeah. The is it really? Catalog, which is, it used to go to something like, uh, something like I'll 50 what, million homes or something. I love the Innovations catalogue. I, you do think, you think, well, I could do with that. Cause I want- well, I've I, never I, thought that. No, I do. I want to <laughs> spend money on an advantage in life. Like, you know, I want the power packs and hoverboards and things that are, like to see through walls. <laughs> just think, <laughs> for 1990, yeah, they don't work, do they? I bought oxygen. I bought- Did you really? Oh, I bought you. oxygen. What do you mean you bought oxygen? Well, me and my mate were sort of like, I'd run it, it was about like, I don't know, 1987, and me and my mate, uh, Wally, um, we were doing distant, long distance running together, we were trying to get good, uh, and I thought, I'll just have some oxygen before the race. <laughs> what do you mean some oxygen? oxygen? It's there, free in the air, <laughs> no, what's going on? No, 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 big canisters. <laughs> a canister big of canisters. oxygen? <laughs> It do? didn't work. It just smelled like you were sniffing mints. I didn't. I couldn't get any in. I. I, I, I well, just. Well, I what was it supposed to do? Well, it, you know, oxygenate the blood so you can. Right. But yeah, I don't know why. I, how much was, was it? I, I don't know. I can't remember. But when I was nineteen ninety nine. It was a big canister. It was rubbish. So why did you buy it? <laughs> I mean, he was at least doing a job. Doing the job. I was, yeah, uh, I was, but I was training. But it does seem to me that, because the th problem with the innovations catalogue is that for the the few idiots that buy stuff like you, yeah. there are hundreds, thousands, who just look through it and laughed at the absurdity of, you know, a motorised tie rack. I bought the I know, Abs yeah. Master. Who I is so lazy master? that they need that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Abs Master. Mm. I worked out uh, for a while, um, op uh, answering the, um, the, the mail, opening the mail for a returns. It wasn't the innovations people, but it was a mu it was, if that's the kind of middle class version, this was a very much more working class, um, thing. It was, you know, how to, you know, how to get hot dogs out of, of a tin and all the rest of it. <laughs> and there was stuff in there, it was incredible. There was one item that was in the catalog and it was, uh, yeah, I know, like like me, you've probably thought to yourself, I just haven't got time to boil the kettle <laughs> and fill up my hot water bottle. Oh, I you know. thought that yeah. takes yeah. upwards of a minute and a half to do. <laughs> what, what I need <laughs> is some kind of state of the art <laughs> kind of plastic container with some kind of blue gel inside, which I put in the microwave and that really? heats up, right? So that was what this device was. You put it in the microwave, you buzz it in there for like 30 seconds, saving yourself, you know, a minute. Of, oh, at of least, preparation yeah, yeah. time. And we used to get them sent back. I swear to God, they would send that. They'd be split. Yeah, they Old exploded. women yeah. saying, uh, I'd heat this up in the microwave. I went to sleep. It split asunder. And the blue gel scorched my legs. I've got third degree burns. And do you Old know what we woman with a scolding? <laughs> Call claims direct. <laughs> but do you know what we used to do? I used what? to say, do they not sue over this stuff? And they, and they told me, they said, they never sue. They're not, you know, they're old ladies. They don't realise they can sue. What we normally do is send them a replacement. <gasps> so I'd have to send replacements back to these old women who had scalded their legs. We didn't even send them the money back, we just sent them a replacement. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Sometimes I always felt like- And a new pair of tights, at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> and sheets, bed yeah. sheets, yeah. Oh dear. Imagine well, that though. I did have an abs mask, one of those things that, you know, you try it on. Uh, um, uh, Jane bought it for me for her birthday once. And the uh, electron- The electron thing, oh, you put it on, right? Hurts, yeah, well, I, I turned it full up, right, and at one point- Now what's this, sorry, I don't understand what this is. You try it- 
put it round you, it sticks to your body and it's an electrical charge and it- and it's like doing sit-ups. Every time it does it, it's like you're doing a sit-up but without you sitting up, right? Right. And at one point I had it on, I'd done it for a few weeks and at one point I was laying on the couch in my pants with this on watching telly, drinking a bottle of wine and eating cheese. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't think it works like that. <laughs> I don't, if this works, it's the greatest invention of all time. <laughs> so it's like you can eat and it's wearing it, it's kind of working it off for you as you're eating. I know, yeah. Oh dear. Oh, That'd be great. I, I did see one thing in one of those little magazines once, and this is hilarious, right? What it was? It's a bloke. It's a bloke in a wheelchair, right? <laughs> and then there's another one of him, and it's raining, so he's got a cagoul on that covers him and his wheelchair, oh, no. and just his little face. <laughs> So it looks like somebody you've covered a motorbike in, <laughs> and it's just his little face. I thought that was great. Oh dear. Oh. oh the innovations, it's finished. That it's is over. great. It's all over. Should we have a it's record? It'd be lovely. A toast it? to the innovations. To the, a toast yeah. to innovations. You have provided nothing of much use for oh, 15 years. Happy oh, Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you sure I mean, that's not part of the song? Because, you know, Pink Floyd, you know what they're like, These they're new fangled, tricks. All the, yeah, newfangled sort of trickery and that weirdness. I mean, like- well, it's I, a shame. It is a shame. It is a great song. Um, yeah, but it, oh, it's- I don't know what to do. It's too sense. annoying. We've yeah. got to stop it. Yeah. Are we putting a pay to it? Oh. Um, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, I'll switch it off, Claire. Yeah. I don't know, because that always plays fine on my home system, so I don't know if it's something that Sturgis has done. You haven't got your big greasy thumbprints over it, have you? <laughs> Maybe. What were you eating earlier? You Because I saw you eating a, a huge hog roast as I, <laughs> as I came in. And throwing the bones behind yeah, exactly, that. like Henry VIII. <laughs> yeah, <the> yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Nothing changes, Ricky. Oh no. dear, never mind. Well, that's- Well, a, that's- see, the problem that's is- That's ruined the whole show well, for me, what, it was going so well. What worries me, Rick, is because this show is so carefully planned- Yeah, that's- That's can, left a minute and a half- That can throw us all out. Um- Timings, timings. Adverts. Do you think that'll oh, be yeah. it? People love them. Great. Excellent. We'll go back tomorrow. Wise words unless you're talking about pension plans. That's Feeder on <laughs> XFM 104.9. <laughs> Wise words. Ways. Uh, Steve Merchant, Claire Sturgis. Competition time. We got, haven't got the usual, uh, competitions of, um, uh, songs of phrase and monkey oh, news and the other- them, miss The em. other car nonsense. You know, you know I'm not- There's I'm no not... cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> There's no cheapest chimps. It's alright, it's back next week, it's well, back next week. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Although, uh, let's do- just do a quick, quick cheapest chimps. Okay. So, chimpanzee that, cheapest chimps. Do you know how much a chimp is, Steve, to Not buy? Really, no. 55 grand. Okay, <laughs> okay, the competition is this. Um, we've got five tickets. Uh, no, five pairs, got five of pairs of tickets, of yeah, tickets, to yeah. give away, um, to the new Spike Lee film, 25th Hour, and, um, I've seen this and it's really great. It's got Ed Norton, um, in it and, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, really, really, really good. Um, it's an 18 certificate, so you can only, um, call up and get into this free if you are over 18. Or, unless you look 18. Yeah, let's face it, as long as you look <laughs> yeah, exactly. 18. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna ask for ID on the door. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> if you look like 14, then there's no chance. And yeah. you probably get some fags and beer as well yeah, on the way exactly. in, yeah. But if you're 16, um, 17, you, you look old enough, you've got yeah. a bit of facial hair, go for it. Yeah. Or wear a long beard. Yeah, whatever, yeah. No, we're not gonna condone that. Please be 18 <laughs> years or over. Yeah. It is an illegal offence. <laughs> exactly. Um, call 08700. 800 1234, and as it is uh, such a, a great film, we're gonna, the competition is this. Um, do you want to go to this? A, yes. B, no. <laughs> so. <laughs> C, I'm not sure I can make it Wednesday. Any chance Thursday? D, I, I think I'll wait for it to come out on video, you know. <laughs> e, um, I don't really like Spike Lee. I'm a racist. <laughs> <laughs> call in, call yeah. in. So, <laughs> so uh, we, hang on, we should just point out that um, it, yeah, it's Wednesday at six o'clock. Did we make that clear? Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday at six, six o'clock. Yeah. A yes, B no. C Wednesday's no good for me. D I'll wait for it. Can't video. E I don't like Spike Lee. I'm a racist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. That's the number. Yeah. Okay. Bother Claire with that. Oh, no. The answer's A, by the way. Correct answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. nice if one. you want to go, that is. Yeah. Yeah. But tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'd love to have some more music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, I sweet. feel some Smiths. Oh, oh yeah. Reel Around the Fountain. Good choice. Smiths, Reel Around the Fountain, XFM 104.9. Well, we've given those away then. Yeah, it went very well. Have, have, you, have you got enough now? You don't need yeah, more? Yeah, yeah, got them all, yeah. Uh, everyone said uh, the correct answer. Oh, uh, they would love to go. One one person, actually, who was it? It was uh, Tom, said C, but his, his sister Sarah would love to go. So oh, well, I, good luck to Sarah. Yeah, I hope yeah, he's over 18. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, otherwise that is 
illegal. Here's to the rules. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm, in a che I'm just in a mood for toasting things. Yeah. I just I think it's because it's, it's Easter. Yeah, yeah. And we know God what that means, him. don't we? God bless him. Eggs. Go on. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what we, were we were chatting about the innovations catalogue, and um, it just because I've just been flipping here through the uh, the TV magazine, which comes free with the. Uh, with the, the sun and um, is there anything on the back? A plate or a, all, I mean, a figure? The white trash that must buy this rubbish. I, I mean, know. this one. I don't know how you describe that. There. Oh, classy, isn't it? Oh, oh it's dear. a porcelain doll of a uh, of a looks, young woman. Looks like ginger spice with her hair up in a blue dress. Yeah, it is strictly limited to nine thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I going to get one? <laughs> well, uh, why, says, um, why did you we waste time with this show? Shouldn't I have been calling? Well, look, it says it says. How she, much is it? Well. She can be yours for the special half price offer of just ninety four pounds fifty. Is, is that all really? You're not winding me up, are you, Steve? <laughs> You're not winding me up. Is it? Because if I look at it, it's nine hundred and forty, because I think it should be. <laughs> uh, I will go mental because uh, well, hang on, I, let I me... would love that porcelain piece of shit for a hundred <laughs> quid on my shelf. <laughs> hang on a minute, Rick. Let me just read you some of the writer. Who buys that? They think it's uh, art. It's classy. Oh. Well, hang on, let me, I think this blurb will change your mind. Go on then. Okay. Well, I, I'm just okay. Okay. Her name is quite simply Dearest Rose. I love oh. it. And she's portrayed here holding a beautiful. Well, I mean, of course it's gonna be Dearest Rose, isn't let it? Let me read it. It's not I gonna think... be. Her name is Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Dearest Rose is portrayed here holding a beautiful bouquet of roses given to her by her lover. <laughs> <laughs> she has gently plucked some of them and placed them in her chestnut hair. Oh, she yeah. is wearing a gown. Oh, that's filthy. <laughs> she oh, is. That she is as well. She's <laughs> stuffing them up on her head. Oh, all right, go on. She is wearing a gown of beautiful turquoise silk. Her skirt flows to the floor, and from beneath it, you can see her dainty shoe just peeping out, <laughs> get <laughs> decorated Careful. with a tiny handmade rose. That is um, brilliant. Ninety-four. And it is beautiful, and, it's a, and you can you can pay nine pounds forty-five a month for ten months. Yeah, and that can be yours. And I think you'll agree, it is just beautiful. I mean, the the best one I've ever seen. There was one that there was a uh, um, a, a doll. Right, like a really doll, you know, a, a horrible, scary doll, mm. and it was something like, you know, a hundred pounds, and it said, "Call your family and tell them it's a girl." <laughs> and I just imagined this forty-five-year-old woman with bunches and and rouge on her hair, still dressed in her ballerina outfit, going, "I've had a baby, mother." <laughs> you haven't. I have. It's a bloody baby. <laughs> why do you hate me? It's a doll. <laughs> you. Why do you hate me? <laughs> I mean, I know. what sort of people are they preying on? <laughs> well, there's one. Just had a, a, a baby. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> call, call the doctor. You can call the doctor. D don't call the doctor! I've had a bloody baby! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I remember seeing one which just was extraordinary. I mean, again, I'm thinking specifically of the people that buy it. It was about three foot tall. Yeah. It was, I think, again, made of porcelain or possibly Flag. plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was a baby. It was like a sort of, it was like a kind of one year old baby. Like, that was the design. Wearing a Harley Davidson biker outfit. <laughs> <laughs> the mean... leather cap, the jacket, oh. the nappy. <laughs> Rather like Marlon Brando yeah. did in the Wild Bunch. Unbelievable. Oh dear. Apps, I mean, the scum. I saw recently, we was looking, flipping through one, it was wedding rings. It was a selection of exclusive wedding rings. Um, imagine giving this, imagine getting in on one knee and giving your beloved a <laughs> themed Lord of the Ring, Lord <laughs> of the Ring wedding ring. Oh, that is brilliant. Will you be my wife? <laughs> uh, better still, my troll. <laughs> oh dear. That I mean, I, I, the scum that must be that they're they're preying on, like you say. I mean, unbelievable. It's those sort of houses that I, I remember um, uh, going into as a child. Sometimes when you met a friend from school, and uh, you'd go into their house, and it was like a shrine. I remember some people kept the polythene on their three-piece suite. Yeah, there was someone you weren't allowed in the front room. Like we couldn't, you know, couldn't go in the front room. And it's sort of you look around, and there's all these dolls and that, and it's just like, oh god, scary. What? in God's name happens in this house <laughs> after dark. Oh. You know what I mean? But the it, people who keep the polythene on their, on their sofas, are, it's like, who are you waiting for? What, what day are you gonna use this? Cos I'll tell you this, the when, Queen's never coming I to know. tea. I know. Tony Blair's not gonna pop in and out covered in grease. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in dungarees. Exactly. I won't sit down. You can sit down. <laughs> yeah. You can sit down, Tony. I've been waiting for 40 years. Look, I've had a baby. It's not a real baby. <laughs> it is a baby! Is this door locked? Why do you hate me? <laughs> oh, God. Dear.
call your friends and tell them it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're one of the, uh, the scum that have ever bought anything from, uh, one Trash. of those- Trash. Um, normally you'll get, um, uh, maybe commemorative plates. I know. Commemorate- I'll tell you what, if I ever win the lottery, I'm gonna buy all them up. Yeah. I'm gonna buy all them up in one foul swoop. Well, that'd be one, amazing. I think it was Cliff Richard. It was a commemorative plate of Cliff Richard. It that'd said, be great. It said, Cliff never ages. <laughs> Cliff never ages, and neither will this. <laughs> Really? Did it say that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell your friends and mar- tell me you've married Cliff Richard. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've married- it's a play. It's not a play! <laughs> I sleep I've, with it! I've married Cliff Richard! <laughs> Remember that mental case that was, um, thought she was married to, um, Mike Reed? No, I don't remember that. Oh. No, I do. Now, is this Mike yes. Reed, the former DJ, or Mike Reed, the, uh, the entertainer stroke um, actor? former DJ. Mm-hmm. And it had a shot of her just prancing round in the nude with a feather boa on, saying, I- I'm married <laughs> to Mike Reed or something. Why? She was obsessed with him. That's libelous. I mean, is she still looking for a fellow? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what would you do? Well, uh, imagine it was- you're in a love triangle between <laughs> her me, and Louise me. Woodward. Oh, right, okay. Uh, would you- uh, and they were- they were- they were fighting over you. And, uh, I, I think they can both get pretty violent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if, you know, fine. I mean, no, but I mean, I'm not, I, I well, don't know I'll tell that. you what I do. I do what any gentleman would do in that situation, and I'd let them wrestling, wrestle it out. <laughs> nude. Uh, in a hotel room. Uh, and we'll just, you know, oh, we'll just see how they go. Let's have a record. <laughs> Sorry to win it. Call the lawyers and tell them it's a girl. <laughs> Coldplay, XFM, 104.9. In fact, can I just plug something? Go on. Because you can hear Coldplay live tonight from 7 o'clock, the whole Earl's Court gig on XFM from 7. Blimey. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. To Coldplay. (laughs) To Coldplay! Happy Easter! Happy Egg! (laughs) Well, well, that's about it from us, isn't it? We got, yeah. you know, I, in, to be honest, I didn't miss Carl at all. I didn't miss Carl. I felt, I felt, I felt we, we worked harder, we did a better show without him. I think he's dead wood. Well, I think that we should, you know, tell him that we, you know, we don't need him. If he turns up, it's fine. If not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that will wind him up. Oh, be, he'll be livid. If, you know, if you could send, oh, c- could you send Carly emails saying, um, to, to Ricky or something, because he gets all those, doesn't he? Or to yeah. Carl, saying, the show was better without Carl. Yeah. Can you please do that for us? We're telling the truth. He'll, he'll hear it. He'll come back and hear it. So we know it's a wind-up. But just, I just want to see his crushed little face Monday. As if you can send as many emails as possible saying, this show was better without Carl. Yeah. I will be grateful. And I promise I'll tell him the truth next week. Do you think I can do that for us? I think so. Is it carl.pilkerton at Yeah. And it's ca- Carl with a K. Yeah. yeah. And send some to me, cos he'll, he'll read those next week as well. Yeah. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.com. Yeah. And just send some to me as well. And yeah. Pass them and on, just yeah. pass them on, yeah. And to the, uh, to the head of XFM. Oh, yeah, what's his, yeah. what's his one? Yeah. Uh, cos he won't get in trouble, cos obviously Andrew's listening, so he know it's a joke. But Andrew.Phillips it, 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 at xfm.co.uk. In fact, could you Our send a load- marketing manager, Charlotte Susson at Yeah, XFM. Andrew.Phillips yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Just saying, uh, um, yeah. it's so much better without Carl, cos it's got a bit self-indulgent, he just does his same old stuff about Auntie Nora farting, and it's n- it's not big and it's not clever. <laughs> and the, and the man's a fool. Yeah, so if you do yeah. something like that, you know, make stuff up as well. Um, thanks very much. Happy egg. <laughs> <laughs> Happy egg indeed. Can I just, uh, end with a tune? Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Ed Harcourt, I don't know if you've uh, listened to his current album. Yeah, new But there's some, uh, good. some yeah. nice treats on there. And this is one called The Birds Will Sing For Us. A nice way to end. See you later. Uh, cheers. Happy Easter. Do the email thing. Egg. Blur, Out of Time, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Yep. Steve's a bit quiet, he's got a bit of a sore throat. Oh, a bit of a sore throat. Murder. All week. It's been murder, Rick. It's, we couldn't work all this week, um, no, because, been uh, sick. Steve's been in Bristol. Carl, you're not impressed. It's just, I, don't, I don't understand why having a sore throat oh, sort of- Go, oh, he's done you. Right, what if the sore throat was so painful, it was like you've got broken glass and razor blades in your throat? You can hear now that I'm not even speaking from down in the throat, I'm speaking from the very top of it like that, so it sounds a bit weird. But you're right. What? Your, your hands are alright, aren't they? Yeah, but we talk when we're writing, don't we? I can barely talk. It was in mur- it was mm. agony. I couldn't sleep because it was so painful. Even when I was just lying there, motionless, it was hurting. I, I just was surprised because we got back off holiday and, uh, called Ricky and said, all right, is Steve all right? And he said, uh, oh, he's, he's had to go back home or something and he's stayed there because he's, he's got a sore throat. Yeah. I didn't understand why you can't, like, just go home. I mean, y- y- how old are you? What? I don't understand why you got to be at your mum and dad's when you when you feel. I a bit happen Ill. to be at my mum and dad's. My mum and dad's. Now I'm talking like you. When when this this sore throat mm. really kicked in, so I thought I might as well stay and get a bit of the creature comforts of home. 
Do you know what I pictured there when- when he told me? See, my parents aren't like yours, Carl. Your- your father would have popped down to the phone box and maybe looked to see if there were any kind of throat lozenges. Strip seals. Yeah. Whereas my mum phones up the doctor, first thing she can, I'm- I'm straight down there with my dad. They're- they're snapping into action, they're trying to sort me out. Mm. Bit like that Ronnie Corbett thing, <laughs> isn't it? What? Sorry! That sorry thing. <laughs> You're right, Carl. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's just like that. Oh, no, dear. It's, it's just because you I've just got... went on holiday with your parents. <laughs> well, not me, not with mine. No, right. Suzanne's, and it won't be happening again. So, well, that's we're, that sort we'll have more Didn't about that a little you? bit later. Pain well, well luckily we we came in a few times, didn't we? We we've been here since about half eleven, haven't we? Yeah, sorting Doing stuff out. Doing a show. What, have, you been, have you been squeezing his head or? Uh, no, that's that's strictly between the hours of one and three. We established that, okay. um, and I've kept the rules, haven't I? I did practice the grip in the week, didn't I? Yeah, just what? to see what method he was going to use today. Yeah. Um, I came in- I, I- I did my back on Tuesday. I was sparring and I pulled my back and I was in agony and I had to get an emergency, um, uh, chiropractor out and sort it out and I couldn't- I was on painkillers and I couldn't walk the next day but I still came in and did a voiceover that was booked at 4.30, didn't I? I got Johnny to walk me in because I couldn't sit down so I couldn't take a cab but I could- be upright and I had to walk- I had to got him to walk me in because I was scared someone was going to bump into me and I did the voiceover. That's dedication, isn't it? Yeah, but- Right, I got back off holiday on the, uh, on the Tuesday, right? Um, first day back was going to be on the Wednesday, right? So I thought, well, I'll take it easy, cos you do that, don't you, when you've been on holiday? Mm. The first day you just wanna sort of- I don't, I'm straight back into it. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, but it's nice to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just sort of look at your emails, go through all them, work out what mm. people need and stuff. Sure. Doss around, doss around, yeah, sure. Um, mm. so I thought, I'll take it easy. As soon as I got in, I was told that Ricky had been booked in to do a voiceover. I thought, oh, can't handle that. Do you know what I mean? On the first day, him coming in, annoying me, probably trying to get a week's worth of head squeezing in. So I thought, oh, so I called him up and he said, oh, I might not come in because I've got a bad back. I thought, well, that's all right, right? Uh, then you just turned up, didn't you? He said, yeah. oh, I managed to get in a cab. Yeah, and um, Johnny walked me in, and I, that's what, yeah. And, and he, he did, he did the stuff, which I haven't got it here at the moment, but I'll, I'll find it on the system and I'll play you uh, what he did. <laughs> that he's been paid to do as well. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, do you? Well, it's, it's not all right. <laughs> I had to pretend it was all right when I played it to all my bosses <laughs> to try and well, let's, well, look, let's play that a little bit later. But now, as we're all back together, Steve, would you say the boys are back in town? Yeah. Brilliant. Then Lizzie. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. Right? We are back in town. <laughs> Me, Steve and Carl. Carl's on holiday. <sighs> Steve's been living with his mother because he had a sore throat and I've I've been hobbling around still trying to do you know what, keep what, things going. Do you know why I think I was ill? Stress. I genuinely think it was stress. I think- I, I'm beginning- no, I'm analysing what it. What do you think I'm, of that, Carl? But I'll tell you what it is, look, think about it though, we got- like, we live in London, we got the war, the threat of terrorist activity. That's where I live, I'm alright. Next one. We got <laughs> SARS. One. Yeah, yeah, well you can walk to work, I got to travel on the tube, I came in this morning, I saw a Chinaman sneeze, I was terrified. <laughs> S Club 7, they've split up. <laughs> I mean, like, I worry about those sort of people. They're young kids, they're talented guys. I mean, like, they say they're gonna be alright. I'm not sure Tina is. I'm not sure she's got the talent. So, there's just so many elements that I remember you were worried about hearsay. Oh, well, Kim Marsh is doing alright. Well, Kim's doing fine, but she got out early. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I'm not sure the rest of them will be. You know, no. I'm just- They're uh, quite emotional. I've got to worry about the show, I've got to be worried about this, you know. It's, it's, it's just me. I've, uh, I've never been that good when, like, anyone in the family's ill or anything. I've just got- just because that's the way I am, do you know what I mean? If I'm ill, I don't expect people to run about. No, after well, me. I've never been off for being ill. I mean, you were did a couple of yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, but that's that's. But hang that on, I've not missed. I've not missed either of the shows. I'm I'm ill today, but I'm still here. You you took a, I seem to remember you took a, you took a show off when you were ill. Yeah. You were windy. I, I was wasn't really you? ill. Hmm. Right. Sure. I couldn't. I couldn't even walk to work. Though yeah. that's what I mean. Did you go to the doctors? No, I was oh, too right. ill to get there. Right. <laughs> that's did, how bad did, I was. Did you call the doctor out? <laughs> no. No. Interesting. But it's just yeah. that th I mean, we were talking about it last night because we were saying to Suzanne, I said, oh, Steve's, you know, he's been living at home all week. She said, oh, is he <laughs> I really love the way he talks right <laughs> behind your back as well. <laughs> Thanks. And, yeah, go uh, on. and she said, uh, yeah, so what's up with him? Malingering geek. And she uh, said. I said, oh, he's, he's got a sore throat or something. She went sore throat. Oh. So, um, she said, well, you don't know how serious it is. Don't be, you know, don't be a fan with him tomorrow because, you know, if he's coming in and he's still not right. Because she's, she always sticks up for you. Yeah. Right. Um, and she said, and anyway, some sense. she said, and anyway, you're no good when people are ill. I said, hang on, what are you talking about? So, um, apparently, when we first sort of started going out, the first time she was ill, she kind of thought, she saw the real me 
because she was ill in bed and that, and I said, oh, get up. <laughs> and, uh, of course you can drink the- you can drink alcohol with these. <laughs> and I just was like, you know, y you make yourself feel worse if you lie in bed. I said, come yeah. on, we need to go shopping. <laughs> and she said, you go shopping. I said, no, I'm not- because I'm rubbish at shopping for food. Do you know what I mean? I I'm alright at getting that night's food, but once it starts, like, you've got a plan. Sure, yeah, you're dropping the bananas, I, you know yeah, what Yeah, I you forget mean. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So she said, I've got to- the floor. Yeah. Well, she was- she was, like, feeling hot on that. She said, I've got a temperature. I said, well, come to the supermarket and hang about in the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Frozen chicken section, cool yeah. yourself down. Yeah, sure. And, um, <laughs> it, it made her worse. So <laughs> now she was like, do you remember that? And I was kind of oh. like, yeah. Who's that- who's that hot woman sitting in the chicken fillets? Yeah. That's yeah. Carl's girlfriend. Yeah. She's, no, a, she's obviously ill again. Even when I was younger, do you know when I told you that I was picked at school to give old people biscuits? Right, yes. Cos you had nice hands, wasn't it? Cos had nice nails, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, because I, I went down a storm at that, I went down a storm at that. You said, Bravo! Get him back with the Garibaldi, he's the best I've ever had. Bravo! No, what do you mean you went down a storm? Because I, I'm into biscuits, so. <laughs> you knew your stuff! I was talking to him about. I'm them. into biscuits! Right, so, um. Then Did you make sure that they finished the first layer before you dipped into the second layer? No, there's no rules like that. Just no rules. What do you want? What do you want? What do you fancy? Yeah. So, um, then because I was good at that, that we, we were going to like a, an old people's home where they're a bit iller, rather yeah. than just being old, they were like. Ill. Yeah. And I said, no, not, not doing that. <laughs> not going there. Because they're old people. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want biscuits. Well, yeah, that's the They're too old to eat. So, uh, yeah, so Did you have to dunk them in tea before you fed them to them? No, it was just like, Did you, know, you feed them like did you have to chew? Did you have to chew their food, then stick it down their throat with <laughs> yeah. your face? It's like a little bird. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. A little trolley, right? Yeah. Um, a lad who I didn't really get on with, he, he had good nails as well, so he was serving the tea. Yeah. And I just had a chat and said, oh, do you want a biscuit with that? Yeah. What about this one? Do you like bourbons? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you really did the whole... <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, right, so you weren't just... It wasn't like their choice, you offered a selection. Well, I sort of sold them, because the thing is, there's only so many, so you've got to handle the situation well. Sure. You don't want too many in one type, so it's no. like, well, you've had a bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> What a great life they yeah. lead. They probably only pay about 900 quid a week to stay in that particular home. <laughs> yeah. And they get a free bourbon by a kid with clean nails. <laughs> Brilliant. whoop de hoo <laughs> oh. So anyway, I found these, uh, things, do you know oh, what I yeah, mean? yeah. So, so what's so, this? Explain this again. Right, so, I got back off holiday. The first job I find out I've got to do is work with Ricky for a voiceover. I do right. a regular thing, I do X-Ray magazine, but I'm allowed to make the script up. And they said I could, so I did. Right. So, imagine this. Well, I know you, Rick, and I know you like to put a lot of work into these things. Yeah. You want to do a good job. So he rolls up, he says, let's do it then. He said, what's in the magazine? I said, well, here's a selection of stuff, this is what you've got to sell. He said, leave it with me. Um, he goes into the little booth, um, and the first one he comes up with is this little advert for it, right? X-Ray magazine, it's out now, it's a three pounds fifty May edition, uh, uh, music of tomorrow, Dandy Warhol's picture, and there's a free CD <laughs> with all the placebo and the donors, and uh, smog, and nightmares on wax, and Alpine All Stars, only three pounds fifty, it's out now, buy it, innit? <laughs> Have you got a sore throat there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, isn't it? And he was going, you can't. I said, we are doing that. I've done one. That is it. That's it. So I persuaded him. He went, right, okay, we can possibly put that on XFM, right? I I'll have to see, right? And so I wouldn't do it again. And he went, but you need one for Capital. He said, right. Capital will know what I went. Right, I'll do one more for Capital. Because all other stations advertise the XFM yeah. magazine, right? So this this is the uh, the one that he thought would be all right for them. Ooh, hello, you loonies in Radio Land. Dr. Frog here to tell you about the new edition of X Ray magazine. It's out now and it's only £3.50. You've not heard of it. It's a great music magazine. And you get a free CD featuring bands like Placebo, they wear makeup, but leave them alone. Gold Chain, Smog, OK Go, The Donners, and all great bands that you'll you're love to. Froggy here, hello. Bye. Ribbit, ribbit, Froggy says, buy it. <laughs> oh, well. So then. <laughs> He says, that's it. He's got your money's worth. Dr. Frog's still on there. <laughs> he's still classic. I said, that isn't gonna go out. They're not gonna be happy with that. He said, you've had your money's worth, I'm going. Yeah. So I'm left with that. <laughs> I then have to get the bosses in. And because I've let him go, in a way, it's my responsibility. Yeah. So I've, I've obviously thought I've got what I need. <laughs> yeah. I had to play them to the MD. What did and, he say? And justify, well, I was sort of thinking if I laugh, he might go, well, I don't get it, but he finds it funny. Oh, brilliant. Well done. So I was laughing, he was sort of thinking, you know. Excellent. Is that it? Brilliant. When do they go out then? Uh, I think, I think one of them's going out at the moment. 
Excellent. I think the first one's going out. Brilliant. Well, let's, uh, let's play a great track then. Is it Dr. Frog? <laughs> well, I'd like to see Dr. Frog feature maybe on our show more often. <laughs> okay. Oh. I've got some new comedy characters. I can't believe we're You know I love, uh, the work of, um, comedy greats like Chris Moyles and Noel Edmonds. I've got some really funny comic characters that'll be popping in and out of the studio. <laughs> Save them. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. All possibilities on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Hilton, and a few a few new characters. Oh, Steve, I can't believe as that. you said, you know, you, you, I mean, you, I know you love Moyles and his his sort of wacky stuff and Chris Moore, Edmonds one of the greats, one of the and Edmonds and just all oh, the. No, um, well, I'm going to go along the same sort of vein. I've come up with a couple of. Can I do a little? Can I show you? One? I'm excited. Okay, well, it always starts with a sort of doorbell. Okay. So. Goes uh, ding dong. I go, oh no, hold on, Steve, hold on, Carl. Who's that at the door? Yeah. Hello. Oh hello. Oh look, it's Camp David, the right queer gay. Oh hello, hello. You you look all gay today. Is that because it's nice weather? Oh no, that's not what it means. Oh, um, have you got a girlfriend? C Camp David, the right queer gay. No, but I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bye. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, ding yeah. dong. Oh, it's another yeah. one. On. Another comic. C hello. Oh, look. It's holy fuck. The little funny right. Chinese fella. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's his name. Uh, Carl. That's his name, Carl. Go. Hello, holy fuck. Hero. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fine. So, that's fine. Um, Mr. Fuck, you can call me holy right. if you want. No, I prefer to call you fuck. Yeah. Right. You're right. Nothing You're right. wrong with this so far. I'm no, right. no, no. Um, um, have, have you got a, a girlfriend, Mr. Fuck? Achoo. Oh, okay. oh, you haven't got that SARS, have you? Yeah, yeah. Top no, that's my right. girlfriend's name. <laughs> See? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, just before you go, Mr. Fuck, <laughs> I've got, um, I've got two, <laughs> I've got two things here. I've got a nice trilby hat that you could wear. Yeah. Or I've got a little lampshade. Right. Right? Which one do you want to put on your head yes. and walk around? I presume the trilby. No, but it's not. No. Yeah. yeah. Lampshade. Lampshade, of course. Bye. Yeah. See ya. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were <laughs> genius. Can I be honest? <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I thought they were brilliant. I thought they were. <clears throat> you didn't. I mean, you didn't steal them off Chris. No, Morris, no, no, did you? no, 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 no. They're original. They're original. Sometimes characters. Chris Morris has done stuff as good as that. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But no, these these are all mine. So, so uh, there you go. We'll be we'll be um we'll be hearing more from um Camp David, the right queer gay. And how the fuck the funny little Chinaman? What? <laughs> All right, Carl. Mm. Yeah, is that your sort of humour? It's, it might not be your sort of humour. You just should have run it past me before you did it. Yeah. What one were you worried about in particular? The uh, the the uh, <laughs> not Camp David. Well, say his name. No. Say his name. Which one? Out. I don't know the which one, one you mean. The Chinese fella. <laughs> well, I, I forget who that was. What was his name? I can't remember. <laughs> well, if you can't remember, it can't be that good, so we'll leave it. We won't do it again. Right? I'll tell oh. you what I've got, Steve. Oh, what? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Go yeah. on. Right? Um, do you know, like, TV programs sort of get rested in the winter? Ding dong! Oh, no! Hang on, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. Hello oh, again. On. Not, not now, Mr. Fuck. We're talking. <laughs> Bye. Is that Holy Fuck again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, that's it now. I'm not answering the door anymore. Right, okay, go on. Right, um, yes. Ding dong, ding dong, ding no. dong, ding dong. He's trying to get in. You've got to, don't be impolite, Rick. Come on, Rick, he wants to come in. <laughs> no, it's too late. It's too late. He's, he's, he's gone away now. Go on. Right, anyway, what I'm nice thinking hat. is, what I'm thinking is, Rockbuster's coming back for a bit. What? <laughs> what are we talking about? He likes my idea. He likes my characters. He doesn't like that idea. If I ca- uh, What? <laughs> Come on, what? Come on, no, what? I was gonna say, if I came up with, uh... <laughs> with what? Name with that, with that Chinese fella. What was his name again? sketch. Keep you wouldn't have liked it. Uh... So let's, let's do Rockbusters and see how it goes. I know you weren't a fan of it, but... Hang on, yeah, but thought... I, to, be, to be honest, Carl, he dissed cheap as chimps, and we know that's a brilliant idea. Hang on, sorry, we- we- we all agreed that Rockbusters was a piece of old toss. No, I didn't. <laughs> I said it needed <laughs> rest. And that's why we stopped doing it. I said it needed resting for a bit. I don't remember that conversation. What do you mean it, it needed resting? Just- We-, we abandoned it because it was appalling. You just- you, you- it started off as a nice idea, but you just gone crazy. None no, of it made any sense. let's play a record and come back to this, shall we? What do you want to play? 
bit of sugar. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That cheer was all up. I don't know why you were thinking of bringing this back. I'm genuinely worried about this. Well, uh, uh, is that the doorbell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would be lying, Rick, if I told you that that didn't feature in my list of the best singles ever. That's lovely. It's a if I can't change your mind. Great, you great pop tune. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm, I think Carl's worried about one of the names of my characters. So, I'm changing, uh, the, the gay fella's name to David Gray, the bent pianist. Right. <laughs> the Scientist, Coldplay, on XFM 104.9, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and Ricky Gervais, obviously. So, uh, Carl's just getting a little bit frustrated there with Steve. I've been nothing to offer after being off for a week. Do you know what he calls you now behind your back? Oh, God, here we go. No, it's quite, it's all right. He calls you the professor, cos of a picture of you in, um, My Media. Oh, right. <laughs> it's what did you say? He said it- Did you approve it? <laughs> I didn't actually, no. <laughs> no, you know what it is, don't you? It's, you know when you take it from an angle, it sort of distorts one side. And right. they've taken a picture from a bigger picture, I think, and so, it's, do you know what I mean? Like he's looking look in a kettle. Right. And he went, what's going on there? He said he looks like one of those professors of BBC Two schools programmes. <laughs> well, I take that as a compliment, considering what I call you behind your back. <laughs> and I'd say, no, ain't the professor. <laughs> well, though, Carl's looking pretty good at the moment, aren't you? I'm oh. surprised, can I just say, I'm surprised that you, that you got chosen for having clean nails at school. To serve the biscuits, because I, I, I always imagine you. When I look at you, I see you as a child. I see you as a grubby little child who's always out in the street. I getting think Carl is quite hygienic because he's always got a nice little. Nowadays I do. Yeah, nice but not, little not, top the, on. Not, the, not the boyhood Carl. I always uh, imagine you being quite neglected. <laughs> no, me, me clothes weren't always the best, and they were a bit warm, but they were always clean. Yeah. yeah. Which, it's, it's I always a imagine song coming on. Is you gonna, is, <laughs> is, are you Dolly Parton? <laughs> I always imagine your house as having, and actually, to be fair, so do, I imagine your house has been very much the same. Always stinking of chip fat. Mm. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. yeah my mum was always cleaning, so again, the, it, it was always sort of like clean. It was just, yeah. it, it smelled, it smelled. And cigarette of, smoke, maybe? Uh, yes, yeah, it smelled of Dettol, um, pets, yeah, and, uh, and cigarette smoke, yeah, and Such chip fat. Such a working class and smell, chip fat, yeah. yeah. That's a real working class, uh, Sort of smell and look and stench. Yeah, Are you talking about me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. the interesting thing is that Carl's cleaned up his act. <laughs> I'm very. I clean. I have two baths. No, I, no, I, you're obsessed. It's I love. Freakish. I love. It's just really bad of me. I was in uh, Waitrose earlier buying a sandwich. I got a bit of money now, Carl. I like to splash out on a sandwich. I like two pound fifty. You ever seen any of it? Benji's shop. <laughs> Let's go to Avengers. I'll tell you what, I love we go for lunch, right? And if he looks in the restaurant and it's sort of like six fifty, he goes, Rick, I'm not made of money. Yeah. It is. Mm. We have to go to Benji's. He gets two sandwiches that have to fill him up, right? Because they're a quid well, each. I'm a big or guy, but I'm a big guy. I need a lot more food. I need genuinely need more food than most people. I'm like a Brontosaurus. It is. He's just grazing all day. So I'm, that, you know, I, I can't afford to sort of splash out in pret a manger all the time with your, your fancy f French sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, I like to get a lot of bread for the money. I want a lot of bread. Um, so I was, I was in Waitrose and some guy came in behind me. Yeah. And he was sort of, I don't think he was mentally, uh, doolally, but I think he'd been homeless for just too long. And he was really- uh, what, what's, what's just right at the time to be homeless? <laughs> well, I think it was past- You wanna get out, the point of, get out of that game early, don't you? <laughs> it's past <laughs> the point of no return, this guy. <laughs> I, see, right, I yeah. think it was like, it was too late for him. Oh, I think okay, there was no yeah. going back, really. Um, <laughs> Six and he, he months, you're the best out of walking at a bit of a weird angle. He walked like the elephant man, even though he wasn't deformed. It was probably like you were in the week. It was quite, yeah. it was quite unpleasant. And he sort of came up to me and he went, Oh, and he, and weirdly, he spoke a bit like I'm speaking now because of my throat. And he was, and I thought, if I speak to him back, is he going to think I'm taking the mix? So I kept quiet. Mm -hmm. And he went, ah, oh, all right, what's your name? And I said, uh, Steve. And he shook my hand. He forcibly took my hand and shook it. But he had these cuts and bruises on his face. Ah, oh, the open sores. Yeah, and I, and he was shaking my hand, and I was just terrified. I was just thinking, get off my hand, let go of my hand. And thankfully, I, so did he have a bow round his neck? <laughs> well, he may as well have. I mean, seriously, and I, I caught the eye of a security guard. I didn't throw it out. You know, <laughs> I, I'm all hard. This man does not have the funds <laughs> to be exactly. shopping here. This is Please have him removed. This is part of the John Lewis partnership. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so they had him thrown out. And you know, I, seriously, then, I was just freaked out. I had to wash my hand as soon as I could. I just, I, it was just, I couldn't imagine the kind of grime that was crawling across whether it's kind of homeless ways. Are, you, are you still, me. are you still doing your social work? Or you, <laughs> <have> <laughs> Whenever you... I can, Rick. Yeah. 
Yeah. At least he used to give it to old people, biscuits. You'd have gone, oh, I'm not going near them. Look at them gums. Wouldn't you have, wouldn't that have been grim? Would you have wanted that though, old, like, old kind of homeless people touching you? Uh, well, no, it's I'm, not- I'm not Jesus Christ. No, I know, I know. It's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was driving this down. What do I know? I need some batteries from a Walkman. I need to be touched <laughs> by some old people. See you later. Oh, Cheers. This is, I was watching, uh, the one thing I did watch all, all week was Columbo, which seems to be on oh. constantly. I was watching Columbo, and I know you're a fan of Columbo, Wick. But one of my favourite programmes of all time. But right. I was like, do you I'll not think that he- it. Alright, alright. I just thought you were gonna talk about it. Well, so. well no which one? They, what, they, they, what do you they, mean? They, they made it? about uh, 90 and they're showing on about four channels in rotation. But it doesn't matter if I tell you who did it, because you'll find out in the first no, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly. you find out in the first two minutes I mean, anyway. let's be honest, if Robert Vaughan's the star, it's probably gonna be him. Or, or, or Culp. Often Robert Culp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes Patrick McGowan. <laughs> but do you not think that Columbo looks like he smells? Would you imagine he smells a bit? He's a brilliant detective. Well, he's I, got that dog and he smokes cigars, so I imagine he sm I smells- I reckon he stinks. I reckon he doesn't clean his clothes enough. Oh, I think he has a- I think he gets up and washes, but I, I think, think if it's I just think crumpled he's too absent-minded. I think he's too busy thinking on solving crimes and stuff. What do you think- do you think his wife love, makes him his, clean his, his pants quite, quite, now and again? I think they're quite a bohemian couple. I'm not sure she's really interested in that. I think she's kind of- she's got her own mind. Maybe she's a painter or something. No, you maybe- know. maybe she's, uh, she's losing it a bit and he's a bit embarrassed by yeah, it. Yeah, that could be true. That and she's be probably true. incontinent, so while she's ironing his trousers, she just- just- <laughs> All over them, and he goes, yeah. Oh my god, she's shutting my pants again. I gotta wear them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's. That's what. Oh, ding dong! <laughs> Who's that? This? Oh, hello! Oh, look, it's it's David Gray, the bent piano player. Oh! Alright. I thought it was gonna be Columbo. Playing with the joint. Ding dong! <laughs> oh! And, uh, my wife loves you. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I don't believe it. Look who's turned up, Carl. Do you, uh, do you want to do Rockbusters, Steve, now? Can we- can Okay, we listen. It? With the whole Rockbusters thing, I, I don't want to be responsible for bringing it back. So, I think we should put it to the vote. You should be email in. We'll give people five minutes to email in. I'll take a straw poll. Do you want to see the return of Rockbusters or not? We're leaving it to you right. and the audience uh, to decide. Okay, Steve. I, I guarantee it's going to be a landslide. They are all gonna want it. But why have we ever trusted our listener? We, we know what they're like. You've just described some of them with a bloke in white trousers and Columbo's wife shitting herself. So that's the sort of people that, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was actually, it was weird because the waitress guy did ask for my autograph before he was hauled away. <laughs> so maybe he is a listener. But all I'm saying is maybe there's some, maybe the posters have drawn in some fresh blood. There's some people who've maybe not heard Rockbusters before. They're the ones who probably vote for it. Anyone else who's heard it before, surely they're not going to see the return of that. No one wants to see oh, the Oh, what's the number? No, that's email only. We don't it's want to speak it's to it's these it's freaks. <laughs> Nicky Dr. Vegas at XFM. Well, I know the fact we don't want to speak to these freaks. We work with one of them. Yeah. God. Yeah. If you want to see the return of Rockbusters, vote yes. If not, no. Tone it down a bit. Let's not do three. No, I, I, it's got to be three, otherwise oh. it's too easy. Oh. Ricky Dr. Vegas at XFM.co.uk. Right. Just choose the best one. Right. The Seeker from The Who. Brilliant. Classic rock. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Alright, well, unsurprisingly, the overwhelming consensus is that people would like to hear the return of Rockbusters. I should, however, point out just some of the, some of the no responses. Uh, let me see what we've got is here. Is Dickie Anderson calling yet? Sadly, nothing from Dickers. I think I might make him one of my, um, hilarious yeah. sort of comedy <laughs> characters. What do you think he would sound like? Um, what would he sound like? He sort of probably like that. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Ding dong. Hello. Hey, it's, hey, it's Dickie Anderson. I can't believe it. Your show's rubbish. Something like that? I, I mean, I think you should work on them perhaps before you, you- You're saying there's not a lot of substance to these I'm guys. I'm just saying that, you know, once the novelty of the doorbell has, <laughs> has worn off- well, um, I don't think you understand comedy on radio, I'm Steve. I'm not sure I do, but To be honest. Um, listen- um, listen to Noel Evans, listen to Moyles. You'll see, you don't need to riff with it. It's just- you just do the doorbell and just say they're here. <laughs> right. Okay. That's all you need to do. <laughs> sure. So, sure. that's the main thing. Well, so we've I'm, had a couple I'm thinking of responses. some more characters as well. Well, keep working on those. Yeah. Marcus has emailed, um, he says no to Rockbusters, he hasn't heard it but it sounds rubbish. Believe me, you- mm. you couldn't be more right. Well, does The Office sound good as a title? Right. <laughs> uh, this is someone else, don't bring back Rockbusters. Please can we have more holy fook? <laughs> <laughs> You're not pronouncing it right, I know, I know, I was just a bit edgy there. Um, holy, holy fuck, the little uh, Chinese fella, the so little funny- Holy fuck, the little funny Chinese fella. No, okay, alright, well, otherwise, Carl, other than those few negative ones, most people want to see the return of Rockbusters. So, do I okay, have to tell, go on I tell people what the prizes Let's are? Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Are these the prizes? 
Yeah, they were crying. All right, let me have a look. We got the new album from Gold Frap. What's this one here? Oh, I've no idea. Uh, the Yardbirds. A new album from the Yardbirds. Hmm. Uh, on VHS, uh, Coogan's Run, the, uh, the, uh, show where different characters make an appearance each week, including, I think, Pauline and Paul Calf. Good stuff. Who the hell wants this? Meg Loss. What's uh, that? A Tom Baker Doctor Who edition. And the only decent thing, really, in the collection, uh, other than Coogan's Run, is the, uh, X List, the, uh, double CD featuring lots of current indie favourites. So, um, not bad, not bad little selection there, Carl. Yeah, Rob well, uh, if you are new, you haven't heard it before, I sort of give a cryptic clue and then some well, initials. <laughs> I'd say it wasn't, it isn't cryptic. It's, it's like, what am I thinking that might or might not be the initials that I'm gonna say. That's how you gotta think, really. Yeah. But go on. Do you wanna remind them of any? Spring to mind, just to, as a uh, exploding pet was atomic kitten. Doesn't really work. Mm. Um, um, what else? I fell down in a puddle in Texas. I got my legs wet. Uh, knelt down in the puddle, got my legs wet. Uh, wet knee Houston doesn't work either. <laughs> wet um, knee Houston, Whitney Houston. Uh, Jamaican uh, uh, swinging a fish round. Uh, Detroit spinners doesn't work <laughs> in the slightest. Doesn't work <laughs> in idea, the slightest. Idea of how they work. So there's um, three of them. You email in. Um, so here we go then. Uh, number one, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. Right? The gingerbread man has only got one leg. Got the it. initials there, LB. LB. LB, right? Okay. Second one, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Alright? These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. The okay. initials TTD. Right? And, uh, the third one, have a holiday in Italy. Right? So you've done three then? TB is the initials on that one. So quickly again, the first one, Gingerbread Man's yeah, on. Yeah, I've got that like one as well. I've got that one. I've got two. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot, TTD. And, uh, the third one, have a holiday in Italy, TB. Email in with what the songs are and you win that stuff. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Hang on, it's not the songs, it's the artists, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just the... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like, like he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Email only please, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. So we got that going. Yeah, looking forward to uh, the answers on that. Bit of uh, feed would be good, wouldn't it? Alright. I love this answer. Placebo and bitter end. I don't want to contradict you lads, but it's not. We've got a full hour to go on the, uh, <laughs> Ricky Gervais show. On XFM 104.9. I am Ricky Gervais, the aforementioned Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Blockbusters. <laughs> Oh, ding dong. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's, it's p p a posh bloke who doesn't care about poor people. <laughs> Hello, posh bloke, what are you doing? I'm in my Rolls Royce and I don't like the homeless. Oh, posh bloke, don't be a c you want to do that? Satire. That is satire. Yeah. I, I just, I, uh, there's nothing like so it. it's political as well. I'm getting oh, into well, political so many things. Oh, there's begin to show off. I'm I was showing that foreigners, some foreigners are funny. I got in the fact that, like, if you, if you notice that Chinese people wear different hats to us. Yes. So that's political in a yes. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. The thing is, Steve, right, that is like what <laughs> I imagine Ricky's house being like when people are ringing the bell. Because they're all so different, it's got a little- He's obsessed with all my friends being slightly different to each other. I- I've never understood it. He goes, there's no thread. There's no thread to them. All my mates have got a thread running through them. I was in literally after they walk out of the home. Yeah. But what do you mean my friends are all different? Well, that could be- you, it wouldn't surprise me if, if I was round there and the bell went and I said, do you want me to get it? And he said, yeah, and I opened it and it's, you know, uh, what, holy fuck? Holy, <laughs> yeah. He's at the door, right? And then I'd say he's busy. Close the door, bell would go again, then you got the little gay fella. David Gray. Yeah. And then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not really, no. Cause he's met some of my friends and he, he looks at them in a weird way. I mean, some of them are weird, but, yeah. um, he's just- <laughs> Oh, the other night, right, he's got a thing about Robin, my mate Robin, right, who's a lovely bloke, right, he's going, I can't, I can't be handling him, he talks too much, he talks, you know, Robin sort of goes, blah, 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 and he's, he's, he talks really fast and he's, he's sort of riffing all the time and that, and it, because it does me head in. Why is he talking like that? And, um, uh, I said, uh, it's Carl out for a drink, I went, uh, he went, Robin's not gonna be there, is he? I went, no. And I was there with, uh, um, Johnny, and, um, I'd set him up, I knew Robin was gonna be there. Robin comes in, sits down and goes, hi, I go, alright, Carl goes, out. Oh, I'm going. And I, and Robin sort of looks at him, I went, oh, don't be stupid, he went, no, and, and this is in front of Robin, who's confused, Carl goes, uh, points at him, finger, he goes, I said, was he gonna be here, uh, you know I don't like him. And 
Uh, uh, it was unbelievable. It was That's unbelievable. Appalling. It was unbelievable, Steve. And Robin sort of looked like really genuinely sort of upset. He goes, well, shall I go? I went, no, don't. And Johnny went, oh, Carl, uh, he's a lovely bloke, right? And Carl went, well, no, uh, uh, you know, I'm less annoyed at Robin now, who's done nothing <laughs> no, of course. than you. And I went, look. Just chat, have a chat. Have a, he goes, no, it's not worth it. You know, and Robin's going, right. I go, Robin, stay. He went, no. Nah. So I, and I made him stay. And in the end, they were getting on, weren't you? Well, yeah, in the end. I can't believe, what were you thinking, Carl? What kind of a despicable man are you? That's a, that's- Why am I the bad one? Of all the things you've done, Hang on that a is terrible. Why am I the bad one? When it's this- it, when it's Ricky's fault that we were both there anyway. <laughs> we all understand <laughs> but that it's the a rule public place. is- You don't say to someone in front of them, I don't like this person, I'm shooting off. I don't think I said it like that. You did, you said, I you said, you said exactly like that. Yeah, and he was like genuinely confused, and he was sort of like sitting there thinking, "Oh, do I have to take this? What have I done?" And he was upset anyway. He just done a show that didn't. You, you know. are one of those typical manks who are arrogant, and they swagger around the place like I don't need anyone. And I'll tell you this: if Suzanne, if you ever lose Suzanne, you are going to be one lonely man. I'll tell you because you make you make no effort to maintain your friendships. You, you say these sort of things that he's saying to you about Liverpudlians, and I'll tell you what: I've never met a Liverpudlian as rude as you. You are- you're like the Oasis Brothers, you know? Larry, <laughs> loud, rude, No, but I uncivil. said no, Ro Robin's all right. I had a chat with him. He was mm. a bit quieter the other night, he was fed up. I said if he's fed up all the time, I'd be happy. I said- I said- He's fed up because you've just insulted yeah. him! and he said he was all right, he didn't talk much. I said when he was upset because he'd been in the show and he was like, he said, he said, he said, well tell me next time when his family dies, we'll have another drink. I don't know what you're like, Carl. I don't know what you're like, mate. You are a. Oh, I just think you're. The more the I get to know you, the more I hate you. You're not a good mate him. with him. You would like taking the fun out of his uh, out of his little thumbs that he's got. <laughs> yeah, but that's like that's my squeezing his head to you, isn't it? I've got different different mates with different parts of the body. Yeah. I like to squeeze your head. I like to look at his thumbs and that. It's weird, you know, because right, I was I was thinking of doing a bit of educating Ricky. Yeah. Right. I'm always looking for stuff, learning stuff as well as doing another job and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And w when we went out with Robin, and uh... What does this mean to anyone? Yeah. I'm just having a conversation about people they don't know. Go on. Well, it's enough, isn't it? His name's Robin, he's got really small thumbs, <laughs> right? He looks a bit like, um, Millhouse, doesn't yeah. he? That sums it up. He's like Elephant Man, you know what you're getting there, right? Robin, he's got little thumbs, right? So, I came <laughs> I wonder in, if he's listening! I wanted to do some, uh, <laughs> research, and I thought, I wonder if there's anything on small thumbs, right? <laughs> I found something. Do you know the saying, uh, rule of thumb? Oh, is it an inch? Well, well, it, do you know what the saying is? Oh, means? is it the, hitting some, hitting your wife with a stick? Yeah, okay, apparently. Okay, come on, explain. Well, rule of thumb, do you know what that saying means if someone says? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, it just means, it, it, A rule of thumb, usually, a general rule. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. Well, where it actually came from is, years ago, uh, husbands weren't allowed to sort of clout the wife. With oh. anything. <laughs> what was it like in the past? <laughs> I know, you yeah. You couldn't clout your missus. With anything wider than your thumb. The, the I, stick had to be the same, the, no bigger than your thumb. Oh, no, so, a bit, so a Robin big bloke. could do no damage <laughs> if he went out with anyone. <laughs> yeah. Although he's wide, he's, he's got a little thumb like a little knob, isn't it? It's like it's truncated, because it starts off normal. It, it, it looks like he's had, um, his big toes put on his hands. Does he have to drink a pint with two hands? Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's dropping stuff all the time. Can I just go back to the rule of thumb thing, though? Uh, the idea- what date was this? I'm not asking Carl, I'm looking at Ricky, cos you're not gonna have any idea, Carl. It's just gonna be the past. Yeah. But I like the idea that- I think it's the same sort of day where, I don't know, you- it, you got hung for being homosexual and you could but shoot I a Welshman. I just love the idea that there's people- there's blokes beating their wives with shovels, logs of wood, and someone's gone, hang on a minute, everyone, Hold on, wait crazy. a minute, let's have a look at your thumbs. Wait what can minute, we do? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got to have some kind of rule here. I'm all for beating your wife, but let's have some kind of rule. Let's give them a sporting chance. Yeah. Sure. He goes, well, I'll tell you what, what about you can hit her with the width of your thumb? And the wife goes, make it the width of his knob. <laughs> I go, no. <laughs> he no. slaps her again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. R width of your thumb. All right. <laughs> Better? Yeah. It's like the, um, it's like I always remember seeing in the swimming baths, there used to be, uh, those signs that would say, um, no running, no jumping. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. No bombing. Fair enough. Um, no petting. No petting. It's like you're not allowed to kiss. Yeah. Really yeah well, and I love the idea that it's probably some kind of lifeguard who sort of maybe saw his ex-girlfriend getting off with some bloke in the water and thought, oh, yeah. Right. Well, there's no petting anymore in here. What do you mean? No petting. You can't, you're not allowed to kiss her or at, at, at no one. You're not doing this just because no, he used to go- No, nothing. There's not, there's not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Just leave and don't kiss. You want to swim, swim, but don't kiss. There's no- no- look, no petting. Did you just write that on in yeah. yourself in Byron? Yeah. No. What's this no fiddling downstairs in or out the swimming pool? No. 
No fiddly no. with her dancing. No, 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 no. no, no. Right. That does annoy yeah. me though. I was saying to Ricky the other night when we were walking somewhere. No people taking who... her for a drink afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you can't enforce yeah. that. People who kiss and that in the street. That oh, annoys yeah. me. People showing their affection for one another. No. Mm. They can hold their hand and that. Yeah. Sure. But it was just. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, yeah. I see two people eating each other, at, like, in a restaurant or something. Two like people <laughs> eating each other? You know, snogging oh, in right, public, okay. yeah. <laughs> so <it's> that. Uh, <laughs> answers for Rockbusters we're doing now. Yeah, oh, well, come on then. Well, well no, I, I think let's play a record, let's come uh, back with answers Apparently we got a, what about a bit of Cure? Do you want a bit of Cure? Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go wrong, we're gonna go wrong. Ding with. dong. Oh, here he is. Oh, it's a fat fellow with lipstick. Hello! Oh. <laughs> a forest. The Cure. XFM 104.9. Good track, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Going, going all the way back. All the way back there. Wow, Rockbusters. The results. You've had a few real answers, uh, proper answers, I hear. Mm. So, either I'm wrong or people do think like you. I've got two of them. What are the clues again? All right. Uh, first one was, uh, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. I got that. That was LB. Limp Biscuit. Right. Yeah, uh, the that third works. One, the third one that I think you worked out. Yeah. Have, a, have a holiday in Italy. Cheering breaks. TB, cheering breaks. Yeah, this is the one I can't get. If, if this is, if there's a reason why I can't get this, we're not doing Rockbusters again. Can I again. give the answer to this one? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the clue? The clue, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Yeah. TTB. TTB. The answer. TD. T -D. Yeah, go on. Give the clue again. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Tourette's Trent Darby. Right, you're never doing Rockbusters again. Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> right, you're not doing it. You're never doing- you've blown it. You see, you sneak that one in, you- uh, uh, Yeah, but I, I always like to sort of give to that, you know, a fairly easy and then you, you, you sort of work out the men from the boys then, don't you? Yeah, but I, I mean, if I'd have done a character called Tourette's Boy, friend of the little Chinaman, and it went, ding dong, oh look, it's Tourette's boy, friend of, holy fuck, fuck, holy fuck, you'd have been annoyed. Do you know what I mean? Oh, who's your mate, Tourette's boy, holy fuck? You'd have been annoyed, wouldn't you? Is that a character from Lenny Henry's show? <laughs> 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 I, I, can't last night, I, can't I can't remember if it's Chris Moore's or Lenny Henry. Uh, yeah, one of them. Right. Anyway, the winner, lucky old Richard Perks from Birmingham. He's listening presumably on Sky, and so nice to have him listening. And that's Richard Perks. He's got those answers, all of them right. In fact, most people seem to get uh, Terence Trent Darby or Tourette's mm. Trent Darby. Well, I think that's offensive. Um, if you want to complain, um, what's the number? What's the, what do they write to, to complain about that? Mm. Us, uh, using uh, that The same person you told people to write to and tell them I was a knobhead and shouldn't be on the radio. <laughs> That last week when I was away. Did anyone do it? I think a few went through. Did you yeah. listen to the show? I, I listened back to the recording of Did it, you yeah. get any emails before you listened to the show? Yeah, when I got in. Did um, it upset you? What sort of things was it? Just the stuff, uh, I can't remember, just, uh, it was, it was weird because there was like a few of them in a row and I just thought, what's, ha what's happened here? Yeah. And well, just- Cause we, we said that, yeah, cause you weren't here, so, <laughs> so what, what did you say? I just you? said, uh, phone in, um, we had, we had a couple of genuine emails that liked the show, didn't they? Yeah. And I said, phone in, um, uh, uh, and leave messages or email Andrew Phillips and Carl Pilkington and just say the show was great, the show was brilliant without him. But they went a bit too far, did they? What did they say then? Oh, I can't remember. I mean, it doesn't bother me cause I'm not bothered what people say, am I? No. Do you know what I mean? No, you don't care what you don't care what you say to people either. Poor little Robin, he looked crushed. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Well, it doesn't matter because he's he's doing well at what he does. He couldn't he even hitchhike even... home because they wouldn't stop because his thumbs didn't show up. He, he couldn't. He, had to, he was waiting there for ages by the side of the road. Do you know the difficulty he has buying gloves? <laughs> <laughs> it's murder for him. <laughs> he, he wears little oven gloves. Yeah. From like Wendy houses, he has to wear he has to wear Barbie oven gloves. Yeah. Oh. Right, so, uh, yeah, so the winner there, Richard Perks in Birmingham, if you could just email him with your address. There um, was another winner, wasn't there? Um, uh, what was his name? Was it, was his Actually, name? there was one, one person who got all the right answers and there was almost a winner, but his name was Peter Kay. And I like, I like Peter Kay just coming second. So yeah. we gave it to Richard Perks. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Kay. <laughs> there we go. Let's play a record. <laughs> Radiohead. There, there. XFM, 104.9. We drive Steve Mitch and Carl Pilkington. Right, Rockbusters. Well, you blo you know, you shot yourself in the foot with that, so, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, what did you think of first? His name and what words you could put in there? 
Uh, I normally sort of just go through a Guinness Book of Hit singles and go, right, who can I do? Right. You're giving away a lot of- I mean that- you know, you're an enigma, Carl. I wouldn't give away your workings. I mean, cos they- cos they never want to be able to do it. And what you- what you've got now is a gift that people can't really tap into. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, that's what- that's what Lenny Henry and, um, Chris Moles' mistake. See, I, I've sort of worked out how they do their comedy, and I'm doing it now. Mm, sure. Do you see what sure. I mean? Now that, you know, I'm, I'm doing- I mean, I'm the only, I think the only way that, that people would start to be able to replicate a lot of what Carl does is if maybe they had a severe blow to the head, <laughs> or they were diving and they came up to the surface too quickly. Ding dong! Oh, I'd like a severe blow! Oh, get lost, David! <laughs> oh, let's have some adverts, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Steely Dan, reeling in the years. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> look, right, he's, look, he's gone to put on his little duffel coat. Yeah. Well, I'm not very well. You look like someone that walks around Forbidden Planet. <laughs> um, Don't say that, that's the ultimate insult. <laughs> <laughs> you can say I look like something that you'd buy in Forbidden Planet, <laughs> but not someone that goes shopping in there. <laughs> Please. The Professor. Oh, the Professor. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, talking about weird looking, um, heads and stuff. Go on. Um, we're, um, doing that cartoon on the internet at the moment, that little cartoon I did of, um, uh, Carl. And the bid's up to Hang on, sorry, that doesn't make any sense to people that don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I did a little cartoon of Carl, and um, because he doesn't like his picture in the paper, when people request a picture of us, he started sending that off, and it's in Heat, and it? it's gonna be in Jack, and they put it on the internet, and they, they're they bidding for it, aren't they? Yeah, it's, uh, uh 200 quid. That's oh, ridiculous, that's isn't crazy. it? That's crazy. So what I thought was, we've got a, we've got to frame it, Carl, we've got to put the copy of Heat in or something, you'll have to, the, the, the winning show, the show that they win on, um, you'll have to do a copy of that. So, they, you know what I mean? They get something for their money, I think. I'm, I'm mildly embarrassed. So, uh, it's for good cause and everything. But, um, didn't someone say 250 if they can come in and watch the show? Yeah. We can't do that, we don't allow people- But what I thought was, what about the winner gets to come in and squeeze your head? So they get in for just, just two minutes, we present them with it. No, yeah. I'm not, no. What do you mean, no? I'm not having strangers coming in squeezing my head. What? You mean it's for charity? It's for charity, Cole. Come on, mate. What, what are you like? I don't care. I'm not doing that. I not think even an ill person would say, no, it's all right, I'm not that ill. What do you mean? You don't have to have your head squoze. Yeah, squoze? Squoze! <laughs> you don't have to have your head squoze! All right, let's move on. Carl, so how have they bid then? So how will they know they've won? xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, you can see the picture on there. If you're interested, if you think it's worth more than 200 and you've got some money, then you, you send an email in saying I'll give you you know, 220 quid or something. But are you not gonna let them squeeze your head? No. So we get someone here, the art department here, they're, they're, we're, we're, we're frame it up, I'll put a, a little note of like, uh, authenticity, authenticity yeah. Brilliant. A picture of us. Can they have a real picture of you? A little Imagine David scenes. Dickinson examining that in a couple <laughs> of years' time. <laughs> <laughs> this is as cheap as chips. <laughs> yeah. You can sue him then, cause he ripped off your phrase a little yeah, bit, didn't he? Yeah. You've been done here, mate. You have uh, more money than sense. Uh, I'll tell you what, have we got monkey news today? We, we, might not, we might not get to it, mate. We are running out of time. No, we're doing it. What do you mean, we're doing it? It's- The show isn't complete without it. I'd rather drop adverts and stuff. Well, I'd rather drop adverts. No, we're doing monkey news. Do you want it? My concern is that if you put monkey news on the s on the subs bench, it's gonna be like David Beckham. Yeah. He's gonna have his eye wandering to other radio yeah, stations. Yeah, And look what- what's- look what he's doing. Yeah, he's he off to Real Madrid. He might be leaving off to Real Madrid. I might take monkey news off to radio too or something. Yeah. Right? So yeah. don't, don't um, believe in monkey I, news. I, I imagine if they're listening now, they're probably gonna call you and go, Carl, were you serious about bringing monkey news to Radio 2? Cause <laughs> it, it checks open. <laughs> well, do, you, do you want a bit now or what? What we're doing? Well, no, I want you to tell uh, Steve about your holiday. Cause you told me I in the week. Oh. Go on. Steve, I mean, bad, bad idea. I had a feeling anyway about, uh, going away with like Suzanne's mum and dad. Cause I've never been into sort of family holidays anyway, uh. right? Uh, even when you see it, whenever I've been on holiday and you see like families on planes and that and they're all having a laugh and a joke, loving it, and then on the plane going back you can see that they've gone off into groups and like, you know, the dad isn't talking to the daughter and all that business. So I thought, asking for trouble, but you know, I, I do everything once. Do you know what I mean? Boxing, <laughs> dancing, yeah. going on holiday with parents and that. Yeah. Give it a go, see how it goes, right? Yeah. So, um Not your A-levels, but fair it, enough. <laughs> it, it started off- it, it started off bad, didn't it? Cause last week I told you that, uh you know, our dad called us up and said, you know, I want to take some tea bags with us to Madeira. Yeah. What's the best way of packing them? Yeah. Right, so I knew there was gonna be problems like that, cause the thing with, um, Suzanne's family, right, they- they like having a routine. Mm. They know what they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. They know what they're having for tea every day. <laughs> it's the same thing every week. 
and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought this is gonna be interesting, this, cause <laughs> they can't do what they normally do. Sure. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love you treating it like an experiment. Yeah. Right. Just watching them all the time. So, um, the first problem was they'd never flown before. So I was winding them up a bit. Of course you oh, were. It's, it's murder. It's really horrible. Uh, you know, the plane goes all over the place. And my mum had done some research saying, well, I've been reading about it and, uh... What, she got a funny accent? More, more people, uh, more, there's more chance of me being killed on a donkey than there is on a plane. So, I upset her. I said, Especially right, when we go get to there. Spain. I said, when we get there, let's see if there's any donkeys on the beach. Yeah. Right? And she didn't like that. So... Oh, what, the joke about you hoping she died? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's up with her? Right, so we get there. <laughs> And, um, you know, it, it, they see the villa and that, they're quite happy with all that business, yeah. right, and all that stuff. And then, as time went on, I was getting a bit, sort of, fed up with them being around us all the time. Cause yeah, sure. I think you should have your own time when you go on holiday yeah. with course, the yeah. family. You should say, right, you go off and do your thing. Yeah. We'll do our thing and we'll meet up later and talk about what we've been doing and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it gets to, like, the Thursday. We've been away since Monday, right? And, uh, I said, right, we're going out tonight. So, a uh, mum says, yeah, we'll come with you. I said, no, no, it's just us, we're having a bit of time on our own, right? Did you, is it true you said to her, you told me this, you said to her, you started to annoy me, I want to drive my own. Well, I just said, well, I told her at the start, I said, it's gonna be interesting this, cos people annoy me when they're around me a lot. Sure. So I wasn't nasty to her, I just was saying people, not her. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you're gonna get on my nerves. <laughs> so, sure. um... You hailed a donkey for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but, uh, seriously, right, with the flying, do you know those stockings that you can get because of, uh, deep vein thrombosis? Probably, sure. She had them on in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And it's only a two-hour flight as well, so that was annoying me. Right, that so, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, it gets to this, it gets to this, um, you know, the, the, th the Thursday night when we, when I'm going out with Suzanne. Yeah. And, uh, a mum's like sat, sat on the, on the sun lounger outside, so, and so where are we going tonight? I said, no, like I said, it's just, it's just us, we're going out, having a bit of time to ourselves. So, uh, I could see as the day was getting on, she was realising that she's got a night in with like her husband. Yeah. Right? Uh, she started, her face started to like look miserable. Sure. I thought, I'm loving this. <laughs> so I said, right, I'm, uh, I'm going in to go and have a shower, go and, uh, get ready for the tonight, it's gonna be great. And winding them up, just yeah. wind them up cos they can't come, cos yeah. he said they can't. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I go upstairs, have a, uh, have a shower and that. I come down and, uh, a mum's smiling. Oh, hang on. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's, what's gone on here? So I went to Suzanne, I said, uh, why's your mum smiling? She's, she's not coming. She said, uh, no, but, uh, my dad said he'll, he'll take her out now. So in a way she was happy cos she got her own way. Yeah. Which had annoyed me. That annoyed again. you, sure, cos you wanted it's to- like, oh, What, you don't even want her husband taking her out? <laughs> well, it's just the fact she didn't want to go out. She was happy to stay in and have sausage, egg and chips that they'd found from some shop that sold English food. Right. So that's almost like what they do if they're sausage, at home. Sausage, egg and chips. So yeah. she was happy with that if we were staying in and having that. Well, cos we were going out, she was fed up. Right. right? So she's smiling, so she's going, yeah, I'm going out now. So I said, well, enjoy yourself. She said, where are you going? I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You don't need to know. Sure, she's yeah. She's not going to where we're going. Oh, you just don't want us to be in the same restaurant. So yeah, that's right. I said, I want a night out on my own with Suzanne. It's our holiday as well. Yeah. I don't know how you can talk to me like this. This is not even his own parents. This is someone else's parents. These are the parents of the women, of the woman he loves. But, but even Suzanne sort of agreed with me. There's only so much time you can spend with your parents. That's why you leave. That's why when you're ill, you don't go home to them. <laughs> Yeah? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the slight difference between y y me and you, Carl, is that <laughs> not everyone in the world annoys me. Well, n not everyone does, just... I can see what- I was- I felt a bit guilty that week when he said I was annoying him, but I realise it's not my fault now. <laughs> no, everyone annoys him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was- it was an alright holiday. It was good to get back. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I won't be doing it again. No. Um, and what now would you say is your relationship with Suzanne's parents? Is it, is it a frosty one? Uh, no, I just think they know that I, that I don't like to them, put up them. with them for a long time. Yeah. I mean, when, when we were packing, a man was upset because, like, she really liked the place where we were staying, right? Because it was quite a big villa, because there was a few of us. There was a brother as well with us, right? Yeah. So, uh, a mum said, oh, I love it here. She said, uh, I'm definitely gonna book this place again. I said, it's a bit, bit, you know, a bit big for two of you, isn't it? 
Just being sarky, like we're yeah. definitely just. I think it's uh, you know I won't be coming again. You're like I don't know what you're like, Carl. You're just you're a monster. You're an absolute. You wouldn't speak with the ghost. I say as I speak as I find. I say as I and, and uh, jibbered what the wibble. Yeah. And never the way will slap. You're like uh. a middle-aged man. You're like an old man. You're like an old man. You and you're what thirty. I'm just imagine you scraping along in clogs and a flat cap, going, "Oh, that tree's got to come down." Yeah. Mm. yeah. Puncturing a kid's ball if he kicks it into your garden by mistake. Yeah. Refusing to give it back. Mm. Yeah. Uh, gather round, gather round. Yeah, there were once Chinese kid as airy as that cow, which is weird because there's not many <laughs> Chinese people that are airy. But this one, I tell you, it were back in 1990. Granddad, are you eating a Twix? <laughs> Well, that's you too, uh, with or without you, but we've got to cut it a little bit short because we're actually running out of time. It's so jam-packed, this show. We've got monkey news on the bench. Carl, just remembered, we've got Cheeky Freak of the Week to fit in. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, what's your Cheeky Freak of the Week, quickly? Just throw that away. Right, well, it's just like, you know, we look at, we look at Cheeky Freaks. Uh, Is this show offensive in any way to some people, do you think? Ding dong. <laughs> 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 got any buns? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the elephant man. Go on. Right, well, it's a bit of a problem for you, this one, Steve, right? I'm chucking it forward to you. Remember the, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week that we were talking about? Uh, that, that illness where people age quicker? Mm. The five-year-old girl that was older than her mum, mm. mm. and he said to you, w w what, if you ran off like you wouldn't serve her fags and beer, and you went, yeah. no, he went, why not? And you went, cos it's a five-year-old. Yeah. Right? He went, oh, she's got enough problems, give her some fags. <laughs> you remember that, <laughs> yeah, don't you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right. So, another dilemma for you. Right, picture this, you're running a restaurant, right, door goes, right, uh, few people, most of them look normal, you know it's the woman at the back, <laughs> crawling on all fours, mm -hmm. uh, top half is woman, right, and this is real, yes. this isn't like a comic or anything, this is on, yeah, this is on the internet. Yeah, I've seen it, they're called dog people and her legs just come straight down, they're like little, there's been legs at the back and so they walk on all fours because it's easier. Dog people, right? Yeah. You've Not dog people. They're human beings right. with yeah. deformed back legs, so they walk. It's easier for them to get around like that because they can't they can't stand up because they can't stabilise and also it comes straight out of their hips. Right. right. So you're running a restaurant, it's a busy night, you haven't really got time for any hassle. She comes in. Uh huh. Would you serve her? Um, the premise being what? That he doesn't serve dogs. Because the restaurants don't allow animals in. Right! She Right. Right. So it's a dilemma. It's not a dilemma. Right. She's not a dog. She's a human being. Yeah, with I, put the form some, I put, you know, a plate of meatballs <laughs> on the floor <laughs> and she tucks in. <laughs> and a little glass of, you know, a little bowl of wine <laughs> next to it. Ah, <laughs> uh, it turns round, there's the woman older than- Get mama. away from that plant! <laughs> Is <laughs> 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 service included? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so monkey news, please. All right, all right. Then. Let's hear the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. Right <laughs> now, before, before oh, I and again, and again. Go on. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. Brilliant. All right. All right. Um, right before I went away. I told you about Alfred. Um, he was the he was the monkey where there was a, a robbery going on in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then remember. he nicked the robber's loot and backed out yeah. with a gun. Yeah, he everybody... sort of stole. He, he robbed the robber, didn't he? Yeah. Did he take his gun as well? He took he the weapons. He took all the weapons. There was like a couple of robbers. He managed because they were so amazed that a monkey was coming in. It was like don't what? talk shite twice. Right. Anyway, so anyway, got a follow up to that. Okay, now what was that, that monkey's name? Um, Alfred. That was Alfred. Um, so anyway, um, because a lot of people wanted to know, well, you know, what did he do? Did he go off and have a holiday? Did he, no, no, no. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> so, um, so the follow-up is, what happened is, the monkey had the guns, had the cash, which was $250,000. Sure. Right? It went back to the zoo, right? Uh, you, uh, right, Carl, you're talking shit. Well, you, Ricky, oh. I get angry with you when you won't let oh. him finish his monkey news. Right. Can we just get out the official? Imagine thing. if people were interrupting Trevor McDonald. I don't. It wouldn't happen. I don't. Wanna, I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. No, of course not. Um, no, so, so yeah. check the internet. So uh, the monkey goes back to the zoo, right, where all the zookeepers come out, 
and go get him. He's, he's got the guns. Yeah. He hands out a couple of guns to his mates. What? Right. His monkey mates? His monkey mates. So they've all got a couple of guns each. Oh, Carl. Uh, Steve, I can't, mate. I cannot <laughs> Just stand it. Honestly, go. I want to f scream. Please, I really get annoyed with you. They tried to do him a, do him a deal. They said, how about if- uh, I'm going. Tell him that. I'm right. not going. No, I can't. Step out uh, for a moment. Okay, we'll just do it. Look, don't ridiculous. listen. Step out and I'll paraphrase what, what I hear for you when you come back in. Step out. Now, please, I need to hear, I need to well, hear the I'm end of this. Is, this is monkey news. This is important right. stuff. Right. Right, Ricky now has left the room. He cannot, he cannot bear to hear, which is surprising to me. Right, so anyway, um, so yeah, they've got the money and mm. they say to the zookeepers, how about, uh, we give you some cash. Yes. And they go, oh. sorry, well, hang on, sorry, the zookeeper said that to the monkeys? Yeah. Right. No, 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 the monkeys who have got the 250,000 pounds. Right. Say to the zookeepers, we'll sort you some money out if you let us go. So right. the monkeys say to the zookeepers, we'll give you some money? Yeah. You don't see any problem with that? Right, listen. Okay. Let, it's nearly finished. Right, I'm listening out there. You could, this is ridiculous. You go! What do you mean the monkeys what? say? What do you mean the monkeys say to the zookeeper? They were probably holding the money out, like, kind of going, look, you know, we'll do your deal. Right, okay, come on. Um, and what happened is, I think, uh, I think that I think they were happy with that. I think they left and that was that. They they, they wanted to get out of the zoo because they didn't like it in there. There's the thing. Right, I, I don't. I, just have a look. Right, Carl, think. Right, how did they get out in the first place? This one. Just let Steve have a. So why did he go? So he went and robbed. He thought. Uh, what he knew there was going to be a robbery that day, did he? He might have been getting some money before they went to escape and then that happened and they had more money. They might have been withdrawing some stuff out. What do you mean? If no. If he was planning on leaving the zoo, he's going to get his savings. What are you talking about? What have you read there, Steve? I, I've got a, I've got a feeling this is a review of one of the Planet of the Apes films. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I can, I'm not certain. It could be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Right. What I mean, Carl, think, think, please think. Right. So this this monkey, right? He leaves the zoo, right? He, so he leaves the zoo, which he can do presumably. What they leave him the keys or what? They're chatting to him, they might as well. He goes to a bank, what, what's, he, what's he thinking they're doing? Sees a robbery, probably by chance. He probably wasn't tipped off, was he? Or has he got one of those police scanners? Probably got one of those police scanners, didn't well, he? Well, I think he was going to the bank to get a mortgage to uh, build a, a large, sorry, uh, I think he wanted an extension, didn't he, on his uh, cage? Think of that. And so, he, I love the fact that he hands out the guns and they do a deal. <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, you've got the best, you've got the best mind w working on radio today. It's incredible. So the only like person who makes less sense is Terry Wogan. He <laughs> <laughs> oh, goes up and down, I doesn't don't know he? What he's I about. can't understand his sentences because I don't know. No. It's like freeform poetry. He, it's, I don't know whether it's the end of a sentence in the middle, or sure like a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's it, have the jingle again, a record, and then we'll uh, probably have to wrap up the show. I imagine. That was oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news. Well, Mr. Stipe. Kenneth, but I can tell you the frequency was 104.9. <laughs> See you next week. Oh, I'm Ricky Gervais well, with like me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Do you think that when Marconi invented radio, this was what he had in mind for? <laughs> yeah, two hours of absolute. See you later. Richard Ashcroft on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now listen up, right? It's the Sony Awards this Thursday. Now, for those who don't know, the Sony Awards are like the the Oscars for for radio uh, presenters and producers and everything, right? So, and as you know, me and Steve, we love to win. We want to win this one. This is the last time the panel will be listening, so I want a good, a good, clean, tight show, okay. right? So no, no swearing, joking aside, no swearing, nothing controversial, and and uh, nothing in bad taste. All right? Just good well, luck out there. Aren't okay. we a little bit buggered then? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So, all right, Carl? Yeah, that's all right. Just, it's just when you say things like, uh, you know, make it a good one. Sometimes it sort of puts a bit of pressure on and things slip out that you shouldn't say and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had that? What, when you can't? It's like, I'll tell you one, I'll tell you one story, right? I'll tell you a couple, actually. Go that, on. that one's just come to mind r right now, right? There was a fella who, um, who my dad was gonna meet. I don't know if I told you this before, right? But, um, I have told you, when, when it was a party and everyone was saying, 
Dave's coming, he looks like Ken Dodd. But don't say anything, have I told you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, what is it again? And, uh, everyone's like, right, oh, and my dad's like, oh, I've never met him, I wonder if he does look like Ken Dodd, and everyone's saying, yeah, but don't say anything. Yeah. Because you'll accidentally, you know, say it and- The unbunctious, you might go, uh, uh, unbunctious yeah. to meet you. So, the thing is, when this fella turns up, he did look like Ken, my dad couldn't believe it, first thing he said, nice to meet you, Ken. Oh, <laughs> oh no. His name's Dave. <laughs> and that's the sort of thing, there was another one, right? <laughs> Uh, at a station that I worked at in, uh, in Manchester, right, uh, there was this girl who worked in the newsroom, right, and, uh, she had a, a plastic arm, right? Right. And this presenter, nice bloke, he didn't, you know, he's not out to hurt anyone, went up to her, sat down, was chatting for a bit, touched the arm, said, what lovely skin you've got. <laughs> what did she say? I, I, I don't think, I think, I mean, she's probably used to it. So she wasn't bothered. And then, right, this one, this is brilliant. Um, this is a sort of gaffy made on air, right? <laughs> and like I say, he's a nice bloke, so he meant nothing by it, right? But he does this competition on the air, gets a caller on, right? And uh, he's talking to the woman, saying, you know, thanks for calling in and to play, I don't know, what, what have I got in my pocket or whatever they used to play on the show, right? And uh, talking to the woman, in the background there's this noise, right? Like, like that, right? So he's talking, and he goes, uh, have you got a, uh, pet parrot? She said, no, it's my Down Syndrome kid. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Uh, the, th the thing is, awards don't matter. No, I don't think so. Play record? I don't think so. So, we're not out to offend or annoy. <laughs> Appropriate words there. That's the Smiths and Panic. Don't worry about it, Carl. People know that there's- you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. So, uh, they, they, they know it's confusion. Don't worry. No, it did happen. So it's I not. know. I know, yeah. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should've told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money I, for old It's money rope. for rope. It That's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what's the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer. And he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right? I got back a holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in, it was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying, we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right? Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought, right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they-, they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple well, of days. I didn't days. get the message. I got- all I got was, there was a company, I don't remember the name, and they phoned you the what voiceover. Uh, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take down a number, you didn't take down a name, nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't no, but listen to that voice. Oh, no, you must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you- I don't know how you think, I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> I can't What do I care? What's going no, hang on a minute. Wait What's a minute. Wait a minute. The I worm don't has care. turned. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested, they were offering me money. And you decided, arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it, they probably made a mistake, I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway, I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid- What if that been a girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get your decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? 
it isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to yeah. offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you'd want me to do. What? Someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I would love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an well, exciting you've never called sex me, so scene. Has it happened? Has well, it happened? I'm saying in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, d I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still alright. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. <laughs> selfish, Carl. So selfish. And you've lost us a second. Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what has happened to Carl? Cos Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his, his ways, you know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's... And now he's coming back like that, having a go at- not- not caring about voiceover work. It's like- cos Heat have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cos I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl, doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, he, you, he, exactly. You, you've got no comeback. You're still sweet, and to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine. Right. True voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's- I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that Thanks. doesn't- do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And me. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that right, is what, a rubbish- Alright, apart from that then, what else have I done? That's wound you up. But that's- that's- that's a- that's a good starting point, because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock, because that's the first time I've let you down. And I didn't really let you down, because I passed on the message. You didn't- well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, where people have come up and they said, are you Carl? Because they've seen Ricky. Now, it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just- no. you cannot deal with fame, you've not got the intelligence to cope no. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming now this kind getting. of ego-driven monster. Now it's monster. getting, now it's getting. Now it's getting. It scares me, Carl. You're bit, not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't even my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, yeah, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I is mean, that, that is arrogance right there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay with your landlady. Is, is, he talked about it for about the hour when we were working. What are you talking- I, I, last week I had a bad throat, you yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that, you wouldn't when you, had about, when you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you were at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again! He's hey. done you again, mate! Play a record! How has he done me? What? They live in Bristol! <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the joke's on you! He couldn't get him to clean the flat! Ah! <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who, then. Right, listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay! Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay, alright. Okay. Do you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right. Well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to uh, read out the prizes for uh, Rockbusters? We'll, we'll get that one. In. Oh, we're oh, not, we're not doing, doing Rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? 
Oh, uh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, b both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, a good I don't know. Better, what do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My yeah, point is this, he was Rick. Looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I know. Now it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rock buses. He gets to do it. I know. And it's it's awful, rock buses. Like, like, uh, Tourette's Trent Derby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? What's the prizes? I'll read out the prizes. We've got uh, a brand new XFM, a stylish XFM uh, DJ bag. That is actually quite nice. Actually, yeah, we've got in there a uh, 12 inch from uh, the XFM remix album. This has got the Cure on there and the Prodigy remixes from them, which is uh, quite handy. We've got a little mm. mouse mat there with the XFM logo on, and here's what everyone's waiting for: the CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Um, once again, the X list. This is the compilation that XFM have put out. It's actually very good. Uh, Smash hits, the reunion. Let me see what we got on there. Aha, obviously, Wham, Duran Duran, all your favourite 80s and 90s classics. Another copy of DVD, uh, Steve Coogan's Coogan's Run DVD. What else is this here? Low Fidelity All Stars. Blah, 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 blah. That's some. There's Voodoo House and Ghost Funk on there, Rick. I'm sure that'd be right up your street. Yes. And uh, also on DVD, Man Is that Child. with or without wrecked train? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, not not a bad little selection there, Carl. You're, yeah, you've done, well you're done well there. So go on and do the clues. Then let's do Rockbusters now. Well, I'll, I'll bung a song on. And we'll, we'll, well, yeah. I love the fact that he was taking the piss out of your voice. I'll bung a song on. <laughs> hey, it's tripe and cow wheels tonight. Uh, now as griddling as gravy. <laughs> to be honest, to Carl, let's be honest, if Ricky Gervais can get voiceover work, do you know what there's I mean? gotta be a place for me. Where do you think the place for him is? Well, look, right, you were talking about your face on the poster. <laughs> it's not all bad, because I read something last night that can help you out. <gasps> right? And it's amazing. So we're talking about that. Flair record, Carl. Warren Zevon ain't that pretty at all on it, I think. 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, calm now. The Sonys, they're listening. We've got to win this award. We're just bickering, right? What, what's this thing that can help Steve out? What are you talking about? No, no, we'll talk about that in a bit. What are we doing now? We'll then? do, we'll do Rockbusters. Get that up and running. Yes, sir. Get the email busy. Thank yeah? you, sir. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Go on then. Right, so. You know how it works. Cryptic clues, initials. Well, as I say, I say every week, they're not they're not strictly cryptic. It's more what am I thinking that starts with these letters. Some Sometimes. craptic a word. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? Craptic? Because <laughs> oh. anyway, oh god. So last week, uh, one of them was these people from the East Midlands can't help swearing. Yeah, something. Tourette's Trent Derby. Tourette's Trent That's Derby. That's the sort of shite we're dealing with to try and get a Sony. Right, so, uh, here's the clues and that. <laughs> First one. And that. Um, what are we after here? The artist? Yeah. The band name or solo artist? It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Right. Go on. Uh, so the first one, the, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, what's the initials? The H. Right. The hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah. Right. Second one. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Right. The initial there is C. Right. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Hand some of it out to your mates. Uh, and the I'm third sure that's one, not what is Carl. He's selfish. No. Nope. Begins with C. Right. And <laughs> and the third one, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. <laughs> right. Um, okay. The, the Scottish, Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. Go on then. Right. The initials there K L. Right, so quickly again, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car, VH. Yeah. Don't be selfish, and some of that out to your mates. Right. C. This is your last chance, Carl. And the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. If I hear anything like Wet Knee Houston or D Trout Spinners or Tourette's Trent Derby coming out of this, we're never doing it again, okay? Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So. Just, just cause breakfast do it and that, and uh, just, just leave it maybe this week, see what happens. See if we need it, see, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know, play a record a minute, Carl. I wanna talk to you, I'll talk to you off air, play a record. What? What's the, what's the, what's the, uh, uh email address again? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Okay. Right? That's where the email, so the answer's in. So we've got to, we've got to remind you who's show it is, play a record. Right. <laughs> 
Got my head, Ivan Dando, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, and with me, arguing like nutters, are <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay, all right, calm down. Right. Right. Let's just chill. Let's okay. just chill. Yeah. Right. D what did you do last night, Rick? Uh, I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I tried last week, I knew Tuffner was gonna come through. Mm. I knew he was. I went went to put a bet on and it was eleven to four and I thought, oh, that's not worth it. I could put on four hundred quid and I reckon I'd have won eleven hundred because I reckon he's gonna win. Yeah. So, uh, that is annoying. I suppose if you could go back in time, you'd probably change things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'd do if I could go back in time? I'd go back in time and stop Hitler from being born. <laughs> <laughs> but then it might be worse because someone else might have come along and he'd been even better. It's like a novel. <laughs> yeah, you're like right. Ben Alton would write a novel yeah. like that or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that things would be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, popped to the cinema last night and it was a joy of an experience because for what the first time I wanted to see X-Men 2. I, I want to see that. Yeah, really I saw one. I, I didn't, I don't like that sort of thing. I've never been a comic book, never been a, um, a geek like yourself. Not yourself, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you're not a geek in that, in that sense, you're different. I mean, Not in the traditional sense. No, 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 I'm, no. I'm one of those sexy geeks. Like yeah. Modern sexy geeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it and two's meant to be even better, isn't it? I really enjoyed it, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's good fun. But, uh, the, but more so than the film was the fact that the actual cinema experience for the first time in a long time, I actually enjoyed it because I just, I I have such a problem with the cinema. Well, I, I can't go. I have to wait about three weeks that dies down and go in the afternoon. I can't be sat next to people. I, I don't know why people go to the cinema to eat. Ha have something before you go in there. Yeah. Rattling, crunching. Why, why, why is this experience? This this film has cost fifty million pounds. Mm. It's meant to be an emotional, artistic experience. It's not meant to be something that's on while you're chowing down. Yeah. I don't know. Then, but people leave their mobile on. I want when someone answers it. You go. I can't talk now. I, mean, I want to go. Don't you smack them on their face with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, a woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. But she's, it's up to her. She's earned enough money. She can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema. <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share. Oh, right, God. next to her, a little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, yeah, um, hog-sized barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She's one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really wounds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's in and out. Popcorn already annoys me because and I she don't... goes to him, are you gonna eat that? He goes, well, I was thinking of it. Give it to me. Give it to me now. <laughs> but I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the sound mix right, but what we need is something that'll just slightly, uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And just see the, the size, the just see the size of the buckets yeah. they go in there popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something? Or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. And, and the spoon touching the, the bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this and go, oh god, I need to eat. Well, this eat, was- plan it. You don't, you don't go and play tennis eating, what? You, you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eat before we come out. Yeah. Have a sandwich. Have a corned beef sandwich. You know what? Right. Out. What annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, yeah. right, out of respect to the film. What? So they're saying all oh, the other films? Oh, sod it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But well, this one cost hundred million. Ah, it doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones. She may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, and she's don't God. Know, she's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six-year-old boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's twenty kilograms, yeah, he's three, three foot high, yeah. He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she's just, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot. That's what's important. <laughs> she, she says, uh, uh, a trailer comes <laughs> on for a war film. She goes, I shan't be seeing that. She just announces it. I shan't be seeing that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them next. Oh, God. And, and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like at the beginning, they yeah. get everything. Yeah. It comes up, Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema. She goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> 
uh, I was thinking, but you paid to see it. <laughs> and, and then oh. it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, oh, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> so it comes on, and I think, I, in, in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something, I'm not sure, but, but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this, uh, in this, uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese. And, uh, she just starts going, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, Cheng Chong, in the cinema, just saying that out loud. No. She and her boyfriend are cracking up, they're weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying He's to watch He's got to laugh, film. otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh, God. The mobile phone goes off and like you say, instead of, I mean it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema, I'm in the cinema. Yeah, no, I mean, start so having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not gonna go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth, or Gavin, <laughs> or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you wanna do me behind the bike sheds later? <laughs> yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone, or very least, get out. I know. Get out of the cinema. But it just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. Right. You go in there, and if the they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back, and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, go. If you whisper again, you know. Yeah. If you're too stupid to be able to, to, to figure out, yeah, yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I, I was in the cinema last night, and as I came in, there was a big queue. And as I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, showing you to your seat. Now, wh when did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I can go in the daytime? I can find my. I'm left to fend for myself. But now it seems that on a Friday night, no. there's so many stupid people out no, there. No, I, th find I, their I think that. Seat. No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because, mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I, there was another seat, I'd go, well, no, that's mine. I, 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 I want lots of, I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. I, I want uh, to go into a pub and go, that is too loud, that music. Those people are too annoying, they're standing up, they're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy, he was a big fat guy again, he had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right, and he had it balanced on this little wall that was, uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema, and he was, you know, he, had, he was a big fat guy, you know, just sat there, I was watching, I think it was Beetlejuice I was watching, right. and, uh, some, uh, some local hard nuts, they were on the same row, they started kicking the little wall to, try to knock, knock his food off, and I thought, brilliant. <laughs> no, no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. It's getting really nasty yeah. now. Can I pick on you? <laughs> 50 Cent in the club on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing, this time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not. I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where. We're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending. Are you are arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? that wouldn't have thought so. We just need to. We can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not stressed. Though. And he doesn't really understand that. You know. So, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week. He's just got one job. Yeah. But and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us. You know, as soon as they get them. You know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you mm. know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this will annoy you. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his arse, that's so in his arse. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We well, should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> 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 yeah. He, look, he looks like Charlie Brown. He's got the same sort of hair arrangement as Charlie Brown. 
Yeah, he's, he's I don't like think it. Charlie was, was balding though, was he? He was only about ten. Well, no, but he just had like a couple of yeah. things on his top and he's- and he's- his hairdo, Carl's had a hairdo that keeps it's- It's not a hairdo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is it then? What is it? <laughs> it's- it just happened, I've told you. <laughs> no- no- uh, hey, didn't. Noel was in, right, once. Noel who? Uh, Gallagher. Oh yeah. Right. Oh right, your first name terms. Right. Yeah. And uh- From the hood, isn't he? And- and whoever was doing the interview said, uh, oh, you know, what- will- will Liam be able to keep up that sort of hard attitude, right? Uh, say when he gets older and he goes bald, and, uh, you know, could he- could he still carry off the- the sort of attitude that he's got? And he was like, no, no, he'd, he'd never have that style. He couldn't- he couldn't have that style that lad's got in there and pointed at me. Yeah. I said, it's not a style. <laughs> I said, I didn't go to the barbers and say, can you just, like, shave the top bit, leave the sides? <laughs> yeah. Can you move a little fly attack? That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you were just saying to me, what would you do if you- if you went back in time, I'd probably use a better shampoo. <laughs> I do- I wish we could tape the conversations we have off air. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are ridiculous. <laughs> what would you do if you go back in time? And the other sh stuff we were just talking about is, obviously, can't talk about- Can I just ask though, sorry, wh when did you- when did you start to notice it was disappearing? I mean, at what age did it kick in? Uh uh, I worked a lot. You see, you, you'll- you'll be safe, do you know what I mean? Your hair will stay there, but it's when I used to do a lot of hours. Sure. A lot of hours working <laughs> and that. Yeah, you were stressed and things, yeah. Stressed yeah. out. Yeah. And it just went- Well, I'm beginning know, to understand that... what stress is like, you know, cause I'm not getting messages and stuff like that, but yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. probably about, I don't know, twenty- twenty-four? That's yeah. unlucky, isn't it? Something like that. And did you- did you panic, or did you- were you just not quite Not bothered. Not bothered. <laughs> He's not bothered, he wouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. <laughs> but I don't think- for someone who doesn't care about going bald, or war, or SARS, or anything, you don't have to get stressed on a Saturday between one and three. <laughs> to be fair, you are worse <laughs> than all those things. <laughs> uh, SARS has got nothing on you when you're in the right mood. <laughs> But why- why is it alright for women then to, you know, have a wig? But I couldn't have one if I wanted one. Well, it's not a wig, they get bald treatment, they actually can get- they can get their hair replaced on the National Health, which might be anything, I suppose. Which might be wigs, which might be transplants. I mean, the only- the only cure for baldness is a transplant, which they literally take, um, follicles. They can get down to individual follicles now, from the back of your neck, and, you know, it takes a long time. And, you know, but, um, but people will know anyway, won't they? I don't know when it starts, though. I don't know when it starts. Like, now if you started wearing a wig, people go, were you wearing a wig because you were bald yesterday? Yeah. You can't- you can't start thinking, right, I'm gonna go bald in a year, I'll start wearing a wig now. That's the thing to do, isn't it? It is, really, if you're that bothered, but I wasn't- I, I just thought, right, it's losing it a bit, shaved a lot off. But did you know you had that round head underneath it? Did you know it was gonna be that funny, though? You would've- well, you presumably worn a wig, wouldn't you, if you'd have known? Because I've never seen a head that round. I think the barber, when they did it, right, the woman said, you can pull that off, you've got a good shaped head for, uh, for uh, having it shaved. She, she said, that's a good head. Yeah, she looks like a tennis ball. You look like a tennis ball when you haven't shaved. Mm. She said, if you can pull it off, she said, that's- that's like a good thing to see if someone's good looking. If you- if they can have a bald head, it's like Sinead O'Connor, yeah. right? She can pull it off, there's- there's those sort of things, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, Teddy Alice. No, but- that's like one of the things. If if you look good with a bald head, mm -hmm. that means you're pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah. And if you can wear a, a bicycle helmet and look good, that's <laughs> another thing that like you must be pretty good looking. Yeah. To yeah. pull that off. But who who, who have you seen who in the bicycle helmet that you think that you think's good? Who have you seen in the bicycle helmet and thought, oh god, they must be good looking. They're good in the bicycle helmet. Well, everyone that's what I'm saying. The bicycle helmet. Who? No one looks good, do they? Really? It's so so what, what, do, do, would you say Brad Pitt would look good in the bicycle helmet? Well, I don't know. I'd have to see. But I'm just saying that's- that's like one of the two things, really, that's- And what- what blokes do you think look good, bald? Who do you think would look good, bald? Uh, Dunno, give me some names and I'll tell you whether they'd be alright if they're bald. George Clooney? Uh, I don't- I, no, I don't think he does. I don't think he would do. Uh, uh, who else? Well, this uh, could run and run. Um, Al Pacino? Uh, yeah, he could probably pull it off. He'd probably look alright. Do you think he looks alright with hair, then? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, well done, Rick. <laughs> Sony award winning stuff. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> and then the car going, oh. He's stressed. He's stressed. Wild Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Little bald heady Carl Pilkington.
You quite like being bald, don't you? Well, no fuss. Like I say, you know, I I'll probably s won't age for a bit now. <laughs> won't age for a bit? What do you mean you won't age for a bit? Because I, I already look quite, quite old. I don't think so. Not with, with a hat on, you look really young. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, so I, I won't, I won't change that much. It's like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I actually don't think, if it's, as long as you shave it, whoosh, straight back, that c I can't have you on that. Nothing wrong with it. But that kid who had that aging disease, just shave her head. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't age that fast anymore. Do you know what I mean? She so this is the five-year-old girl who had an awful disease where- Well, we don't know much about it, to be fair. No, we just know that you fell in love with the title of the program, the girl that was older than her mum, right? And you were annoyed that people wouldn't serve her fags and alcohol. If she, if she's, if she's, you know, she's living like an eight-year-old, let her have a fag. Doesn't that sum up this show, though, Carl's <laughs> comment, we don't know much about it. <laughs> Yeah. We're still willing to make comments about it, to discuss it in length and possibly make crass jokes, <laughs> even though we're ill-informed, as ever. Yeah. Right, well, there's something for you, right? Go on. This is- this is what I wanted to tell you about, right? <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah, face transplants. <laughs> <laughs> there's this, uh, this uh, some kid somewhere, right, who had a bit of a an odd looking face. A right? bit of a what? Bizarre looking face. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> There's a doctor somewhere who said I can sort that out for yeah. you, right? Sure. And basically what they do is they've got to get a face off a dead person. <laughs> right. That's sorry, sorry, just, um, I in this, in, in this documentary you saw, no, did this documentary feature, say, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? <laughs> was it, was it that documentary you saw? No, right, listen, you, you see, you'd... go on. So, um, okay, no, you can't get a face of a dead person. Yeah, go no, on. Sorry, sorry to dismiss the idea of face transplants <laughs> out yeah. of hand. But go, go on. on. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a face of of a dead body that isn't older than like four hours old, right? Four hours dead, whatever. Mm. Um, they can take it off, mm -hmm. fit yeah. it on, fit it on the new face. It makes sense. It's but it's not just it. your face that you lose it, but it's the muscle, it's muscle tissue and, and bones, isn't it, when it's like disfigured. It could be, could be through fire or whatever or disease or whatever. So they can't just literally plonk a face on, they have to do something else, don't they? You're asking Carl like he's gonna know. <laughs> I, know like he, I forgot then, he looked at it, but was that in Russian? Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could get, I wish we could get him on telly just to show the look on his face when I said that. Yeah. It, it was, was brilliant, ludicrous. wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you know when you, uh, go to a cat, hey, we want some food then? And he just looks at you yeah. and he goes, it's almost like he can understand what we're saying. Mm. Go on. It's like if you had been caught holding a mallet over a dead body <laughs> by the police. <laughs> what, I'm saying, is, blankly, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they, it would sort of work, yeah. If you took, if you peeled your face off mm. and put my face on it, that, oh my god, why don't you and Steve, for an experiment, swap faces? And, and the great thing is, I wouldn't age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you do that if, if, I could, if it was safe? Uh, I, I think I'm getting the rough deal here, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, no, you would, you'd get some money back. It'd be part exchange. I mean, it would, you know, it's like you'd, you'd make up the difference just to wear your brilliant face for but, a week. But the doctor was saying how, um, it's not complicated. He said the worst thing is something about, uh, the people who were related to the dead person. It's a bit weird for them still seeing the face of someone they know walking about when they're sure. dead. Yeah, I can see yeah. that would be yeah. <laughs> I love you, Carl. You are brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, you're never a dull moment. Would, it it would doesn't you, matter whether you're talking or I'm squeezing your head. It's, uh, it's, I'm never bored. I never go, oh, that's enough, Carl. Do you know what I mean? I never, I used, I had battling tops, I got bored. It's like computer games, you think it's the best game in the world, and someone goes, how are you getting on with Tomb Raider? You go, oh, I don't play it anymore. I go, how's Carl? I go, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I was squeezing it yesterday, I was squeaking in his face, I got him down to the ground. He said this, he said that, I'm never bored with you. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz the scale electrics. <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, when <laughs> there's no one else who will have you on the team. Sure. And suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again! Right? My, yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe uh, it. I love the fact you can insult me but never insult my parents. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Feeder, Butt Rogers.
<laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Perkins. Carl, Carl just said to me, so what face would you have to me? And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, whose face would you have? And I went, I don't know. Uh, a, a boy's, so uh, the skin would be regenerated. He went, oh, no, I'd be a bit weird. He said, oh no, someone famous. And I went, oh, I don't know. I went, whose would you have? He went, Barry Sheen. <laughs> No, but what I meant was when I was talking Barry to Susan, Sheen. when I was talking to Suzanne about it, yeah. saying this is amazing, she said, "Well, whose face would you have?" Right now, it's got to be fairly recent to have the skin fresh because it can't be too old. Right. So I had a choice of like Barry Sheen yeah. or uh, what's the face or Flash the Summer Wine. Who? Uh, who's the old woman who just passed away? Thora Heard. Thora Heard. <laughs> So that's what I meant. If I could have any face, because she said, well, you could have had Tom Cruise or something. Mm. I said, well, he's not dead. <laughs> so no, but you could have had you, that. You give yourself restrictions in your fantasy. So I like, look down the picture. I love the idea that someone getting you a call. Uh, Mr. Wilberton. Uh, oh, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away. And you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or? <laughs> Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you can adopt a boyfriend. I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, um, she, she was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh, you know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be but good. Then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. Yeah. But if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like people were looking you at you something? on the tube? Well, no. Like, say, if the people who made Mission Impossible said, "Well, we want to do a third one," <laughs> would I then? Would I be in my right to say, "Well, I don't want to do it"? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking. About. <laughs> I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. I love the idea of this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get off with a film. But why, okay. do, why does she have conversations like this with you? There was no on last night. <laughs> There's no on the telly. No I on the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, was that, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew it on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid? I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cos the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> I can't believe Come it, on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It's, this is going, <laughs> this is going crazy, you know, Carl. I don't know. You, you're just the insults are flying left, right, and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy. You've just gone wild. You're swanning around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're Co a couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, because well, yeah. Christian wants to do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> 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 Do monkey news? Oh, Christian wants to do some monkey news. I'm not alone. <laughs> Once around the block, badly drawn boy. I like him. He's funny as well. You know what? I think he looks like if me and you were put in a blender, Carl. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's sort of he's got my sort of shape. He's got your sort of accent and all I think that. that. When you put in a blender, does that? <laughs> what a voice. Sort of mix. <laughs> the times I thought of putting the two of you in a blender. That'd Do you remember? I, I told you that thing about the sponges, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, that, that freaked him out. You know, if you get uh, two sponges and uh, you dye one red and one blue and you liquidise them, we pour them into a tank of water. After a couple of hours, there's a blue sponge and a red sponge because their cells know well, they, and they, they reform. And do you know what he said? He went, oh, how'd you kill a sponge then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, what right. a great thing to say. <laughs> oh, my back's killing me, because I, I, I went, um, you know, I, I did my back in last week and I had to get a chiropractor out and I couldn't walk. Well, as soon as I could walk, I mean, I came in here on my day off and did a, when you were in Bristol with your mum and dad looking mm. after you. Um, and, uh, and then I went to Selfridges Sunday and- Well, you got a bit of money now, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, I went into the sports department 
and uh, there's a golf simulator there, thirty-eight thousand pounds, oh. and it's just like a shed. And I was looking at it like a kid in a sweet shop, and the two blokes that work there, uh, uh, they recognised me. And went, oh, I do. I said, yeah, good. I mean, I was just looking at that, that simulator. It's brilliant. Isn't it? He went, do you want to have a go? And I went, no, nah, I'm crap. I can't do it. I said, oh, and I got a bad back. And, then, and I went, you have a go. And he did it. And a couple of times he went, oh, that's not bad. And he went, do you want to go? I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and and I put the ball down, and I really tried my hardest. Of course you did. And it took off, and it was really good <laughs> shot. And he went, good. I went, I went well, I said, I'm go. And I was thinking, I've got to hit this one as well. I've got to hit this one too. And I hit it again. And I had three goes. I hurt my back after the first one. <laughs> yeah, but you carried and, on. And it went, right, I said, cheers, thanks very much. And I walked away. <laughs> and I went to Jane. And I went, I've got to get a cab. She went, I just have done my back. She went, well, why did you show off? I went, I had to. Of course you did. That I sums you up. That just <laughs> I was in agony. I was the all the way back. I was. I had to lay on the floor and put ice on my back again for about three hours. What was the best you <laughs> thought could happen? <laughs> that they would just say, oh my God, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ricky Gervais. Is there nothing he can't do? <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. As, I, as I was, I'll see you later, I go, cheers, yeah. As I got about a few yards away, I just slow down, and I, and Jane go, what are you waiting for? I go, listen. Yeah. And it, it, it's go, that man. He's a god. Yeah. And I go, come on, Jane, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. You've just it. all- uh, have you ever <laughs> been able to walk through a fairground, pass one of those machines, those test your strength machines, yeah. and not have a go at it? Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be very good at that. I bet you cannot walk past one of those rifle ranges and not have a go. I love, I love rifle but ranges. But you've got to be the best, I imagine. Yeah, if someone had just won before me, I'd go, it's not worth it, it's fixed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Pathetic. Yeah, well, so that's why my back's good. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But I refuse, also, I don't, I hate not being able to do stuff. It's like I'm punishing the injury. Yeah. I know yeah. if I laid in bed for it, it'd be better, but I go, no, why should I? Yeah. It, I've used to, I used to, when I used to work kid, I used to hit my head on the banister or something, and I used to go and get a hammer and hit the banister. <laughs> and then I started thinking, um, uh, <laughs> when I was about eight, I remember if I'd hurt myself, I'd go, ha ha, God, didn't hurt. <laughs> 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 He's up there thinking, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> How mental is that? <laughs> Carl, what are you thinking, mate? Alright, rock busters, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Straight to it! Straight to it! Go on then, who's the winner? Right, well, go well, on, do the clues again. Right, the first one was, uh, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah, snappy, go on. VH. Yeah. Right, that was Van Halen. Van Halen? Halen or Van? Cos he wanted something bigger than a car, that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, All the tenses one. are mixed up, <laughs> everything, it's just, go uh, on. Second one, don't be selfish, uh, and some of that out to your mates, that was C, that was Cher. Right. It's all right. Yep. And the third one, uh, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. The initials there, KL, they, uh, Kenny Loggins. Right. <laughs> that's, right. That's, that's the last the time we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no. It is. Who's that's the, the last time. It's, it, give it, give it, give the prize to someone. Kenny Loggins. Uh, I'm gonna give that one Kenny to- Kenny uh, Loggins. Helen Perrett, she, uh, has emailed in, and, uh, actually, Helen, I need you to, uh, email in your address, if you would, so we can send you those, uh, goodies, DVDs in the bag and stuff. But, but who would get Kenny Loggins then? If the, if the clue was good, who would get Kenny Loggins? What did he do? Footloose? Yeah. That famous <laughs> film about that, where, really? where dancing was banned. Yeah. In that nebulous, <laughs> yeah. That's an extraordinary film. I saw it once in America. <laughs> like you say, Kevin Bacon in a town where dancing has been banned. I was watching it, it was like if aliens had been watching Earth, but only monitoring us through our TV and, and films. Yeah. And then tried to make a film about humans. That's the film they'd end up with. What do you think, uh, what do they think, uh, they think of, uh, Queen the Musical? Cause they're, of course, <laughs> rock and roll's banned, <laughs> isn't it? In the future. That's I'm not looking forward to the future, Rick, where feelings and emotions are gonna be banned. I, I can't believe it. Where's our hoverboards? Yeah. Um, so yeah, well done to, uh, to Helen Perry. Is that the last time we do Rockbusters? No. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, after one. the break, Monkey News. No, we, we'll play, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do a break. Don't know about Monkey News, got some other stuff as well. We'll do Monkey News after oh, the break. Yeah, Excellent. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that's brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> it always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Yeah. What's what, please? Well, Carl, do you reckon you could sort out- do you rather have people have real jingles with their name on it and, and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. 
for Monkey News that he does. Why is Christian doing Monkey News? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough Monkey News to go around. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right? hold on, though. I don't want cast offs. I, I thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but new? Wait, wait, Come wait, on, wait. what's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week. He's doing like the, you know, the news at ten type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday. We're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman monkey news night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you can very much right? get behind the monkey news, it's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own speech. You're, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, are we, so but ours is called monkey news anyway. It's sort of generic term, like the news. But ours is called chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's he's seen a bit of monkey news in it. Oh, so, are we doing it or not? Well, I, I I've got no reason I, I, to stop I, doing I, monkey I, news. I, I, it, um, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I know. Should I we not him. do that? I said that David Attenborough did monkey news before all of us. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm no, missing out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, what I'm saying, I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My point is this, there's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, monkey news in the week, they're perhaps, they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend <laughs> with Carl Pilkington. So right. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. You ready? Yeah. Right. Is this monkey? Right. Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know. I didn't say all internet, that. Probably, internet, probably. Internet. I'm sure. Chat rooms on the internet. I'm sure. <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right, this, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time, they share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, starts mm. getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean... You mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. Right, the monkey. <laughs> I'd love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff. Yeah. So the train sort of come in on the right lines. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the trains coming and that. I have British Rider listening. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company are happy with that. I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best <laughs> monkey for the job. <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right. Once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman? It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before, like before trains, 19, probably. Well, so. it's, uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh, dear, he's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in, actually, and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. You never- he always, he always has, um, t-shirts right done up and long sleeve. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth- and it comes out the- the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with- what's wrong with that? You're a- you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why your, your IQ is sort of about 80. I think you might be. You might- I, I don't mean uh, there was any- I think it was a genetic sort of- sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. <laughs> Look at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> just look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. <laughs> That's mine. Cherry and breaks. Average man on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly another show over, Carl. You know, I've got a squeaky chair there. Why don't you sort that out? Have it oiled. What do you, what do, you do in the week? Do you know what I mean? Can I just, um, nominate a woman that annoyed me today? Go on. Uh, on the tube. I got off at Piccadilly Circus. Um, the sign says, Mind the Gap. Big sign saying, Mind the Gap. Voice on the, uh, tannoy says, Mind the Gap. Woman steps over the gap, goes, Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> I was living. I was just annoyed. I wanted to slap her. There's always one in there every day. Well, just, uh, so, so as you walk down the street, I just feel like I want to squat certain people out the way. Well, squat them out the way. We like went. A... We went into this uh, uh, little restaurant. Me go to uh, me and Carl. Was it Thursday? And we're sitting down there, and um, it's busy outside. And we were going to get the back. She went. That's no smoking. I went. Yeah, we're not a smoke. So we sit there right at the back. Right? We get there, and there's just another. There's two women. That right. And I'm sitting there, and they light up a fag. And I go to Carl. It meant to be no smoking. He went, yeah, so what? I went, well, it's the principle. The rules are there. He goes, he goes, rules? You say twat, muff, and shit on air. Never mind rules. I went, well, they've annoyed me now, right? Yeah. So the waitress comes over and he's put, he goes, oh, God, he puts his head down as well. I said, uh, I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like this. I went, um, I thought it was just no smoking. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> she went, it is, yeah. And I went, right, okay, well, they're smoking. She went, she went, oh, well, you'd have to move then. I went, what? She went, do you want to smoke? I said, no, I don't want to smoke. I, th I said, they're smoking over there, right? Try not to, you know. And she went, oh, well, I told you. I said, no, I don't want to smoke. They're smoking. <laughs> she went, oh, right. And I got, I got a move, didn't I? See, that's what a it. little snitch. <laughs> yeah. But it annoyed me. Do you worry, though, that, that someone's <laughs> gonna look around and go, it's like Ricky Jones off the telly? Yeah, well, I can't complain now. I swear, if I go in, I get bad service, I can't complain, because I think, oh, look at him, he thinks he'd complain. So I have to do it, I have to do it, um, secretly. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, uh, oh, there was, uh, oh, God. Right. People come up to me, they recognise me, and they all give autographs, and I, I don't mind it at all. I don't know, I never know what to say, and I'm always, you know, I say, thank you very much, I say, love the show, whatever, whatever, I say, of course, and, and that's great, and they're polite. And I was in the pub the other day, uh, and I was j just with Johnny, and, um, people had been coming up, they go, do you mind if I, I said, no, no worries at all, yeah, it's absolutely fine, right? And, um, and then this group came in, about eight, twenty-somethings, right? And they're, they're a bit pissed up. And this woman comes up to me, right, and she goes, she stands there, she goes, ah, right, we like you in our house, right, but you're not as good as Paul Calf. And I went, oh yeah, Steve Coogan, I said, he's brilliant, isn't he? She went, yeah, yeah, you're not as good as him. I went, oh, well. You know, it's not bad to come second to, is it? And then, because I did that, she went, she went, ah, oh, no, you're, you know, we, you know, you're great. I, I've just done my dissertation. I went, oh, right, well, it's in nursing. She went, yeah. She went, ah, oh, right. Anyway, she went, ah, oh, can I have a hug? And I went, well, hmm. she went, can I have a kiss? I went, well, not really. No. And then this woman who wanted to take a photo, she went, oh, you were so nice on the BAFTAs. I went, well, I am being nice. I just, I'd rather, I, you know, I don't know you. And I, I was, oh, God, it was embarrassing, right? And then, um, so I took a picture, right? And then she goes, anyway, and they sort of dragged her away. They make sort of dragged her away. And then, uh, uh, I was going, oh, God, oh, God, God, I've got to go now, because they're over there. I said, I can't, I can't stand it. I don't mind. Uh, and, uh, she came and she, she came over and she went, Ricky, and she sat down and I went, I'm going. Uh, and I just, I had to go. And then I was with Johnny and Johnny went, oh God, I've left my bag there. So we had to go back and go, but she's going through the bag. Oh. She, she, and she went to me, you bastard, I'll never effing watch you again. I thought, well, all right. I don't know what to say, yeah. really. Nice of her to clean up her bad language. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, she Family knew. pub. I know, she No, knew. I just, I got no time for it. I just think it's, I it's out of order. You know, I, I mean, this, this whole sort of notion that, that it's, if you're a celebrity, you're public property. I don't, I just, how I discount it. They go, people, you know, what, you hear people say, oh, it's me who put you where you are today. And I think, well, yeah. Thanks for watching, but but we made the show and everything. I we know. Put it, we put it on the TV. It's not like if you get a plumber around, he does his job and work for you. you don't go around his house and hassle. Him I or, don't. Or it's not. I don't seek it. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't phone up the. But you know what I mean? I don't try and get on the telly or anything. And uh, I refuse to. I don't go to showbiz parties, but I refuse not to go to the pub with my mate. And I just seek out, there's fewer and fewer pubs, and I just go to the, the quietest, you know, with one old bloke and a dog. And it's sort of like- But most people are really- I love brilliant. it, honestly, honestly. But, people but, who come out and they're polite, and I, I chat, like, say I love people, the show. It's like- It's alcohol, it's alcohol, yeah, I know. Uh, it's just, oh god. They mutate into something, you know, And they different. just, yeah, they, they don't understand, yeah, of course they don't. You know, they're not, they're but to me, it's really. the same people who who who, who be bad, behave badly in the cinema. It's just this breed of person. It just, it just. I mean, I know. Can I put them in room one hundred and one? 
Let's do that next week, shall we? What are we all having a moan? Yeah, go on. Tell you who's annoyed me this week. Go, go on. on. If we make it a little feature. Go on. David Blunkett. What's Blunkett been up to? He's, uh, he's reading yesterday. He's his dog has been- he's not- his dog's not been round your house again. No. Causing trouble outside. He's put a stop to people having sex outdoors. What's- what do you mean? What's up with that? <laughs> if he had sight, would he have stopped it? <laughs> See you next week. I thought we were not trying to offend anyone.